time there. Yep, time. I always forget that there's two A button presses at the end there, so I do it a little bit too early every run. <laughs> yep. And the the one scary attack there is Cataclysm, which can definitely, uh, if you're not ready for it, that could definitely cause you, it can kill lightning and cause a uh, reset, to a reset to the fight. There is a nifty way to mitigate damage. Uh, Cataclysm is really the only move where it works extremely well. If you take damage, either A, starting an uh, EP ability, um, like the backflip during decoy or using Kiraga or Asuna or something like that, or if you get hit during the potion animation, all the damage gets reduced by 95%. So an ability that will deal 20,000 damage is now going to deal 1,000. Uh, I don't know why that mechanic's in the game per se, but it is a very big damage cut and is a very nice way to live through either Cataclysm or uh, Mental Mori, depending on where your HP is at. He wins here on the Chimera fight, rapidly approaching his own boonie. One yeah. thing to worry about the Chimera fight is if you end up, because it's got two additional heads, and in this game, the lightning kind of auto targets. Going, going the butt strats. But if you're attacking them from the face, because it does save a couple of seconds, if you break one of the heads, you lose all the, the damage dag or the stagger damage bonuses. And then he starts getting into very lengthy abilities like Howl or Wind Breath. Yeah, so Dwin is very specifically positioned there to go behind the Chimera. You don't have to do that anymore with some of them from the later runs, I know, but uh, or like uh, strats. But yeah, we used to very meticulously. We'd hit overclock and then just take a few moments to just position, so we weren't in the front there with a chance of breaking the heads. Certainly helps with consistency in a marathon setting. So no shame there in doing that. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, taking down the sets here, and uh, our next runner is going to be hitting Booney very shortly. Gang's and, oh, oh. They're putting their last tablet on. Oh, D-Win's got a buffed Heavy Slash. Ooh, very nice. What Will it be the good old Stagger Duration plus 3% or Strength plus 130? <laughs> stagger oh, Duration no. is absolutely worthless, but the Strength is very nice. Yep. Oh, and he is going for the DJ here. We actually do have a DJ here. Before we hit Booney. Nope, I didn't see what it was. I think he put it on, so I'm assuming it's the damage. Yeah, strength plus 130. And the evade is ATB plus 5. Boo. Alright, well, he's, he's, looking, he's looking pretty good for Booney. Yep. And King's getting to Parandis. Helping you narrow potion on Parandis here. You don't wait till that bubble drops and start your fires. You're gonna block here. That attack comes out, fire again. Oh, so the D okay, no, Mox still shows up. I couldn't remember. It's after you put the door. No, he doesn't. Okay, you don't get the cutscene of him going, hey, Lightning. All your friends are gone. <laughs> That's part of the plot here is that God sees the Lightning misbehaving and he steals all your friends. Lightning's like, what? You think that was gonna stop me? So we're gonna go fight God again. King looking to get a pretty clean Parandus fight there. I didn't see him get knocked around an overclock or anything, so very solid fight there for King. Yes. And I guess we can mention it now. You can see there's somebody floating in front of Boone and Velza. That is Hope. So Boone is basically cosplaying as Hope the entire game. Yes, everyone questions, oh, why is Hope uh, young again? Because if you remember 13-2, he was a full-grown adult. And it's just kind of this misty. They're like, huh, so weird. But it turns out the Hope that you've been dealing with this whole time has kind of been this puppet that uh, Boonie's just been kind of directing you as Hope. So serious question, if adult Hope was bossing you around, would it be more annoying or less annoying? Uh, mm. <laughs> less annoying. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably less. <laughs> I really hoping, like hope, hope, yeah. Hope in general uh, is a people learn to tune him out as an LR speedrunner. He he talks to you a lot. So here's yep. phase one attacks heavy slashes keeping the debuffs up. Yeah, this fight Boonavels is a very specific fight, and it, you know these runners make it look easy, but it is not easy. And you know as long as you're hitting, hitting the perfect times, you will get to the fight. 
Really? Even though sometimes I found when I was de-rusting, I was like, if you, I'll get through the first phase, and but then I'll have no ATV for phase two. It's like, well, so you have to, it's all about, because your ATV goes between each phase, you have to yep. be careful. Yeah, the ATV I, I think, management is huge. I think d ones forgot to throw an end potion. Yeah, he didn't I don't. there. d one changes his route so much, I don't know if this is just part of it or not. It's, he had bravery, but now he's not buffing up at all. I'm surprised he didn't get any... Badly. Oh, so this is interesting. Lightning in Ooh. lightning turns, you can only have five active buffs and debuffs, and the skull um, is an, a hexagon, which means it's a permanent buff, which is one of the damning things because you can't just throw a hero's potion and then throw an end potion and call it a day. So doom will always persist, which eats up a slot. So if you throw a hero's potion and then an end potion, you lose bravery. But if you throw an end potion and then a hero's potion, you lose your end spell. Which makes phase one really tight, because you really want to kill him within that 30 second limit from that Tilleth Bravery from the Thorn of Courage. Yep. Yeah, this yeah, specific he's doing ordering. Vigilance. It looks like he's just not putting up an end spell. Yeah. Yeah, the specific ordering on the debuffing here, you don't want to linger too long trying to throw out uh, imperils. You, typically on PC, which we didn't mention, you have to throw two imperils to get them to stick, and you, you extend the duration of the debuffs every time you you hit uh, you hit an enemy with a debuff. So on Boonie, we typically throw two imperils, two deprotects at the start. Uh, we'll do a bit of uh, Lazaras or Faraga, Fararas and, and to do a little bit of like stag increase the stagger gauge and then hit the double imperil again and then go into our attack heavy slash and overclocking to Don't close uh, the first phase out. Because you want to keep that where... pearl up the entire time. Yeah, and this is where you see, it looks like, you know, the first, it seems like he's going very smoothly through the hit bar. He gets over halfway full, but then it's just this last bit here that, uh, you know, as your ATB lowers, you lose your buffs. It's all about that timing, because now he's got this tiny bit, but it's much slower to chip away. Getting D-Brave is also very unfortunate. Because yes. that means the bravery from the hero's potion will get, um, will balance it out. D brave, you lose 30% attack strength. So instead of getting that 50% boost, you're now just sitting at even. All right, I think we need some energy and some motivation from chat for Team Tomberry here. Have a little bit of struggle on Booney. There's all different sorts of setups for Booney too, based off the route you're doing. I see uh, D1's got a ton of heroes potions. Some get less of them, depending on how many you need. Uh, I personally always leave myself a couple of slots because the, there's a shop just before Booney that you can pick up Phoenix Downs and X potions. And they're kind of band-aids for like bleeding open wounds. But sometimes if I get hit by something and I just need to pop an X potion and keep myself alive, that's kind of what I have to do. So there's all sorts of, depending on the route you do, because sometimes people really stack themselves tight where you don't have any of that extra wiggle room. But, uh... There is room to kind of fit in some safety items, and Phoenix Downs aren't the best option because they kind of leave you without your buffs and everything, but there's all sorts of things you can try and do, especially as you're learning. When I was de-rusting, I was like, yep, nope, Phoenix Down, X Potion. I picked up like a bunch of extra heroes potions because I knew I was going to not time my debuffs right. And... Yeah, I remember back when I were in the game, you know, seven years ago or so, I, I remember taking a Phoenix Down or a couple into the booty fight, you know, because mm -hmm. I wasn't... You know, solid on it, and that definitely helped. You know, if I died, hey, just you know, pop another hero's potion, keep going. Uh, you know, That's phase one is a bit for more forgiving because you don't. I mean, yes, you can definitely have a reset, um, fortunately, but as compared to like say phase two, where you have like wings of destruction, you know, you can definitely save it phase one and just persevere a bit, and still power through it. Um, but, you know, you get into phase like phase two, or like if you mess up the cataclysm kills you in phase four, you know, it could completely wipe you. And if you don't have that Phoenix down backup, you are going back to phase one. So King now entering the final day as well. And he, I just want to touch briefly, he's going to get to the guard here, the double guards, and try probably, hopefully, hit the guard skip. Uh, and it's essentially, you're going to overclock immediately and hit fire and Lazar, I believe, three times. Then you're going to blitz. And then you're gonna target. Let's see what see what King's execution here is. And then Aurora's. Yep. So you're gonna heavy slash shift targets, deep protect, attack heavy slash here, kill the Sentry B, attack heavy slash again, and then go back and clean up Sentry A. Very well done by King here. Yeah, very nice. Cause yeah, they'll start calling in soldiers and they'll start shooting you. It's not a run killer if you don't get it. It's just it's just time loss sit there and do more blitzes and sometimes don't have quite the ATB for it. All right, there's D-Wins. 
moving right, on he's, to phase two. He's, still... he's got his groove back. Then goes decoy popping off in the knee protects. And this is one where they're they're the uh, Aki had a brilliant fight blitzing through very fast, but there's a uh, one thing that you can do here. It's spamming guard and which ability is it to, to back up the character? Is it guard and deep protect? Or D shell. Yeah. So if you think that you're not going to skip that wings of destruction, you have the decoy down. You can spam guard and deep protect, and it'll lightning does this like backward shuffle that will get you away from these orbs that are going to explode, and you just kind of hope that you live through it and recover from there, so. Oh, Dewin's kind of in a pickle. Uh, when he's in the uh, Wings of Destruction mode, he can't generate stagger at all. So unfortunately, uh, he didn't get the skip. Thunder element, which isn't bad because he's got Enfrost on. Um, so this is why Wings of uh, destruction skipper is so important because after it he'll pick one of four elements normally we only come in here with and frost and, and arrow so since he's uh and thunder arrow will deal more damage if we would have thrown that but if you would have thrown an ice element or arrow element we would have lost our end buff uh which means we would have had to throw another potion and we might not depending on the route had an extra one to spare I remember many of Frost Spirit in the rounds yeah. where there wasn't room for it. And you're just like, well, I guess, you know, I'll try it tomorrow. <laughs> and then uh, Phase three's whole gimmick, if you don't kind of manage to get through it when you do, is see how he has one buff on. He just keeps using the ability that keeps stacking on buffs. And eventually, I think in this phase, he can kill the decoy with something. So it's kind of a... You just don't want to let him stack buffs over and over again. Yeah, funny. Oh, go ahead, Zephyr. No, it's just gonna say the one key, and especially in phase three and four with the, the decoys, you do at times have to kind of uh, spot and see if it died or not. So, like, you know, you check in the menu if you cast decoy again, that means that your decoy died. So, it's something, especially with, you know, certain abilities like Cataclysm, which will target lightning. Uh, if you don't have the decoy up, decoy up, excuse me, it can be uh, troublesome. So, I never thought you know, about checking for the recast. That's actually really it, smart. You can also yeah. look at where Boonie is looking. If Boonavelza is issuing attack looking down, the decoy is alive. If he's looking at lightning, the decoy yep. is dead. When yeah, I was de-resting, I was so focused the... on my abilities that uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, no, I, no, the king no. popped in and said, no, yeah, your, your decoy died. Like, oh. That The second yeah. one is definitely for something when you're feeling comfortable, because a lot of the times like you're just like, I want to kill him. I want to die. I want this to be over. So you're not really looking at the small, subtle things. Yeah. Get ready yeah, you notice that Boonie has like a, a bit of a tilted Boonie head in phase four and looking down. That's how you know that Boonie's looking at the Boonie. Elementega. Yep. The D wins trying to potion toss a little early, but he got the guard off. Oh, yeah, the so there's his decoy is gone, so he's throwing out another one. Whether it goes through the floor or not, it'll hopefully give him the time he needs to stagger it here. Getting Heartless Angel, which again is more scary than it seems. It just drops you to one HP, it doesn't kill you, so you always kind of want to stick there. And there's a stagger. And I'm just going to attack in Heavy Slash, essentially here to close the fight out. Yeah, you can see the plus 130 doing a lot of work. On this phase, it's about 23,000 extra damage. And there's the kill, so just in a moment here, time. All right. And I think before a king jumps in, does the next team kind of want to jump on comms and do some brief introductions? Yes, yeah. Boonie fight's about to start. You have some time before we have to get into that. If you want to. <laughs> FF9 team feeling shy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm easily I'm on Team Choco. Uh, how are you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. Fantastic. Fantastic relay so far, best time of the year. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been, been well so far. It's been pretty great. So we're gonna we have uh, easily already going. Uh, already started off. Um, already went through nobles. Uh, Keeper is just starting here on Tonberry, and then we have Pete for Team On, and then along with me for commentary, I have the Brutals and Mel, and hopefully later uh, Sio will join. All right, Very awesome. Good. Looking forward to that run. Here is Boonie for the last time. Don't blink, right. cause... So we King hitting attack heavy slash here in overclock in phase one. And looking to hit 
get that stagger there. Very cleanly done. She flips up phase one easily here. Yep. Good. Oh, it looks Sadly, like he got another heavy slash too. Yeah, he's got two of them equipped, so I'm assuming that's the extra strength as well for King. Sadly, didn't get any of the, the stagger modifiers from him attacking. You can usually tell if you've hit a good point in Boonie because he'll stagger either before overclock or during it. Sometimes it's just bad RNG. There's no point in waiting around to try to attack when he attacks. And King with him. Attack heavy slash here. Overclock. Get in that stack of break. Nicely done here. There's plenty of ATP. Should be a clean face too. Oh yeah. Huge stagger hit there. Absolutely fantastic face two. Closed out. Going on into phase three. King has put a lot of uh, time into Budavelza. He's <laughs> very good at this game. So again, he's yeah, making he's, it look easy. If yeah. not. <laughs> He's a world record holder in many categories, so he's definitely one of the top runners of the game. Yeah, what you've once you've hammered here, the spells. King does a slightly different setup with the spells. He tries to get Boonie really close with Stagger. Okay. It's also depending on Boonie's moves, because where he throws the spells will if Boonavelza does like Almagest he'll stay in one place, but if he does the scythe uh, throw, he'll move back. So King will throw additional spells to get that jump back from the first spell cast. It saves, like, chasing after him and then moving around to the backside. Did Game's he lose the damage from the daze there? Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Still, he's putting, in, putting more through it. Yeah, oh, kind bro. of a frustrating girl there. Close out pace yeah, so three. there's the Holy Blade. You saw very briefly he got another buff, but no problem here. With phase three, the amount of buffs he has dictates how many attacks he does, up to. And then once he gets three buffs, after that he'll do a very devastating spell, Hypernova or Dancing Mad, and then it'll go back to one buff and it'll kind of repeat that AI script over and over again. Getting a little low on ATV here, so you see him cycling through these spells kind of before the chains finish out. But as long yeah, as he good. keeps his potions up. I was going to say the ATB management from phase 3 to phase 4 can be a bit tricky at times. Um, I've seen several runs from myself and other runs in King, you know, even King has trouble on the ATB sometimes in phase 4, where he just doesn't have enough and you have to swap earlier than you really want to. You just don't have any ATB in all your guards. But, uh, phase 4 is also a tricky fight because you want to cast spells to increase stagger, but with you're also losing stagger gain by not using finishers. So it's a very, very tricky situation of you just do whatever you can to keep the waves going instead of you know, sitting there for five seconds and losing it. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's, that's LR, time. folks. So thank you for having us. And uh, good luck to the FF9 yes. commentator teams. Good luck. Good luck, Nine. Thanks for having me. Hope everyone enjoyed Lightning Returns. And remember, it looks scary, but it's completely accessible. You too can run LR. Yep. Take care, everybody. Good Take luck. Care. Good luck, runners. Are we live? Oh, I think we're here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know we are. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's time to settle in. With this bit. Oh, yeah. We got a race. Let's go. Steal the mage master. I'm sure we're all very familiar with this. Only like a six percent chance to steal. We're gonna get a bunch of turns every turn to try and get it off, and we can't really progress until we do. Heat going with the blue. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, everyone's blue. Dang, blue crew here today. Blue crew. So I think what we've missed so far, uh, easily did get nobles, and obviously he did get a mage masher. It didn't take too long, but it took a little bit. Um, I didn't see Keeper's mage masher, unfortunately. Let's see how long that took him. Uh, I think Keeper's was really quick. I think it was about a 150. Uh, nice, nice. None of us had quick ones. 
Yeah, Easley's I think was like a two fifteen, and from Keeper it looks like Keeper had like a yeah one fifty does sound about accurate compared to where he's at right now. It sounds like good matches to me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it's fast. Real good matches to me. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna be able to do a little trick here with Brian getting him in nice and cheeky. Still only just got the wrist. Oh, Mog, come on. Hand it over, please. One more chance. No dice. So unfortunately, he's just going to be spinning his wheels here until he gets it. While uh, Keeper and Tom Bree are actually coming up to King Leo, which is a very simple fight, ultimately. It's, you can't really lose. Um, but you do have to win. And some other fights in this prologue, we actually can uh, end quicker by attacking ourselves, putting ourselves into the critical. KOing, but Leo, we do actually have to win. It's going to take a number of hits in order to defeat Leo the King and the robe in the middle. The, um, the brothers are optional opponents, you can ignore them. It's uh, really difficult to gauge the situation in this fight. It's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a wall for optimizing, but ultimately, it's about five attacks to kill Leo and one per brother if you choose to attack them. And you just want to try and cut as many of their turns out as you can, and Pete is still trying to steal. <laughs> Yeah, Masher can be crazy. You can get it, I think, as fast as uh, a minute 10 into the game for PC. And it could take up to 7-8 minutes sometimes, I've seen. Okay, so not too great ATV on the easily side. Maybe we're just taking out the brothers nice and quick. Alright, it's just going to be one turn from Leo. This could actually be a nice one. You get two weights in here, I think. Looks very key clean. Meanwhile, easily screen, we're on Steiner 2, where essentially you just kill off everybody except for Garnet, and it will progress on to Steiner 3. Well, that was fun. <laughs> All right, we got nobles coming up for keeper. I've been amended, I think. <laughs> Come back more powerful than ever. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, on uh, easily screen, we have Steiner 3, which uh, essentially is another Steiner fight with a bomb in the background. Um, in this fight, Steiner is invincible, so you can do as much damage as you want to him, and it doesn't change the battle at all. Um, but there's a nifty bomb skip for this, where essentially we can skip uh, one of Steiner's turns uh, to save a few seconds. Yeah, so Noble's in the top right here on uh, Keeper's screen for Team Tom Bruce. Uh It's a pretty simple mini game. You just have to press the buttons that Blank tells you to press as, as he says them. Um, there's a level of leniency to it and whatnot, but if you're able to press them all successfully, the game just awards you 10,000 kill, which is quite a lot of money at the beginning of the game. Um, but if you don't get all 100 and they are not impressed with your performance, it instantly drops off to less than 900 kill. So the game does have essentially two routes for whether or not you get nobles or not. But uh, I have confidence in uh, on our runners today that they're going to be able to bring 100 nobles, all of them going to bring all 100, all three of our runs. Did it? Yeah. Go for puck skip. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see. Did he go for it? No. No. Not on HD. Fair enough. Yep. So um, keeper here on team time is now. As soon as this little bit of dialogue here ends, he's going to be equipping the mage masher. This is when the masher first starts to become used in the run and you're going to be seeing it up until ooh, when we get the limblum when it finally gets replaced about an hour and a half deep or so so it's, it's going to do some work it's going to do quite a lot of work um we've got mog with easily doing the one of the only two ates that we're going to be witnessing in the game 
a really cool mechanic that they added to 9 to give you a bit of backstory onto the characters that are not in the frame currently. Things like that, but uh, we don't obviously really want to be paying attention to that too much. But um, that one's forced, and there's another one, there's, actually there's two more that are forced later, I forgot. Oh. There's another one that we will willingly activate in order to uh, get a really powerful piece of gear. Hello, uh, this is Keeper BK. I just wanted to say hi during this quick break. Uh, thanks to the commentators, uh, good luck to the other runners, and yeah, it's a pleasure to be doing the run in uh, front of all of you. So, best of luck. <laughs> Much love, Keeper. Yeah, good luck again to all the other runners. We got this. Nice, cozy, comfy FF9 run for the night. Oof. All right, so um, easily just taken out a goblin, a, a random encounter more specifically. There's only two things that can spawn here, and they're both the same really. Um, if you take out one of them, you gain quite a lot of individual experience just for um, Zidane. That's going to really help with our leveling coming forward. Um, if you decide not to kill it, it can it can really really mess with your level in one of the more important boss fights in about 30 minutes or so. So it's, it's kind of important that we uh, take the time to force that now. Take that out. We also have a little demonstration of trance as well, because uh, we all love trance, don't we? <laughs> Pretty sure it's a favorite of everyone in the community. So it's really, I'm sure Pete, I'm sure that it won't happen. Actually, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad, but uh, yeah, there's uh, you have two trans abilities here with the Mage Masher, and uh, one of them is single target and the other is area of effect. So if you accidentally use the wrong one, you actually just game over it instantly. You accidentally uh, take Dagger out at the same time. And that's uh, that's pretty bad. That's, uh, that's some time lost, that one. We don't do that one. So there's quite a lot of uh, shuffling around in the prologue, the first 30 minutes or so of disc one. Um, introducing all the characters, introducing, introducing the, the world, setting the stage, that sort of stuff um, for the world of FF9. And it's a lovely little experience, um, but it is kind of long. It does go on for a little bit. Fortunately, uh, PC is able to actually skip cutscenes. Um, so it becomes a little bit more manageable in PC. Getting into mashes, for example, and whatnot takes a little bit less time. And I think that's a great uh, lead way into announcing there is a CSR that just came out for 9 PC, um, and there is a speedrunning leaderboard for it as well. For anybody that's interested for a shorter run without cutscenes, it cuts uh, what normally would be about an 8-hour run down into about 4 hours, which is pretty nice when uh, you're short on time or you don't want to have to sit through a bunch of cutscenes. Very powerful tool. Really, really, really good, actually. Yeah. It's uh, it's got all of the actual gameplay sections in, so it's it's perfect for learning the run, or even just competing. It's actually gotten pretty competitive pretty fast. Um, you can just take everything from the the regular PC route and apply it directly to CSR. It's great, actually. Yeah, my favorite part takes a, a booster run down from uh, an hour and a half to under 40 minutes. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure how... Uh... Not because you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how Tifa died here on the beat screen. <laughs> Something must have gone wrong. But uh, Zidane's not supposed to go down there. <laughs> All right, last nobles coming up. Yep. Um, and one thing cool about PC nobles compared to the standard PlayStation, um, on PC, like Brutal was saying, you get a, a good chunk of leeway. So there's 49 inputs for nobles. 
and you can just miss all of the first five or, or the N5, or one input from the first seven or N7. So as long as your mistake is uh, toward the beginning or end, you still have a really good chance to hit nobles. Um, along with, you can kind of pause in between inputs and still hit 100, where on PC I think you just need to to rush through, if that's correct for, for PlayStation. I actually saw a really cool, <laughs> Pete did it by accident, it was a really cool strategy. Because, like you said, you have a little bit of leniency in PC, you can actually afford to get one or two wrong in the early game or late game. Um, rather than trying to react to the first button press, you just kind of mash. And then you get the first one wrong, and then while the animations are playing for failure, you can react in more in time with the rest of them, and potentially save a few frames, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> I think he did it by accident. <laughs> but I was like, hey, <laughs> that's <pretty> cool. <laughs> So Ooh. Keeper come out to uh, Steiner 1, um, one of the cooler fights where um, ATB really comes into play. Uh, you can kind of do it in Mass Man, but it really shows in Steiner 1, where you can either just play a normal and give Steiner 2 hits, or if we use uh, ATB weight, if we have good enough ATB. Ah, oh, it was so close. I thought he was going to get it, that's unfortunate. It is just a dice roll, unfortunately, whether or not you, you need two people with ATBs good enough to be able to hold time before Steiner um, finishes his attack, really. And unfortunately, Steiner was a little bit too slow. Unfortunately. It was very close. The, the rolls, too, he sent all three, so you can also send all three, and if everybody uh, essentially high rolls, you can also um, one turn Steiner in that fight, but it's a, it's a very rare thing, relying on Steiner yet? to high roll. I still yeah, haven't I've got, seen it. <laughs> I've gotten it a few times. You've gotten it a few times? Yeah. How have you not got world record? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this two second time save, definitely world record. <laughs> Ooh, that's really good ATV for uh, uh, Choco in the bottom left. Uh, ultimately, in this fight, you just want to get in front of Mas uh, Baku. If you get in front of him, you see two of his attacks. If you get behind him, you see three. Very simple. Um, it's all, unfortunately, out of your control in RNG. But auto battle makes it a little bit easier to get the inputs out uh, instantly. Perfecto. No misses. Can't ask for any more than that. Yeah, there's also a good chunk of that where, uh, depending on when Baku decides to hit um, behind Zidane, if he hits right behind Zidane or waits right before Zidane's turn, you can save a good chunk of time if uh, Baku goes right after Zidane. Because Baku is much slower than Zidane here in this fight. Alright, so we got all three nobles. Uh, Cab, is there, is there even a backup in HD if you don't get nobles? Um, a normal run, since you just reset there, but uh, you can follow the same um, Petro route backups and just do the pickups and still be fine. Yeah, you're right. losing the two. I didn't moves. know yeah, if, if you guys would just reset or actually do the backups. Interesting. Yeah, I believe they back up up RTA. I know that Pete was working on something this week. Just to see if it was doable. Um, I think he tried a route to see if the kill was fine. I think the run finished. <laughs> I can't really remember. <laughs> it was um, the, you know. He does have a route. Um, there was a backup that we we do have, um, just in case. Um, it's just a lot less refining and a couple more pickups. Yeah, imagine if you routed out Oak Staff and uh, a few other things um, that you don't necessarily need. You could also get to where you need to be. So once again, we actually didn't really see too much of it, but Steiner 2 on t uh, Keeper screen, Tom Brady top right, right now, um, is the second fight with Steiner. And the idea here is you can end the fight by dealing lethal damage to Steiner, or you can actually have only Dagger alive. So with um, up to three of your characters, you have them attack themselves, knock themselves out, and that is actually um, a condition for the fight to end and to proceed. Whereas attacking Steiner and his, his goons actually forces them to flee and there's animations involved and whatnot. Plus Steiner has uh, over 100 HP, so he takes a bit of a bit of beating if you want to go down that path. So ultimately what you want to see here is three good ATBs. 
any three, and then you can use those three to take out uh, Zidane, Didi, and Marcus as quickly as possible. You just want to see as few turns as you can from the enemy guys. That's the speed. Okay, two's, two's fine. It's kind of normal. Yeah, nine is interesting, especially early on in the game. You get a lot of uh, what I would call fail forward tactics. Um, this is definitely one of them. Mass Man's very obvious where you can either uh, hurt him enough or just off yourself. Um, which makes the, the speed running gives you a few different options, and most of them, most of the time, it's just go ahead and just kill yourself. She so, easily got through that forest so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and zooming. Absolutely mm. zooming. That's all brutals. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the top right, we have the bomb uh, fight sign of three. There is uh, a little bit of a nuance. So this whole ATV waiting, which essentially gives you extra turns, can be used on the side of the bomb here. And essentially what you want to be seeing is this bomb then to grow again without Steiner saying princess. If Steiner says princess again, then um, you've not quite hit it properly and you've, well, you've seen the fight normally, but there, right there, you didn't see Steiner say an extra dialogue box and it just grew. It saves up to three seconds. It's not huge, but it is something. <laughs> this, we'll uh, take it. <laughs> this is the game where every, every little counts. Meanwhile, uh, down in Choco Town, um, we have another interesting mechanic where um, a boss fight uh, at half HP, something changes. Uh, in this case, we can also decide to suicide uh, Zidane here to bring bring, bring Blank in early um, instead of doing that half HP. That's what we use for the speedrun. So the back end of Evil Forest here is typically you don't see any encounters, sometimes you might see one. There's going to be a really quick menu. We're going to... Did we steal the broad... Oh, no broadsword steal. Okay. So we're 0-1 on the broadie right now. Um, quick menu to put some gear in the right place. Um, and there is a forced encounter just before you exit, which spawns between two and four plant spiders, worth a chunk of experience each. Um, in Final Fantasy IX, at the end of a fight, experience is divided amongst the um, non-KO'd players. So for each party member alive, they'll get a, a, an equal portion of the experience, rounded down actually, so you can miss out on experience, I believe. So three here, there's, there's 66 experience on the table, and you want to try and funnel as much of it into Zidane and Steiner as possible. Ooh, that was a really quick ATV on the left plant spider there. But you've got to make sure that Zidane hits level 3 um, during all of this, so yeah. Okay, we're going for the last one. Looks like we're going to go for Zidane and Steiner alive. 33 a pop, pretty good. This will definitely get Zidane to level 3. Nice fight. So, something interesting on uh, Keeper's screen up in Tonberry is uh, we actually take a fight here before Plan Brain. I don't know if we mentioned that. But it's on par with getting Zidane to level 3, we need to take one fight. Um, it's always either a goblin or a fang. Uh, they both give the same amount of experience. Um, so usually we just run around there in the top right corner until we get an encounter. And then move on into, uh, sorry, prison cage. <laughs> right on. So is this, this is prison cage 1 that... Uh keeper's coming into. Yeah, this is the transitorial again. Um, <laughs> keeper, do you want to, uh, sorry, Cap, do you want to talk, tell us about trans? <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, essentially, trance is, it's a bit of a comeback mechanic when you're, uh, when you're getting wailed on. It will, do its best to activate. Um, it has a random chance to activate. Sorry, it has a random chance to build trance meter every, si every single time your, your character takes damage from an enemy source. 
so it means you can't donk your own dudes the game trends um, in addition it goes up randomly based on your spirit stat up to certain thresholds and whatnot um, I think the minimum you probably have to take at minimum somewhere between like seven and eight hits or something like that to build a full bar of trance assuming you get some big builds which you don't see not really yeah i believe um, that's what they were talking about in segmented is uh if you get real lucky with it eight is usually about where you're sitting yeah so that tutorial is just showing you what it does and how it changes some of your characters it alters all of your characters in a different way so Dan gains access to um, a new menu. He's, he loses the access to the skills ability, which is unfortunate in some ways, but he gains access to the dying abilities instead. Um, so for each skill that he's learned or is learning in his skills, is translated directly into a dying ability. Um, and the Mage Master gives you two. It gives you free energy and it gives you Tidal Wave? Tidal Flame? Tidal Flame? Tidal Flame, that's the one. Um, which you want to make sure you don't lose because it will accidentally knock out Dagger and you'll lose instantly. But on this one, Prison Cage 2, which we see in top right, two attacks from each character, and the final round, granted you don't miss, Zidane is going to go for a steal while Steiner is going to go for a final attack. Now, we really want to see the broadsword. It's not running if we don't, but it's less than ideal. Um, it's 75% chance, I believe, to steal the broad, uh, broadsword. Um, it's a it's a hundred percent chance, but you reach into the deeper pockets first. So right. with a twenty five percent chance of the leather wrist, um, actually, if we're better at stealing, we get the less optimal <laughs> piece of gear. In this situation. There we go. That was it. That was a, that was a little leather wrist steal. So, so we got the rest. Don't forget. Deal. Yes. Don't forget. You can also get nothing. That is an option. <laughs> you can <miss. laughs> <laughs> so for Leather Wrist, we'll get a little more evasion, a little more uh, magic evasion, um, which is a little bit interesting on the next two big fights. Uh, since Plant Brain does cast Pollen, we have a good likelihood that Pollen will actually miss on Zidane if we equip it early, and a better chance at evading uh, Sea Lion's melee attacks later on. Indeed. So... In the uh, yeah, it also it brings your spirit up, so it should. Uh, no, I suppose it wouldn't raise, raise your crit chance, would it? It's just one point of spirit. Not really. Ooh, I would like oh, to briefly oh. explain my Leo fight. <laughs> <laughs> you may. So I I realized a browser source was on my feed, like as I went into the fight, and then yeah, it's all good. Uh, all good. <laughs> Got schmixed. It happens. So it looks like uh, easily got an encounter um, for Ice Cave. Looking to take it, looks like. Um, you do have the opportunity if you take it with the least oh, amount of members still standing. to get uh, level 4 Zidane. Is it going to kill? Ooh. Go on, easily. That did not go. go optimally. I wanted level 4, but not like that. <laughs> you got it. You did get it, right? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, I don't think you did. I hope so. No way. That is unfortunate. Oh. Yeah, I think with two, effort. two of the furry guys, you need to only have one person. I think you can get it with flans. If you get three flans, because they, they're pretty beefy on experience. Unfortunately, you don't really see them until the, the smaller end screen, I don't think. So, uh, if you choose not to steal Mage Master at the beginning of the game, uh, your next opportunity to get it is here in the Ice Cave, off to the side. But uh, with all the battles that you can just breeze through, um, doing double damage, uh, you do save, usually on average, I think it's three minutes. Um, yeah, on standard, I was about to say, with my four minute Mage Master, I think I still save time over picking it up. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I think you're just there. I think you're still, yeah. In the green side of taking that. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's a minute 10 on your fastest Mage Master you could possibly get on PC. So with that, the three minutes there. Um, heat's definitely in, in the green compared to uh, Ice Cavern Mage Master split. 
pop quiz. Does anyone know where the Mage Masher is in this cavern? Yep. <laughs> you do? All right. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it the longest screen on the bottom right? I don't you know. Gotta move, I'm move the, you you got to have BB <laughs> move, the, move the platform and then, yeah. Yeah, it's on where you cast. It's on the top of, you know where there's the log that you have oh, to burn the to lock down? Oh. It's the top one. Oh. I'm wrong. So it's visible is what you're telling me? Yes. Oh, so, baby. Even if you get the bottom chest, you still have to cast it again to get the top chest. <laughs> you you have to get it before you get the bottom chest, otherwise you can't get it. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> so we are playing no major skips. Uh, just to go over where Pete's going, you can actually skip prison cage um, with what's called a menu buffer. Uh, essentially, you keep opening up the menu fast enough to pass through the trigger where that fight starts, uh, skipping that part, not learning trance. Um, but this is no major skip, so we will be taking every single required piece of the game. Yeah, so no major, so, so the any percent category actually skips um, a number of triggers where you kind of walk into the enemies, doesn't it? Yeah, so we can skip everywhere where there's no physical border. And actually, uh, Prison Cage is not physical. You can literally stand inside his body and run around as long as you don't go too far forward and hit the uh, the battle trigger. I just want to point out that PlayStation doesn't have any skips, so um, no major skips is sort of the most popular HD category just because it's most similar to the PlayStation run. So we've got Sea Lion on the... And the menu buffering is a, is a pain from what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are level 4. Level 4 really helps out in this fight just because it gives you an extra 39 HP, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it's, it's chonky. It's real chonky, man. Um, it looks like we got in front of Black Waltz 1 here, the little wizard on the bottom left. That's brilliant. That's oh. kind of the ideal opener. Um, we... Other fun facts about being level 4, your minimum or maximum damage rolls increases by 4 on each, so you have, you have a much higher chance of 5 hitting sea line. Mm -hmm. Yep, it goes from almost impossible to sometimes happens. <laughs> 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 so it's going to be 3 attacks to kill Black Waltz. Uh, you can't attack sea line. Uh, Really, because every time you do Black Waltz, then has his turn healing him up instead for more than you think you can possibly deal. Yeah, the only way to really get around that was if Trance, where you can cast uh, Tidal Flame. Um, so if you're looking to build up some Trance energy, you can do that, but it's not what we do in the speedrun. Praying for a miss here so we can keep swinging. Oh no, you can't swing. You don't want, you don't want. Never mind. I'm on, I'm on the wrong turn. I'm on the wrong turn. Don't listen to me. This is why I'm not friendly. <laughs> So, Sea Lion, uh, very interesting. Um, it really is dictated by behind how you get hit, so how many potions we have to take. Uh, at minimum, we have to take at least two potions um, right after both of his, or sorry, right before both of his counter abilities. Uh, we're going to get the first counter right here, uh, where he's going to cast Blazara, which does either 56 or 63 damage, uh, followed by his regular turn. Um, which is either another bl blizzard attack, which will do 36 damage, or a wing. And we are hoping for that low roll on that wing, so that lets us just go ahead and swing again. Uh, just hoping not for a crit here. On PC you can crit, on uh, PlayStation you can't, so something that makes it a little more scary on PC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you uh, get a crit on the wrong turn, it... you're done, Zay. Hey everyone, I'm a little bit late. My alarm didn't go off. That's the baby boy. But uh, yeah, my name is Sire. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm ready now. But yeah, a little bit late to the party. But I'm, uh, I'm here. Good morning, Smokey Head. All good, dude. Welcome. Um, that's the five hit. Oh, you actually got it? Let's go. So that second counter, we'll see a tsunami, which does either 72 or 81 damage and then the follow-up wing or blizzard. Um, what you can do on this fight, what Easy's talking about, is the five hit. So if you average, I believe it's 96 on each roll, uh, you'll be able to five hit sea lion 
um, which gives the interesting opportunity on PC if you do crit right before that last counter and you're lined up for a five hit, you can actually avoid that tsunami counter. But I've never personally seen that. I believe Keeper just got the weight on Plant Brain. Did I see that correctly? Because uh, that's pretty tricky. So there's a number of ATB weights you can do in this game, and the vast majority of them actually aren't necessary at all. Um, they just help you save time, except for one toward the end of the game, which we can get to later. But the one on Plant Brain is actually particularly difficult because of... Especially uh, on PC too, it's just because it's slower. It's slower yeah, I, I, I've never hit it on PC. <laughs> I ran it for a bit, and I... Uh, I knew it was possible, but I just I just didn't go for it. <laughs> so that's a, that's some good stuff, man. Well, I'll play. Something you might also notice, I know uh, Keeper did it here, uh, easily did it, and maybe Pete will do some of this. But on PC, um, you usually use a controller, but you have the option of using keyboard and mouse. So we might see a few clicks uh, as PC only has uh, eight directions of inputs you can do while on um, PlayStation, you can still use the analog to do slightly, you know, slightly upright directions or whatnot to really optimize the movement. So on yeah, PC, like to get like that optimized movement, you gotta, sort of you gotta click. Yeah, exactly. North, northeast. <laughs> Who knew that touchpad controls would be optimal? <laughs> I, I do, I do remember like for so long people ran this game on a controller because like you, 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 you wouldn't really think about it. You just whack in a controller and play this game. No one thinks about mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. And then me and Pete sort of had a um, sort of similar thinking, and we we're just thinking about like mouse and keyboard controls because this is actually a port of the mobile version. So all the HUD is it looks kind of weird because it's it's the mobile version. And then I put out a video showing like how fast um, the long like, this very long menu in this game that we'll get to later how fast that menu can be if it's um, if you do it on mouse and keyboard. And Pete also had like the that that sort of similar line of thinking. And yeah, he, he runs this game on keyboard and mouse now. He doesn't even use a controller. Crit. Um because it's it's just it's so much faster, truthfully. Crikey, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm gonna be critting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's forgive my voice as well. I've, I've, I've somewhat lost my voice. I won't forgive you. I'm sorry. All right, okay. we better okay, see the uh, the five turn C line crit into a four turn. That was phenomenal. Why yeah, not I just a two don't... turn though? <laughs> I just hope I don't uh, crit C line at the wrong time. So here in the uh, Choco Town, we're in the village of Dali. And there are the infamous kids. Uh, we'll come to a little bit later. Um, the first real kind of break we get, uh, we get about two minutes here uh, once we enter Dali. Um, kind of time to, to wind down, you know, talk with the locals, visit <laughs> visit a bar, visit a farm, and just uh, check out the, the, the local agriculture. Yeah, for some. Some people really like the farm, so they visit the farm twice. Uh, but I know everyone visits the farm and the bar, so it must be a real uh, local attraction. Yeah, so when it comes to the story, the Dali is a bit of a, a bit of down-tempo. There's been actually been quite a lot of action and uh, fights and stuff like that going on, as we saw with uh, crashing the Prima Vista, Evil Forest, and then Ice Caverns. So it's a bit of a position for the player to kind of wind down and chill out a little bit. We, can do, we actually will do some shopping here momentarily, picking up some goodies when we get to Limlim to make some of our more powerful gear with. FF9 has um, a functionality uh, in the towns called synthesizing, where you can craft more powerful pieces of gear using uh, regular pieces of gear. Um, we make use of that quite a lot to make some pretty, pretty strong swords and armor. Um, but more often than not, you can't actually pick up the items that you want the, the ingredients to synthesize the items in the places where they are synthesized. So part of the routing and how the gill is managed uh, it plays around that. So this is where I'm sure many of you are aware of the cotton robe trick that you can do in this game. 
However, uh, when you're playing this game casually, something that you can do is you can dump pretty much all of your gill into wrists. So that when you get to Limblum, you have to buy just one a steeple hat and you can turn that into a cotton robe and then sell the cotton robe, use that to buy more steeple hats and so on and so forth until you've expended all of your very, very cheap wrists. And you can multiply your money by about 50% or so it goes up by. It's, it's a good chunk, a good old chunk. It'll put you really, really far ahead on Gil in this early part of the game. Um, the speedrun abuses that as much as it can. Um, it's part of the reason why Nobles is as useful as it is because pretty much all of that money is multiplied. Yeah, so we make about, I think it's about 400 gil per, so if we get nine, we're, we're netting 3,600 there, uh, which is no small extra piece when you're using every single gil of that. Even um, casually, the, the, it's, it's so close, the areas are so close to each other, you can... If you've got like a, a an old book of like game cheats and hints, um, you might find it there. <laughs> okay, so we going for this weight trick here on Plant Brain. So he's going to use Vivi to knock out Zidane. This is going to trigger Blank coming in. So he's holding time during all of this as well, and he's going to try and use this time now to ATV weight Blank in to get two turns. So if he gets it correct, it's going to go blank, then it's going to go fire sword on Steiner. Looks close. And then it's going to go blank again. This is never really, really, really on HD before he has the first time I've seen it. It's really tricky. I don't know if he's got it. Just didn't mash through fast enough. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really, really difficult. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice try, though. Ooh. Just whacked blank. It's not it almost got him. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't playing around. <laughs> Paul had actually missed Zidane there. I could have uh, had him suicide. So, Why couldn't so you see the future, Pete? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're going to cheat. <laughs> So we've got more boss battle action coming up here with Keeper going into, uh, into Sea Lion. We saw um, Keeper force a fight um, with, they're called Riots? Weirds? Um, one of those Tusk Monsters. So that will polish the up, and I believe he should be on level 4. Same fight as Easily. I suppose on PC it's actually um, a much more viable option because you, you, you battle, you know, you, you, you load with, well I suppose you would normally load with fight in and then uh, you can skip the battle intro as well so it probably probably is actually at least even really it's a very good idea very good marathon safe strat for sure so once again we're going to want to make sure we're taking out black waltz one first with Zidane uh, three attacks crypt count for two misses count for zero don't miss <laughs> I'm gonna have a bad time if you miss <laughs> <laughs> And the oh, this is zero ATV. It doesn't look like he's going to be getting in front of like what's one here, unless the stars align. <laughs> no dice. It can happen. It can happen. <laughs> Crazier things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the the only issue with having them both go in front of you is that your health is considerably lower going forward, so he may have to... Black Waltz is getting yeah. those fires off too, which is not good. Did he go for the attack? He's going for the attack. Okay, okay he's chancing it, he's chancing it. And he's yeah. getting away with it. <laughs> Let's go! So, the high roll here from uh, <laughs> Sea Lion and Black Waltz is 64, I believe, with a blizzard and a... Oh, 62. With a blizzard and a fire. Yep, nicely calculated. Very well played. Unfortunately, we have to heal a little bit earlier, but that's one of the downsides of level 3 Zidane here. But this will be the final attack on Black Waltz 1, as long as it didn't miss, commentator's curse. I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> Eight breath, we're in. Nice. And then from here, it's just going to be six attacks. A lethal on sea lion and like Cap said earlier, every two attacks is going to be a counter attack. 
which we're going to need to play around. So we've done our first attack. If we attack again, he's actually going to get two turns back to back. He's going to do. He will do Blizzara into either Wing or Blizzard, and uh, I think the most it can do is 99. So as long as you're over that, Yaguchi. Here it comes, counter attack. Yeah, otherwise at level 2, what are we, we're sitting at, I think, 133 health? Is that... 131, I think. 131, so a little bit less. Um, so just getting the, the second counter, we need at least 107. So it, just getting that perfect kind of combination where we can push through these counters uh, becomes yeah. really dicey at level 2 compared to level 3. Yeah, another common strategy for level 2 is kind of just to pray that your trance fills and you can use those dead turns to try and steal. Uh, so this boss actually has a Mithril Dagger, which I believe is like twice as powerful as what you're currently wielding. Um, and it does quite simply pretty much double your damage. Uh, it's which, such a it's such a good steal to get. It it's, is tremendous. I'm a huge advocate of the Mithril Dagger. And it Especially on... Like... um. JP, the, the Japanese version, you actually, you need to be, because Blizzard, uh, Blizzard damage is higher, um, so that counter is, is so much greater, you need to be level 4 to survive Tsunami, um, whereas in these versions you need to be level 3, so if you don't get the opportunity to get to level 4, you can, you know, get in a few steals while you wait for your trans to build, and it cuts turns off of both, um, Black Waltz 2 and Black Waltz 3, which is really, really nice. But it just doesn't always go your way. All right, that's another sea lion down. We are coming up to Black Waltz 2, uh, lower left side for Team Choco with Easley. And then Pete is venturing into the ice cavern himself. I believe he's already level 3, so I think he's going to just gun it. Try and get in there as quickly as possible. Black Waltz 2 as well, such a like deceptively tricky fight. It's it's very hard to get right. It's, it's not like a run killer. It's really not a run killer. At least not like until you're at a high level. But like... It's, it's it's so deceptively tricky to get right. There's so much that, like, that you need to take uh, into account. Yeah, Basically, it does he's, have he's... a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, please. <laughs> he's, uh, he's got a counter similar to Sea Lion, but instead of being every two attacks, it's when he hits a threshold of, of health. So I believe it's 515. Uh, and then he'll do a Fira on the party, except for Dagger. But... He won't do this counter-attack if the last target of his attacks, regardless of what the attack was, if his last target is is dead, he won't do this counter. So ideally, he hits Vivi with a spell or an attack, and Vivi optimally Vivi dies, but if he doesn't, then he whacks himself and, and KOs himself. Um, and then you'll push him over that threshold to... Yeah, to, to get him to, to get past that, that counter hit uh, threshold. And he he won't return with that uh, that Fira that, that in some cases can put the party in pretty dire uh, levels of HP. So yeah. we'll be looking for that. that. That's sort of what we're, the general gist of, of what we're heading into on, um, on Easley's stream. So yeah. what we, we just had on Tomberry's screen, um, it's kind of a, uh, rare side, uh, the four flan fight leaving Ice Cavern. Um, hoping not to see an encounter, but seeing that four flan fight, um, you can only see it on the exit screen for Ice Cavern. So if you did want to get everybody up to level three and level four, that's that's the one to do it. Uh, it looks like easily did take it with a fire all cast there. Yeah, get some get some beefy beefy members of the party, some chonksters. <laughs> so here we go black waltz 2 black waltz 2 always goes first you can't beat it yes you can atb wait in though you can absolutely do that in fact i'm assuming that we're going to see that 
So we're going to want to have the ATBs look good enough to do this. Lead with Z. There we go. Perfecto, perfecto. Feathering. Send that in. Praying for no correct kind uh, of question. <laughs> Trans Trans possible here if we get more Z in hits. All right. So we're going to pay attention to who Black Waltz's target is uh, after the ATB win at least. Mm -hmm. And who's it going to be? That we want looks not like Steiner. Maybe. Okay. Ah, oh, Zidane. You can okay. still do it, but it's... Oh, he didn't... Okay, so he is actually going for the skip here, so... This is good. That Steiner attack will push him uh, over that counter hit threshold. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to revive Zidane, hoping that Zidane doesn't get attacked again, because Zidane in uh with the ap routing i'm sure you guys have covered the, the ap and whatnot already um zidane really needs to live through this uh this battle it's pretty important it's certainly helpful in in most routes at least i mean falk route there's more leeway here for uh oh, oh and the crit is <laughs> easy easy boys i am going <laughs> to have that calm down now <laughs> and and the Aretha, by the way. <laughs> nice. Meanwhile, I got Pete on C line. Looks like we got a preamp against Black Old Swan. <laughs> Tifa's found a knife. <laughs> That's pretty scary. <laughs> 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 She's found two. <laughs> All right, first hit. Ninety six is a good roll too. That's on the better end of things. So we're gonna have to heal here because the turn following is the counter turn. I know that he's level 4, so this is going to take him up to 195. Beefy. Beefster. Get him in. Alright, pushing the second phase. This is going to hit for just under 100 damage. So, depending on... In fact, this, he should be able to just go in here. This should be perfect to attack. I believe even with a high roll here, you should be okay. Yeah, he's got plenty of health. Oh yeah, more than even more than my four. <laughs> even more than oh no, no. Well, I mean, oh. uh, uh, he's got the health. <laughs> he's got the health for the a health. minute. He has got the health. The health is there. Crit? No. <laughs> oh thank goodness! Ah. Thank goodness. Okay, uh, that was a very unfortunate miss, indeed. And I think, um, um, if I remember correctly, Pete's banner icon, or like banner picture on on Twitch, is a C line miss. I might be confusing it with someone else. No, His no, it's 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 a, it's a it's a dead Zidane that's tranced. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, it shouldn't happen. That should never happen. You are so unbelievably powerful during trans during this fight. Yeah. <laughs> if you manage to die, then it's, it's something's the one, gone yeah. really wrong. <laughs> Barely missed the five hit too. Dang, dude. If you do There's trans, a... though, you can uh, actually five hit because it's just just enough at the end of the fight if you trans. Uh, which I don't know if Keeper got it, but I know he trans at the end of C line. From memory, he did, but. I, I didn't have the, uh, I had the Twitch delay at the time, I don't know. Um, so the screen that we just saw for easily on Team Choco is um, one of the game's guiltiest sins. And that is this game. Now, brace, because this is a, this is a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> but this game has cutscene RNG. <laughs> and I wish I was kidding. <laughs> you, you thought the RNG that we talked about was bad. Oh my goodness. Well, let me tell you a thing or two about cutscene RNG. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the most random Final Fantasy. Yeah. I think that's a pretty a pretty comfortable statement to make. It's nothing too controversial. It is delightful. So, yeah. <laughs> it is thoroughly delightful. Um essentially uh, I, I, you know what? I'm only guessing here, actually, but I'm assuming it's when you load into a cutscene. Um, the stage of the animation cycle is randomized um, based on RNG, which is essentially untrackable in Final Fantasy IX. Um, and 
for example, in the, cause in the scene we just saw a moment ago on, in the lower deck, uh, if you're, while you're waiting for Vivi to come back to you, he will first move over to the other black mage that's down there working on the engines, try and alert him, be ignored, and then he will proceed to come back to you. Um, sometimes the black mage just decides to go on a little bit of a wander and will walk all the way to the back of the ship. Um, and if that happens, you watch Vivi um, actually sprint all the way down to go and talk to him and then walk very slowly back to you. <laughs> it lose about eight seconds or so. <laughs> yeah, there's the other side of the coin too. He can uh, walk run to the black mage who comes closer to you which is also a, a nice treat at least it evens out where you have the chance to have good rng in that sequence mm -hmm. there are many egregious forms of cutscene rng many that people are completely unaware of um just because i think it was only just kind of recently discovered just exactly what was going on um someone started to pay a lot of attention to it i think it was segmented runners that uh discovered it <laughs> no someone someone renamed dagger <laughs> <Dang it. laughs> on the topic of segmented runners uh lil gecko the the guy who made the, the the very popular taz that's out there for final fantasy 9 the playstation version he started working on a hd version and he's been putting clips in the discord and that segmented run so far is already hilarious he's taking full advantage of the critical hits um, being a thing early game, whereas on on PSX you don't really get that. That there, there aren't as many like you, you don't crit early. That just because the game calculates critical hits differently. And yeah, Lil Gecko is taking full advantage of uh, of early game crits. And he posted a uh, Black Waltz two fight video on the Discord that made me actually laugh out loud in real life, genuinely laugh. <laughs> and how silly and fast it was. <laughs> so, uh, on Team Choco here, we've got Black Wolves 3. Doing a Thunder Roll. This could trance our boy Z. There it is. There's yeah. the trance. Take advantage of this. Stupid trance. I was going to kill it before the D-trance anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, your rolls look pretty good. Yep, so we're going to guarantee uh, what's called D-trance skip. But unfortunately, it's mitigated by the fact that we had to watch someone <laughs> a second <laughs> trance. <laughs> yeah, Vivi's, Vivi's trance is forced here, so it's. I think it's still net faster to have Zidane trance. Yeah, we get to skip uh, Vivi's second attack here. Yeah, but as Brutal said, it's 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 very much like mitigated by the fact that Zidane has to also trance. Indeed. Um, it can save you a bit of time, I believe. The uh, free energy is a little bit faster than fire. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely. Yeah, there's a few little ways you can kind of manage it and whatnot, but uh, that's pretty much all you can do. It's a shame because the rolls beforehand were pretty good, and we were probably going to skip the trance anyway. There's a chance that you could have taken that trance into Gizmo Loop, where it is a little bit more valuable. Potentially, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Potentially, <laughs> maybe. It's Schroding is transpar, man. <laughs> you don't know if it's filled until you observe it. <laughs> so one of the things I don't think we've touched on yet is uh, Nine was made essentially as a love letter to the first eight. Um, so we get a lot of just snippets from others. Um, on Pete's screen up in Mog, we have the inn, which is the standard inn you'll see in FF1. Um, you'll also see that team composition, the Black Mage, White Mage, Thief, and Warrior, that's the default party you'd get in FF1. Um, I know that. That's really yeah. cool. Uh, Dagger makes a cameo in her White Mage robe. Uh, early on in the game, she never wears it again. But that's also how White Mages look in one. So we get a lot of the same kind of uh, lookalikes. Um, we're going to get some snippets. There's actually a snippet coming up um, that references two directly, um, as well as a few other things. I think two is and one are the most... Uh, in the game, uh, one very easy because it's mostly just visuals, and two uh, has a direct story tie-in. Shout out to the only airships you see not piloted by your own party. <laughs> Someone programmed no, it. There, no, there is there is in. one later in uh, in disc two, which uh, I, I think I've still got this clip when I was stutter stepping. Uh, later in the game, uh, very early in this 2 on the way to, to Treno, 
an airship came in and I got genuinely jump scared by it. Um, which was very funny. I think a big piece of that is too, later in the game, once uh, Mist does disappear, um, canonically, they're just not as, not as around. Uh, some more cutscene RNG in Pete's screen, top left, the uh, Mog, is the amount of times Dagger and Zidane look left and right. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, yep. random. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> You go out of your way to save three seconds of bomb skin, and then you lose it all because they wanted to look at, at the cabbage again. <laughs> so, quick shot, we're picking up those leather wrists that we mentioned earlier. One, sorry, uh, sorry the regular wrists. One leather wrist, the implication didn't steal it. In fact, Pete did buy a leather wrist, and he didn't buy an iron sword, which means. That he did, in fact, get the broadie. <laughs> and I think is our only broadsword seal of the three. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I'm so sad I missed the start. I blamed Samsung. I had an alarm. I had four alarms. <laughs> they didn't go off. <laughs> it's Saturday morning in Australia. That's right. I did commentary for two, and uh, my alarm kept going off, but kept fading back into dreams where I was already doing commentary. So my head was just in a very <laughs> weird That's space. That's so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Tanya. <laughs> so in that, I, I should have pointed out before it happened. We'll try and catch it when a uh, when a uh, uh, keeper gets there. But if oh you my... if you bump into Artania, he just out of existence. And he's just gone, so. <laughs> so, um, speaking of NPCs disappearing, I've discovered one on uh, on the HD a few months ago. Uh -oh. um, if you go to Daguerre or Daguerre, however you pronounce it, there is a NPC that will normally walks um, through to the middle center area um, when you enter from any other screen. Now, if you watch it, it will walk into a pillar and disappear. They're just oh. gone. <laughs> I don't I don't go to Daguerre because in this game I don't play old 2014 routes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that what was if you to rename your party for naming me there? What if I what? What if you needed to rename your party for naming me? Because your teammate uh, had to reload a save. Um, anyway, we've got we've got um, <laughs> we've got keeper for Black Wolves too. Going into turn two, I think it attacks Steiner here. Is he got? Okay, so he's healing up. So he's going to be using a strategy here where yeah. he says attack <laughs> instead of. Yeah, all right, but I'll play your little game. He's missed, he's missed the fear skip. Having Steiner um, KO himself is just it takes so long, and it's such a because Steiner is the one that, did, that deals the most damage in this fight. So. To, to forego Steiner is is just such a, a, a horrible concession to make, so it's just, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but yeah, it's better sometimes to just take the Fira, just cop the Fira, and, you know, carry on. What the critical hit Lovely. Not sure if it was needed, but it looked cool. Um... Yeah, so if you actually meant managed to steal the micro dagger, we went, oh, a double ether drop too. Swimming in the bucks. Um, if you uh, steal the micro dagger from Sea Lion earlier, you can actually um, quite easily complete the fight without Steiner being alive, and you can yes, you can take yeah. him out and push the fight that way because Zidane's damage is so egregious with the micro dagger. You, you just you don't need any help anymore, man. Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> I I got this. Have we talked about? how in this game everything's a bird uh not yet all right may i because <laughs> yeah, i love this so of those abilities that that you know that you can equip that certain uh armors and weapons give you you've got stuff like devil killer which does damage to you know enemies that are considered devils uh you've got um you know undead killer anything considered a zombie that will take damage from healing items etc and then you've got our favorite in the speedrun, Bird Killer. So, what it's meant to be is 
deal damage, oh sorry, deal extra damage, I believe it's 1.5 times damage to uh, anything that is an airborne enemy. But like how that actually translates in the game is so literal, but also kind of not. It's anything that doesn't have feet touching the ground is considered a bird. But then at the same time, um, sea lion is considered a bird. I believe because the target that you're hitting is is like high up in the air, and I don't think they programmed in like the full body of the sea lion or something. Uh, so well, if you look really closely, sea lion's not touching the ground. Is it not? Okay, I, I, I didn't you gotta really look notice. real close though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, every everything's a bird. I, I I made a I made a meme a long time ago, uh, based on Auntie Donna's uh, Big Old House of Fun. It's a, it's a Netflix show, and then you know everything's a drum. There's a song like everything's a drum, and then doing a little music piece. But I I replaced it with uh, everything's a bird, and photoshopped in a bunch of enemies. Even the final boss is considered a bird. He's definitely flying though. It's so weird as well because I was talking about this with Sheriff Falk once. Um, it, it, in the noble sequence you get a little thing saying like Queen Bran was not impressed you can impress Queen Bran and if you do you go up to a, an NPC in the castle you go a different uh, a different way and you you pick up a I don't know what the accessory is I can't remember off the top of my head uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure someone else will yeah um, and oh, that no. gives you the that That's gives you beast is, killer it, it gives you a beast killer and it would be really interesting if Sea Lion was considered a beast, because then if you impress Queen Bran, that very difficult boss becomes slightly easier. So I noticed that uh, easily may have just made a slight shopping error. Okay, he's good. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He's scraping out with 18 killiums. Let's go. Oh my goodness. What All those extra fights paying I, off. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> you know, acting and eyeing. What? What happened? I, I missed so, it. He accidentally bought eleven in head years. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but was able to sell them. I'm just glad you had time. enough money. Yeah. Oh close. my god. <laughs> you want to buy the yellow first if you do that, just in case you don't have enough money. But no, we forced the extra encounters. It was fine. Mistake. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes into opportunities. That reminds so, okay. me of uh, Chef PMT buying uh, 11 barbets or 8 barbets or something in an early shop in Disc 2 during a race that we were all doing. And everyone was, because that's a pretty like mellow moment and we're all pretty even. And then you just hear Chef <laughs> start screaming. <laughs> uh, much love to Chef. Yeah, in stark contrast to Final Fantasy 1 where you can only buy one item at a time. <laughs> no, that's, that's FF, good. That's FF9, good. you can most certainly dump all of your life savings instantly if you wish, and there are no returns. <laughs> you lose, you get nothing. <laughs> I'm so I'm so pumped for that Final Fantasy One NES run later as well. I'm I'm making time out of my day to watch that. Yeah, it should be a great challenge. Right, the final instance of Black Wolves Two for this year's relay. Here on two. the screen, once again, we are looking to lead. Oh, with... it is two. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I was I was um, I had my focus on Tomri, which I shouldn't. I bleed pink, Team Choco <laughs> till I die. <laughs> All right, getting in there with Zidane first. We go for the weight. That instant attack on Vivi is is actually pretty cool. We want to see that using auto battle here just to get everyone. Oh in. yeah, Pete. Um, Pete wax with your weaker party members as well because it can sometimes be the difference between a uh, like a turn being necessary or not. Yeah. Um, later on in the fight. fight. This looks like it's on V. Oh, it's on Z. Make it a And the axe. And Tifa's gonna whack herself down. Tifa looking very masculine, very blonde. Um, very powerful. Very powerful. Okay, so we're just hoping here that Black Wolves 2 does not target Zidane again. Please. Thank you very much. There's another oh, crit. Thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> you got another critical hit. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> That's like RTA, one of the like nicest fights you can get. That looked really fast. I'm, I'm sure it's been covered as well um, already, but but Pete and Keeper BK are ranked one and two, number one and two respectively. 
on the speedrun.com leaderboard. Um, I'm not hugely, f I wasn't hugely familiar with Easily before the run, no shade or anything, I, I just uh, wasn't like hugely familiar with Easily um, prior to the event. Um, but Pete and Keeper BK, uh, very much new blood in the scene. Pete less so, he kind of joined around the same time as me, um, back in like 2021. But Keeper is, from what I understand, very recent and made improvements really fast. I was really impressed with Keeper BK um, and how how fast he's uh, he's improved. Considering, yeah, I think he's only been in like this. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like it, it's only been like this year, right? Yeah, I believe back in January, or February. Uh, same with Easley. Easley's um, pretty new. Easley's new blood as well. well. Awesome, yep. awesome. Love to um, see. There's a huge amount of, of FF9 new blood, which is really great to see. Yeah, I wouldn't put easily out either because uh, his his time, his last time I believe he put up was on par with a top five finish. Uh, a few things, the RNG didn't go super bad. Right, right. So it's uh, it's a really good showing we have here for all yeah, three runners. That was the one with the really bad Earth Guardian, right? Yeah. We don't we don't talk about Earth Guardian <laughs> or next <or> one. <laughs> <laughs> Can I Keep, just do Keeper is, magic? <laughs> Keeper as well had a uh, a world record pace run uh, quite a while ago that I was I was watching and it it just fell apart at Death Guys, which um, we'll get to later. But it just it just fell apart. It was such a heartbreaker. I was so like I was at work I think and it was kind of quiet, so I got to be able to watch it on uh, on my phone and like all limbs clenched and it just didn't go his way it just wasn't it just wasn't meant to be that day i guess all right yeah, keeper so keep bk I think, is, is very I much think our runners need so a lot of concentration for this part coming up that we're seeing demonstrated oh here. yes so, yes this is one of the most challenging parts of the entire run the um, dreaded telescope it's not on pc because of auto clicker oh no Oh, true. Oh, yeah, no, oh, he's right. No, he's right. We would have looked great, and now we don't. Thanks. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's still really hard. <laughs> you have to uh, view five locations from around the Miss Continent for the telescope here, and uh, it's it can be pretty tricky to re-inspect the same one and get back, caught in the little vortex here. So try try not to do that. Yeah, on PlayStation, it's definitely like it's so frustrating because like it takes a little while. There's a little animation of you like refocusing back on that point, and when you're when you just see yourself start to move back, there's just this like heart sinking feeling. You just your gut drops. It feels awful because it's not even like it's not a boss. It's not a fight. It's not even like it's nothing to do with like movement really. So it just it just feels bad. Telescope guys. So, our last combatant for Black Wolves Three. Um, so we haven't really talked too much about uh, what you can do as a player in this fight. Um, the the bare bones mechanics are the first time it's dealt physical damage, um, he'll take off. Um, and then following that, once he reaches the top of his arc, he'll actually then uh, finally re his turn. So you have a little bit of a window to get Steiner and Vivi in front where they would actually normally miss their turn completely. Um, and it is actually essential for, de for dealing with this boss in a, a reasonable amount of time. So the first turn is always going to be Zelan attack into um, a fire sword and two fires from Vivi or something to that effect. And then uh, Black Wolves 3 is going to use uh, Thundara all. Our setups um, allows us to always survive just that one attack. And then the following turn we deal lethal damage uh, no matter what. There aren't any opportunities for us to low roll so deeply that we can't uh, kill him but making sure that we get those attacks in in time is essential and 
if amongst all these attacks we deal enough damage. So we're looking for 1 8s and above, 1 8 plus from Vivi and like 260 plus from Steiner. Um, a combination of those numbers will allow Vivi to not have to use. Okay, so Zidane connected, that's always a good start. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if he, he can miss and he will still take off, fortunately. But, you know, uh, and, and if he crits, table. if he crits, I, I believe that like fully guarantees the the D trans. So, it does, as yeah. Brutals was saying, if VB doesn't need to cast a second fire, he then won't deplete his trans bar, and thus won't need to D trans. And it's mm -hmm. like eight seconds, I believe. It's 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 a it's a nice piece of uh, of time save. I nice think. Sheriff Falk's uh, route does have a suggestion to steal from this boss as Zidane. You can get a Linen Curse, which you can sell, a Steepled Hat, which saves Gil in that you don't have to buy uh, one Steepled Hat. And I don't remember the third steal if there is one. Um, okay, so this is the judgment. Is it going to be high enough? You no, can see the ATBs disappear. No. Okay, so Pete is actually really... I quickly talk about the hunt. So the hunt is one of the most uh, impactful parts of this one. Um, coming up, we need to make sure that Zidane wins. Zidane absolutely has to win. Um, I'm, not, I'm not humoring this at all. Stop it right now. <laughs> so, and explain uh, what we actually do. So he's going to get into a fight with Moo. He's going to defeat the Moo. And then he's going to move on to uh, the trade district where he's going to equip uh, the Ogre, a Yellow Scarf and Leather Wrist, Beast Killer. Um, we're going to gear up because we're going to have to start taking out some monsters. Uh, we need to make sure that Freya does not win. Um, she gives us a piece of equipment and it's really, really not very good. So we really want Zidane to win here. We're going to need the money to, to buy some resources before we ship out to Gizmaluk. So Thank you. first fight coming up is a, just a two attack turn. Uh, it, you pretty, it's pretty, pretty hard to get defeated by the move. He goes down pretty quickly, so uh, it doesn't look like he's gonna get a preempt. And <laughs> oh, dude! Oh, oh man! No way! No way, dude! Did you just that ends the hunt instantly? Oh no! But you're not gonna have enough money. <laughs> oh no! Damn trolls! <laughs> 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 Um, no, for we the, don't want for those unfamiliar. Want for those, yeah, for those unfamiliar, I, I wasn't on board with the bit at first. I tried to get him to actually explain, and then I realised it would be really funny if I was on board. <laughs> um, but yes, you actually don't want Zidane to win the hunt, and you don't want Vivi to win either. Freya gives us Coral Ring, which, uh, yeah, so by by KOing Zidane with himself uh, right off the bat, Freya wins the hunt by default gives us coral ring the person who has it equipped gets i think man eater and something else and you also absorb thunder damage which is really really good uh yeah. insomniac's the other one it is insomniac, insomniac. thank you yeah thank you thank you so uh so insomniac being uh you are immune to, to sleep which is a uh, very insensitive <laughs> to actual yeah. insomniacs <laughs> it's really hard to uh <laughs> to not have Freya win the fight. Um, you have to pretty much play it all out to get Zidane to win, and it's even harder to get Vivi to win. Um, so I Vivi, think in all bosses, you need, to, you need to actually go and fight the Zagul or whatever its name is. Yeah, the Zagul. That, so, that's the one, yeah. If you see up on uh, Keeper's screen, going into that last screen on Business District, that's where the Zagul is, but only appears after that 12 minute timer knocks down to four and a half minutes. And so the way you can do it is uh, take a swing with Zidane and then have Freya jump, or it's two swings with Zidane. Um, and so her jump damage will do enough to kill it off, and then you just make sure Zidane's not alive, and you could still get the Coral Ring, um, but it's considered a unique encounter for uh, all bosses, so you have to take it. I just, um, I'm so sorry, I just saw in the in the Discord, uh, Brutals gave a nice ping about six minutes ago atting us all and saying hey play up the hunt with me and i i didn't read it i'm so sorry brutals i've ruined your bit <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even you, you you told me to play along and i just didn't oh god 
So one thing I don't think we touched upon was uh, when Easily did buy those headgears. Um, so in final, most Final Fantasies, uh, when you buy something, it's full price. You can sell it back for half price um, at that moment. Um, and with the route we take for uh, PC at least, um, you usually don't have a lot of gil, um, but luckily with marathon strats and more encounters uh, that we no normally don't take, we have a little bit of leeway. So easily is still perfectly on track and actually looks like has a little extra gil rocking. So stutter stepping as well. Um, a relatively new rule um, added. They, they used to, it used to be on speedon.com that you could either use auto clicker or turbo. And I was a big advocate for um, turbo over auto clicker, but they eventually like decided just just have both. Like it's it's mm -hmm. like you know why are we doing this kind of mm -hmm. thing? Um, so stutter stepping um, on PC is really really good because me and Sheriff Falk actually found the exact hurts. Um, I, I haven't run PC in a while, forgive me, but I believe it's something like 93 or 92 hertz. Um, and that is Mine's absolute optimal. Oh, not optimal. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, sorry. It's not, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, that was so rude. Um, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so stutter stepping, very, very nice on PC because... Um, yeah, it's effectively like a, a, a nice turbo. Auto clicker as well. I remember me and Sheriff Falk back in the day, we used to have a, we used to take a highlighter and highlight over the, uh, when you're skipping the FMV, you'd put the, uh, like you'd highlight, you'd scribble highlighter on your screen over the yes option. So you would put your cursor over the, <laughs> over the highlighted part and hit the auto clicker. So it would, it would, it would skip the FMV like frame one. That sounds like excellent. a tool, that. That sounds like you're using tools. No, no, no. A highlighter, <laughs> you cannot sit here and tell me in good faith that a highlighter on your monitor is a tool. Yeah. On my, on, on my old monitor, I, I, I did this so much. My um, You can usually wipe it off, but I, I don't know what happened. I guess the monitor was like a bit crap quality or something. But it's stuck in. There's a little yellow dot on my monitor. I can't use it anymore. Um, yeah, don't try it home. Uh, we don't need to anymore. Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, the, the the point of what I was saying was uh, you you just saw easily stutter step through a forest, which is not going to uh, most likely not going to happen again, because forests while stutter stepping will avoid um, encounters on the overworld. When you're in a forest, you can get these friendly encounters. The ragtime mouse being the most inf uh, infamous for speedrunners. Um, yeah, stutter stepping will not avoid encounters, friendly encounters that is, in forests. You can, regardless of, uh, of, you know, the fact of you know, if you're stutter stepping or not. And the ragtime mouse is just an awful, awful thing to see. So we'll see on uh, Easley's screen here is uh, Burmesia or Burmesia equivalent places use a bell system as keys. Um, so what we did is we talked to one of the guards here to get a bell. Um, there are a few options we have later on. Uh, we can fight a second set of mages for another bell or we can go back and actually grab another bell from that guard. Um, which I believe uh, Pete's going to do where he's going to go back and grab that bell and skip the second encounter. Um, interesting choice for time. You won't get that experience, uh, but we'll save a little bit of time there. Um, what you could also do is um, just phase through the bell, the later on bell. Um, it's another one of those not solid objects. Uh, so you can actually skip a cutscene in any percent and phase through a bell, get the, get the final bell instead. Yeah, so easily he's going to get an 8th of weight here off. Try and rob some turns from these mages. So, uh, by essentially having both of the Zidane and the Black Mage have empty ATVs at the same time, uh, you can race them from zero. If you imagine they have their own ATV bar that's completely empty, and Zidane's is completely empty. Zidane's typically faster than most things you'll fight uh, until quite a lot later in the game, actually. He's a speedy boy. 
and you can use that to your advantage and uh, essentially get multiple turns in the same turn. That's an interesting way of putting it. So then it's just racing, racing him for ATB. He's he's a speedy boy. You know, I never really thought about the bell thing, but like, why wouldn't you do that on HD? You know, it's pretty um, crazy. Yeah, you could do it. I think that would put us a level lower for Gizmaluke, which mm. might get a little dicey. Um, oh, yeah. Pete's actually been doing it on PSX, and he's he's been getting away with it. He's not been punished yet. <laughs> he's not been punished yet. What? Yeah, optimally, I can yep. see where it would come yep, into play. Yep. So I wait, you gotta, you gotta go on that uh, entry two times, right? To the guard and back, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's actually, <laughs> it's only a 50-50 basically to get an encounter, and I'm surprised no one's ever done it. Like, even on PSX, it's actually worth. Because if you, I, I would, if you succeed, you, you save 30 time. seconds. Yeah, and if you get an encounter, you only lose like 10. Do the levels really? I guess yeah. Your HP just yeah. Giza's really a little sucks. bit scarier, but only only if tense miss. It doesn't do anything to your damage, right? It's just your HP. Yeah. Now, what is the significance of uh, tense missing? Oh baby. I think our PlayStation world record holder, the Brutals, should explain the significance of tense. Take it away, Brutals. I can take this away. So, um, Giza Maluk. No, let's let's start somewhere else. So t if you throw a tent in combat, <laughs> let's start elsewhere completely. I'm trying to think where to start. When you throw a tent in combat, it heals uh, a character to full HP and full mana, but there is a roughly 50% chance to inflict them with um, poison, uh, blind, and silence at the same time. Um, and that's real bad. <laughs> that's real bad. Um, but you can also throw them at enemies. And luckily for us, Kizamaluk is susceptible to both silence and blind, which it, it knew was in pretty bad. He wants to try and cast water. If he tries to cast water while silenced, and he will sometimes do that, he just skips his turn. It says can't cast, and he just game over. Try again next time. Um, whenever you hit him with a physical as well, he will also counter attack with crash sometimes, 50% chance. But if he's blind, not only is there a 50% chance for him to crash, there's a further 50% chance it will actually connect with due to the blind. So yeah. hitting them with these tents early on is really good. So not the first one. Mm, Try again. Yep. Yeah, you can see it's uh, it's healed him there, but it hasn't. Uh, the snake didn't bite him. That's the uh, the games. Have you ever yep. seen that? The, the in-game explanation for why you get blind, silenced, and uh, poisoned is that while you're sleeping in the tent, a snake comes in the middle of the <laughs> night and bites you. Yep. No That's true. Like that. It's true. <laughs> There's a snake in my tent. <laughs> Alright, we got it. Third try and ten. Yep. Nice. Third ten is a so later boss as well to um for those familiar with the with the run, Tahaka, which we'll cover later, can actually also be silenced. Swed, um who is very, very like he's got these very strange routes, but they're so good. I think he's the only person who's ever ran a route that has nobles required on PlayStation. Which um yeah, Nobles on PC is relatively forgiving. You can make a couple of mistakes. On PlayStation, you can hit all of those inputs. Oh, and, oh yeah, crash it today. Leave him alone, on, man. He's a baby boy. He doesn't deserve this. On um on PlayStation, sometimes if you you can hit all of the inputs perfectly, well not perfectly, like with you know slight delay or something, and, and you just won't get the Noble skill. Okay, um, Swed was one of, one of the only people that I'm familiar with, at least, that like grinded a route that required nobles, and he he uh, actually silences a later boss with tents as well. He doesn't sell his uh, excess tents later, like most routes. Yeah, so we get uh, we get one tent starting out. We have the opportunity to pick up three. One being in the bell tower at the beginning of the game near Puck. The second being in an ice cavern. Uh, the third being uh, right before we leave the gate uh, at Limblum, plus we can even buy another one there. So we do have the opportunity to get quite a few tents racked up. Um, majority of the routes take either the two or even three tents. Uh, looks like easily ah. have three tents. Ooh. All right, looks like we're living. It looks for like we're those, living. Uh, for, for the for the for the people grinding much. Um, more competitive times you very much want to just take the two tents but if you're wanting the safety you can get up to four tents i always recommend to beginners 
grab the four tenths, please. I'm begging you, please Dang. grab four tenths. I think he counted every single time. That was uh, really well handled by Easley then. That was pretty scary. Nice work, dude. Um, there's a reason why that name on my splits is stupid something waterbird. Yeah. Uh, is it because oh, yeah. of fights like that? Get gears him a look, another Maybe. bird. Maybe. <laughs> Kids Maluk is a bird, even though I, I think he's categorically a fish. As long as they're not touching the ground, they are yeah. a bird. You know it's not his fault, right? He is possessed. Yeah, you guys need to leave Kids alone. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good boy, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. it's, a sh it's a shame you don't get a chance to interact with him when he's not possessed. I'm sure he's a really great person. <laughs> Really Freya <laughs> seems to think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's that's right. Freya calls him Master Geezer Maluk. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. she's got respect, unlike you, so. Well, don't the worry. Don't worry. I get. I get. <laughs> I'm gonna slap you, brutals. <laughs> I'm gonna put you in the air. I'm gonna equip bird killer, and I'm gonna deal 1.5 times damage to you if you if you keep carrying on. Put you in the air, and I'm gonna equip bird killer. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you're done, once you're finished with, I'll equip undead killer. <laughs> this is why we brought you on, Sayo. Thank you. No rubber dub? Oh, you can't rubber dub, can you? Because of what's a good Never mind. <laughs> no what? No rubber dub. We're rubber dub proof. Yeah. <laughs> so that that uh, NPC that easily just react, uh, interacted with, uh, if you, you you pick a dialogue option with him, and then if you carry on talking to him, he says like rubber dub dub, rubber dub dub, <laughs> rubber dub dub. He's very sweet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can't really get it on PC because yeah, auto clicker for. I guess if it's not been explained already, um, or if it's been a while, basically, uh, again, because this is actually a port of the mobile version, you can click on NPCs to interact with them, uh, or advanced dialogue. You can click on the screen basically as a as a, as a confirm button. Uh, but with auto clicker, what you typically do it's like turbo for your mouse, but you chuck the cursor in the top left hand or top right hand of the screen, uh, depending on the the screen itself. And then, you know, you're advancing dialogue without the risk of uh, interacting with that NPC again. Can we yeah, please acknowledge that Mary found love today? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I did see Come that. On, Mary. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Bless She's your a part time heart. worker. You she know. is. <laughs> <laughs> So this this cutscene here on, on, on Taco, this has encounter this has cutscene RNG. Sometimes Dagger just doesn't come out, bro. She just stays behind the boxes. You can lose like five seconds to them. <laughs> Looks like she's ready to go though. She's she's changed. Done her air. She's ready. Let's make a move. Good old Thomas. getting ready, RNG. <laughs> 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 yeah. I know it too that well. Is, it's all right. That's the, the most, like, uh, the, the worst plan, by the way. So, for, for context in the story, they're, they're sneaking Dagger across, uh, across like, interstate lines or whatever um, to get her out of that region that she was in. And so they've, they've put her in a sack full of, of uh, Lindblom's famous pickles, which I guess like the real world equivalent would be like the durian fruit. It's a really stinky, smelly fruit, but people swear by it and they love it and they eat it. It's a delicacy or whatever. And so the, the guards at the gate are like, hey, you've got a huge bag. We need to see what's in that bag. And they open it and see these pickles and go, oh, disgusting. I'm not going to search that bag. <laughs> Give it back to you and you can carry on your way. But and did it work? Did it work? It, it worked, it worked, but there was a whole woman inside that bag. <laughs> <laughs> and he got away with it. I mean, Steiner's really intimidating, too. <laughs> Look at scary him. lad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Alrighty then. Maybe P can win the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So this screen as well that um, Easily is coming up to is uh, in terms of encounter chances is a straight 50-50. So if you want to play it safe, you'll menu immediately and equip the dagger so that you can flee from an encounter. If you are a gangster, you will not equip that uh, that dagger and you'll run the 50-50. Oh, easily. Oh. oh, wait, no, no, he didn't, he didn't equip the dagger. He just, he's doing the other menu. Okay. He's going sure, in. I'll pay it. It's a, a little less than... Oh, oh, I was going to say, you know what? It is less than 50-50. Punished. That's really unlikely, unfortunate. Punished easily. So he's going to have to try and maybe... <laughs> nope, that's it. Two arms. <laughs> you have incited war, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, rules so was hinting at. Manually, that, manually yeah, like fleeing in this game is such a, such a headache. Yeah, so um, encounter rate in HD is actually, it's, I think it's one eighth of the encounter rate that it is in PSX. Um, your danger value just goes up a lot, lot, lot slower. All of the, what they're called checks, so whenever you travel X amount of distance, X being dependent on the screen and a number of other factors, every time you travel so far, you will get a check. It will spin a random number against uh, your danger value. If it exceeds it, you'll get an encounter. If not, so the, basically the longer you move around on the screen, the more likely you are to get an encounter. Um, and in PSX, it goes up really, really fast. Uh, but in PC, uh, they decided that, that was kind of nonsense and they just slashed it because you do get a lot of fights. If you're trying to explore casually, you'll just, yeah, you'll get into a lot of fights randomly. There ain't too much you can do about it. This is a lot of damage on our boy Z here. For, uh, for, for, for comparison, like, the, so on PlayStation, your average, I put out a video a while ago about the, the differences between PC and PlayStation. And one of the things that I touched on was uh, the average sort of encounter that you'll get uh, will be somewhere in the realm of 50 to 60 on PlayStation. Uh, on PC, Sheriff Falk uh, had the, the world record at one point with a run that had seven encounters. And one of them was forced. So, mm. like, that's a difference. Yeah, six <laughs> encounters. <laughs> usually, to be fair, that was particularly lucky. Um, usually, PC, you'll be in the realm somewhere of, a, or HD rather, because there is HD console, of course. Um, but the, yeah, your your usual encounters is, is closer to the range of ten to fifteen rather than fifty to sixty, um, which contributes to the fact that, uh, but it's it's part of the reason this game is is just like. An hour or more shorter than the uh, the PlayStation version. So here we'll see uh, easily um, doing a lovely up left movement across a bridge. So that bridge yes. is coded to fall if you run across it straight, but by scraping the wall, you slow down enough where the game's like, all right, you're basically walking. You know, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> but we got a nice set of boots, the Germanus boots, which will allow Z to have that flea ability still before learning it and still have a stronger weapon equipped. So at this yeah. point, we would need to put on the Mage Masher to be able to learn or uh, essentially cast flee. Uh, but by having the boots on, we're able to keep all of our good gear on, um, still push out some good damage if we get an encounter, uh, but still have the choice to flee if we need to. Pete's free, uh, he's out. Gem, very nice. Gem boots are very nice. So, Bermisio will see something interesting. Um, you'll see a has lot he... of... Oh, sorry, Karen. No, go for it, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, has he easily got a random encounter after that first one? Because Bermisio is a, a particularly, like, encounter-dense uh, area of the speedrun, and I don't think Easley's actually got one after that first little 50-50 on the first screen. Yeah, he's not. 50-50, again, is, is a little bit excessive. It's, it's a bit oh... Loud. No, but like it's it's like I think closer yeah. to twenty or so. It's quite low. Um, oh, okay. I I just I I thought it was genuinely fifty fifty. Um, no, no, it's quite low. Sheriff um, Falk's got a, a document of like the encounter chances per screen. Um, nice. That's what I was. I might be I remembering. Don't, it I don't think though. anywhere in in in, in, in okay. uh, what's it called for me? So it goes above like fifteen percent. I think. Right. Okay. That one screen. They're all quite. Yeah, the average for the whole dungeon is one. Yeah. 
Yeah. You see one for Bermisia. He would be quite unlucky to get another one, I suppose, but it could happen. Anything. Right, okay. I think I was uh I was misremembering the that spreadsheet that Sheriff Tharf put out and uh, greatly exaggerating. <laughs> I believe that was his first try 10th. Yeah, you? that oh, was. Really? Yeah, Tom very Levy. nice. Beautiful. So, uh, this fight can go a few ways. So, we already saw the one where it's just tent and then just hope not to get countered. Um, but if you do get lucky, you know, you're hoping to use your early trance on Gizmaluk. And what turns essentially would be a uh, six hit fight into something around three turns for Zidane. Uh, getting a yeah. normal hit and two shift breaks. Uh, making it very speedy, but uh, you can still get just good a time if Gizmoloop decides to can't cast and not counter anyone. You can still get a really good fight. Oh, yeah. easily. Oh, easily. That is unfortunate. Oh, no. Uh, the... Yeah, I just caught up with that one. Yeah, oh, the, the, way that, uh, the way that most people count damage for Gizmoloop is he's got six points of health. Subtract one for every Zidane attack, subtract 0.5 for every Freya attack. Or if she crits like that, just do another one. Yeah, if she, if she crits as uh, as uh, as our Tonbury representative did, then um, then yeah, that, that that's about equal to a Zidane attack. Nice fight, Keeper. That was real nice, dude. Yeah, that was a really, really quick fight. Again, very, so... uh, very impressed with Keeper in general. So uh, for the most part on Burmesia, if you're if you're gonna click, this is the part where you'd start to click. Um, the movement on Burmes in Burmesia is very not optimized for the eight cardinal directions. Um, so you're very likely to see clicks here. Uh, and as we talked about, usually you could average about one encounter. Um, but you do if you're having a really good run, you could finish disc one. Uh, with just the one force encounter. So you're looking anywhere between about one to four encounters, depending on how lucky you are for a typical disc one on HD. Whereas PlayStation, it's like five or six. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, uh, if you're like me, uh, I, I, st I still, this, this run haunts my dreams. It was an attempt where I was climbing the ladder up to Clara and I had 21 encounters. Cool. What? I, I'm not. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I was climbing the ladder up to the Clara settlement for the first time, and I had 21 encounters. Right. Mm. Let's see. It was see. laughably poor RNG. If Pete gets away with it, so he's gone back to get the bell, and now he's going to run straight past this oh. black mage. Oh, he's got in the stairs. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he just gives him a stare down movie. That is crazy. I, <laughs> I wasn't sure. I for didn't a second. even know that you could Can do that. <laughs> Pete, you're yeah. teaching everyone, mate. Yeah, so it's something you would normally do in a any percent or boosters. Uh, you just skip past that since right. uh, encounters are slow. Um, normally, an upright movement gets you past that mage, but it looks like Pete got the. Uh, the more perceptive mage that went straight for the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> you let you pass. <laughs> so uh, I Southgate love these here... these Moogles on Pete's screen, by the way. This this the, these Moogles just got married, but one got trapped under the wedding bell, and they're they're separated, and they're so excited to be back together. He. He's, he loves Koopo Nuts so much that he had the strength to push a great big bell off the top of his head. What a legend. Someone should have told movies. him that bell you could just walk through. You just face through. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Is that, that's a, that's a, um, that's a, a, a true any percent for PC thing, right? Uh, on boosters. But yeah, you could do also oh, on boosters, on right? any percent. Any percent, you could you usually just go for it. Um, yeah. It's a little the, uh, longer to set up on any percent compared to boosters. For clarity, uh, the the category that that they're actually running is uh, any percent no major skips. You can actually uh, on PC menu buffer through a bunch of story triggers, including that prison cage fight, or the prison cage sequence as well. Um, a lot of cutscenes later in the game, certain fights you can menu buffer through. Um, but a lot of people don't really like that category because the most fun part of this game is the fights so and you're skipping fights 
Um, you can skip just about every disc four boss as well. I think it's it's very interesting because you you are doing sort of the same amount of work to a degree with less resources, but at the same time, it's like I don't want to skip the fights. It's the cool part. <laughs> um, but it's a very interesting category. It's very underrepresented. Um, I would love to see more of it. But yeah, people just uh, yeah don't really don't really run it that much. I think I you think... have the world record capped, right? At the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, yes. Sixteen. Currently faster than segmented, by the way. So I'm very, very happy about that. <laughs> You're the fastest in the world, Cap. Uh, um, so I just want to point this out to get on my system. But uh, Southgate, as you go up the stairs to go into the tram, there, uh, there's a shop to the right called Altair, and that's a gentle nod to FF2, the first town that you enter into. All right, let's see the tents from our boy Petey. I can't believe that we... I, I'm so sorry for, for going on that tangent about uh, the skips category while the first Beatrix fight was going on. Uh, we'll get to it later. I'm sure the other guys will get there. Uh, but easily past that boss fight. The, the long and short of it is that it's a turn that has basically on the 10th turn the fight will end regardless of damage and health and this and that. Uh, so you seldom can kill Beatrix... Um, in disc one, but here we've uh, yeah, there there is a skip to end the fight on effectively the eighth turn, but we'll get there. We'll we'll run it back later. Pete breathing a sigh of relief there as his second tent landed, and he's getting out of the fight hopefully without too much trouble at this point. Another moment where a suboptimal tent is actually optimal. Got that um, snake in there. That was actually a decent Beatrix. Um, had only a couple of Phoenix sounds to use. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, look good. And our first runner enters disc two, which on PC doesn't really exist because there's no <laughs> physical discs. I do love that the PC players still call it disc two, disc one. Because, yeah, again, it's just on Steam in it. Like, there's no. Oh, it's just such a long game. It's nice <laughs> to break it up into four yeah. parts. <laughs> um, actually, it should be chapter one, chapter two. <laughs> no. Not quite. Alright, let's see if uh, Easily gets the infamous uh, Summit Station oh, you Moonwalk. Can moonwalk. You can Moonwalk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no idea what does it, but if you if you talk to that guy at the right angle, Dagger, uh, she doesn't quite correct herself properly and she sort of zoops out of there instead of walking yeah. a lot. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So, uh, to talk a little bit about trance more, um, you could take the trance to Beatrice 1 uh, and avoid a jump skip. Um, I believe it's slightly faster, but you're really hoping Beatrice doesn't kill Zidane. Just yeah. another moment where Zidane needs a cast shift break uh, three times to drop her before turn 10. Yeah, and he actually like gets a, a genuine kill against, uh, against Beatrice, which... Again, on, on disc one is is very rare. You just usually don't have the damage output there to to actually do it. So we're going into it's time for Black Waltz uh, three two, isn't it? Yeah, Black Waltz three. Black Waltz 3 Dash The Return 2 oh. The, re the yeah. Black Waltz thing. I like to call him Broken Waltz because for whatever reason just likes to jump that's a in cool, front that's of a cool name Trams <laughs> <laughs> So unfortunately I got an encounter right before Gizmaluk but since I skipped the Black Mage that means there's now the XP and AP is all balanced and I won't have to Did you kill it? About yeah, yeah, I killed it. Whoa. Yeah, I was wondering. Oh, no. I noticed that you I... and you and Keeper kind of kept the same difference. So Black Wolf have... three two, it's pretty interesting fight. Truthfully, it's uh, he's not like the the other Black Waltz where you just sort of execute a series of turns and hope that you get detrans to get. You've basically got a hierarchy of good situations. The best situation is Starter being alive. 
The second best situation is only Dagger. So if Steiner dies, Marcus being there is actually a detriment. And the worst situation is, yeah, Dagger and Marcus alive. So if Steiner gets frozen or KO'd early, um, we'll actually KO Marcus uh, because uh, Black Bolt's 3-2. You, you leave him up? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically he won't deal damage to Dagger because he needs to bring Dagger back alive to the castle. So um, if he... Um, yeah, if it's just Dagger alive and no one else, he won't know what to do, and he'll actually deal damage to himself. About 250 damage to himself per turn. Um, nice. Dagger can ATB wait, but it doesn't really save that much time because her animation's so slow. It's rough. Yeah, sometimes you can use it to save a turn. And that's so, uh, pretty much the only time you want to use it, is if it, if, you, if doing the wait will end up saving you some time. So I think yeah. he's using it here to back up a miss. Yeah. So if yeah. Marcus had missed there, I think Dagger would have cleaned up. Dagger would have killed, yeah. Nice work. Well played. That was a good fight. So he cracks every uh, two turns, which is just slightly... Oh, two turns, okay. I slightly was... more than Marcus's 110 to 120 hit. But yeah, it's another one of those fail forward mechanics that the game has built in, just to, to keep you going. Because uh, uh, Steiner, Dagger, and Marcus are actually a very um, noodle-hitting team at the moment. Uh, well, I suppose. The, the boss doesn't really have too much HP, but... Yeah, they are some of the weaker characters, especially Marcus. Steiner's not very beefy. He's uh, he's still using um, the sword that we got pretty much at the start of the game. Um, so if we, when we're leaving Evil Forest, Blank has an iron sword on him. We want to take that off him, which is why we want to steal the broadsword, even though it's the less rare steal. Getting that allows us to take a better weapon from Blank. Uh, and if we don't get it there, we buy it in the Dali either. Instead, and you don't actually get to replace it for about another 30 minutes or so. 45 minutes and if you're in the okay, mithril easily sword not club, grabbing there's uh there's 1610 gil uh well 1610 sorry i don't know why i said it like that either, uh either. there's a good chunk of gil um don't really need it on pc yeah because of because of nobles but i know that some players do take it just for safety i'm surprised easily as well with the uh headgear muck up earlier um didn't want to take that extra gil. we got an extra ether on one of those extra encounters Ah, uh, okay, yep, that makes sense. Uh, so easily coming up to another non-boss uh, boss that can end runs. A very, very required ATE here. So this is your little, uh, light scene, reminder to not forget the power belt. Do not forget <laughs> the power belt, yeah. So we don't really use ATEs very much in general, but uh, basically we're, we're going to intentionally trigger an ATE to see Dagger get robbed of 500 gil. Uh, and this guy, uh, you'll see, he looks a little bit like Blank, but he's got more arms. And he runs away, she gets pickpocketed. And I believe, in like casually, you're meant to go to each screen and watch the ATE to try and find him. But, you know, we're speedrunners, we know where he is. So we beeline straight there, and you confront him. And he goes, oh, oh, I, I didn't see any any woman. I didn't, you know, rob her. And then he breaks and goes, oh, I, I, I took her 500 gil and I bought a power belt. Here, have the power belt. And then he runs away. Power belt, by the way, worth way more than 500 gil. Um, that's the cheapest power belt that you can get in the game. Uh, and it is awesome. It is an awesome accessory, which we will carry to the end of the game. We use the power belt to the end of the game. Yeah, he certainly do. It uh, has a lot of strength strapped to it, a lot of defense, um, and it has the most, probably the, the most powerful uh, melee ability, MP attack, which boosts your physical attack power by 50% of your damage dealt, um, which does stack with other of the killer abilities like bird killer yep. and killer and so on and so forth. Give but it means that your attack will things. consume a bit of MP uh, yep. each time. But for someone like Steiner or Zidane, who they're not really using their MP, like, even casually, I was like, when I played this game for the first time, uh, even casually, I was like, why would I not use it? <laughs> What's the downside? Well, the, the thing with, in the casual playthrough is that you take a lot of random battles, right? And if you're using it to yeah, just that's, random battles, yeah. then you're going to run out of mana really quickly. But because we don't do that... Uh, well, I also wasn't time... selling ethers, like, casually, so I had plenty. True. But you don't have that yeah. many. You don't get that many. Really, I think I always found that ethers were quite scarce in this game when I play casually. You don't yeah, get too many. I remember, you get enough to get high. 
Ether's in a Final Fantasy X. I think I had like when I first played the game casually, I had like three ever. Yeah. I just remember never ever ever using them. I'd use the the save spheres. So we're zooming. So a uh, bit of trying to not too much going on. Quite a lot of exposition. Some setting up for the. Uh, beginning and a shop of the earlier game. as well. Mm -hmm. I do like that you buy a bandana. You buy a second bandana, one of which goes on Marcus, who will just about immediately leave the party forever after the next boss. Um, the bandana only serves to have Marcus take a little bit less Blizzard damage and probably survive if he does get Blizzard. Definitely survive. It's, a, it's, it's chonky. Definitely, okay. It's chonky. It's chonky. I, I it's didn't realize good. it was as chonky. Yeah, I think bandanas only cost like 200 gil or something. Yeah, it's, yeah, very, it's, not, it's very good. Yeah. Okay. It, it does make me laugh, though, that it's just like have this character that's going to leave your party who's already wearing a bandana um well yeah, you, physically you can't. you're not allowed to end the, the run if you, checks at the end when you, um, when you when you kill necron you, you reload and you like got a check all right marcus yep he's wearing the bandana <laughs> yeah, right, fair win. okay uh but yeah it's very funny to just like buy something for a non-party character for mm. one boss it does, it does. It make you can actually buy him a Mithril Sword and his damage goes up even further. And he can actually hit pretty hard. But uh, it's expensive. So the thing is, is you don't... Uh, no, Marcus does return to your party later on where you would technically be able to take it back off him. The chance of it actually saving you time is so slim that it's, it simply isn't worth yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. I, f I forgot the, yeah, the, the later um, prison sequence. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's yeah, so you, you would be able to take it back off and then return some cash from it but uh guild at this point in the game is a little bit tight because of the stuff that we want to buy um and the trade-off probably isn't gonna be worth it but it exists it's something you could do so here we go oh we're stripping the rest of him interesting nice hp 10 count is gonna go on uh, oh we're doing the mp10 unfortunately <clears throat> We're level three, so Steiner, there's a little bit of a rule of thumb here. If Steiner's level two, you want to give him HP 10 so that he's got he's a tiny bit more beefy. It doesn't give him much, but it just takes him out of a of a, of a critical threshold. Um, but if you are level three, you are naturally out of, well, pretty much all of them. There is still a single roll of a single ability that can kill you in one hit, but come on, man, get real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so we, we stick MP attack and counter on him to hopefully get some free turns. Yeah, uh, even if you're level one or two, it's it's marginally better. I mean, at level one, 120, you get 12 extra HP on Steiner. Two is an extra 15. Uh, usually, counter is gonna pay off a little better, at least in my experience. If counter procs, it's leaps and bounds the best thing that you can do. But I think proc rate, I don't actually know what it is, but it's probably somewhere around 10%, maybe even lower. It's slim. It is based it on your spirit. Happens. It is based on spirit. Yep, if you're general you know, rule, rule of things based on, it's probably based on spirit. <laughs> what the does general this do? rule of thumb is that your spirit is equal to your counter rate. Um, if you have eye for eye, it doubles that chance. So if your spirit is 10, your, your counter chance is 10%. Whoa. Is that what you mean? Yeah, it's the equation is um, spirit. Your spirit value um, is it greater than or equal to a random number generator of one to ninety-nine plus one. Um, if it is greater, then you will counter. If it is not, then you will not. If you have oh. I fry, it's double spirit. All right. So yeah, it is basically exactly that. Tell on. There you go. I learned something. Let's go. <laughs> I had no idea. And just to double check, everyone's everyone's running um, Sheriff Fox modified Petros, right? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. okay. this is the no one's doing final... any fun tent stuff. Damn. I don't believe so. Boss. This is going to be the final chance to talk about Beatrix One. So it's actually yes. yeah, it's she has this boss. <laughs> she has about three thousand HP. She is kind of chonky um, for the bosses at this point in the game, um, but you only have ten turns to kill her, and only Zidane's able to deal any good damage, and she deals really, really, really big damage to you. So instead of doing that, 
we're actually just going to let her have 10 turns as quickly as possible. And um, between turns, if she takes someone out, we're going to have, ideally, Freya pick them up. Um, the current setup for this party is that Zidane is using an ability called Protect Girls. So he will cover any female character that has less than 50% HP, um, which for Freya is around 120 here. Um, as soon as she's taken below that threshold and is alive, Zidane will cover her. So keeping her up and keeping her available is pretty much going to... Yeah, so Phoenix down on Freya here. So from now on, Freya is pretty much invincible. She is going to be able to take care of um, Zidane, who is going to protect her. And the reason why we want to keep her alive is like Zidane, uh, as, as Sayo mentioned much earlier, uh, on turn 10, the fight will end, but we can actually skip two of her turns by simply not having any uh, alive party, like legal targets for her. So if we can time it perfectly on the eighth turn, if we knock out um, Zidane and Vivi and have Freya jump over turns uh, 9 and 10 or 8 and 9. When we come back down, she'll actually instantly end the fight and uh, we can save around, I believe. It fluctuates a little bit depending on what abilities she would have used, but it's somewhere around 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah. So tell me about the uh, Mithril Sword Club here. Are you in the Mithril Sword Club? No. No. Sayo is, right? Absolutely not. No. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, um... I'm, I'm team Steiner Wax Ravarava four times and Dagger hits once. That's a good team. Ooh, triple preamp. So when it comes to stealing in this game, when you steal, you have a chance to miss. It calculates that first. If you miss... I'm skip denied. Ming in. <laughs> if it says you couldn't steal anything... Um, or whatever. It, sorry, if you don't steal it, if you, if you miss, it says couldn't steal anything and you're just told that. It's, I believe, like a percent and a half or something like that. It's very, very, very low. After that, there are, I believe, five slots for gear to be in. There is a one in two, five, six, which is about 0.3. Cap knows probably. It's it's low, 0.3%. Um, that's where the, the, the Mithril Sword lives. There's a 6%, roughly, which is where the Mithril Dagger, uh, the, the Mage Masher lives. There's a 12 and a half, or maybe it's just 25, and then a 100, or a 75 as well. It, it, it checks from the rarest first, up the table. Um, so you can have a couple chances to steal. It can be kind of detrimental um, if she takes out your party members at the same time, because you're, you're wasting ATB. Um, but you can... You can attempt to steal the Mithril Sword. It really, really, really deals a lot of damage to Black Wolves. Uh, three, two, which is the fight we just saw a minute ago. Um, but that's it. <laughs> that's the only fight it helps out on. Um, I've never stole it. I've tried a lot. <laughs> I've, I've never had it, and most people have never had it. But then sometimes I don't even, I don't even bother. Yeah, I don't even bother stealing it anymore, to be honest. But when I'm messing around, I'll, I'll go for it because it's just so uncommon. The only thing I try and steal uh, from a non-essential like steal is uh, is Mithril Dagger from from Sea Lion, or Mithril Dagger as uh, as Baby Brutals says. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What about Taharka, Sion? Oh yeah, well we'll, well we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Come on. What about Garland, Sion? Come on. Garland? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, but that's a little different. That's a little different. All right, come on, come on. We'll get there, though. We'll get there. We don't even know who Garland is yet. <laughs> Spoilies. <laughs> I accidentally listened to a 13-3 uh, spoiler earlier about the Boonabelle stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I heard that, I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> I kind of planned on playing him soon. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach me, eh? Whoa. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. That's a Keeper lot of just... chainmail. <laughs> Keeper just gave me... Oh, my... my He's keeping us on our toes. Yeah. My <laughs> pants were full, man. That was crazy. Just checking my to word. Attention. Oh, sorry. I gotta change my underwear. My goodness. I <laughs> nearly bought 11 chainmails. <laughs> he didn't, though, did he? He didn't, he didn't. But my oh, word, it was close. Friends. 
<laughs> I remember there was I was doing a I was doing a I was doing a Japanese run before I was like very because the JP version has some differences and whatnot. I find the JP version really fun to run. It's also cool because like I don't read or speak Japanese at all, not yet at least. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's it's sort of halfway to um, Brutal's very famous blindfolded run, where it's like I can still see the game, I just can't really read or understand it, and it's kind <laughs> of interesting. It's a, it's a fun challenge. Um, I like running JP for for that reason. And Chef was watching, and I nearly sold the diamond. Nearly. Ne I had the diamond hovered. I was meant to be selling a like a um, amethyst or or you know a um, aquamarine or something that looks similar. And I hit circle because circle confirms better. And I hit circle, and I was like about to sell it, and I just hear Chef go. Huh. He was in. He was in. He was in voice chat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized what I was about to do, and I, I carried on selling all the other stuff. It was, it was. It was funny that even he recognized that it was a diamond, and I didn't, even though I had like the Japanese notes in front of me and everything. Oh it was... my goodness! Look at man. It never ceases to amaze me how quickly Zidane soups up the side of clay. <laughs> <like that. laughs> <laughs> the one screen is crazy on HD. It's yeah. crazy. I love it. I love it. That's the power of the Germanist boots, mate. <laughs> oh, wow. What's wrong, Mel? Do you want to elaborate? He just, he just went really quickly down that, down that yeah. way with that. I thought he was going to go on the same yeah. bit there. Welcome to PC. <laughs> Keeper, now easily be, I can't handle this. I might be a bit delayed because I'm I'm going through like the proper feeds and everything, and I. So I oh, that was some really good movement. Yeah, that was a really really good movement. Right yeah. there. It's it's probably pretty, one of the worst encounters. Or... It's pretty tricky to squeeze through them them little them little tight paths. So yeah, so this is this is the ladder that I was talking about. Is climbing up that ladder that I easily just climbed up, and I had 21 encounters. Anyway, carry on. Um, <laughs> I it's hard for me to believe, but I, I sort of believe you. <laughs> it was on it was on stream. There's proof. There's there was proof? witnesses. Right. We have witnesses. I'll testify under oath. Alright, alright. About all seventy five percent now. <laughs> so Mel, I want you to tell us about this next boss, because I think you probably have the closest relationship with it. Yeah, me and Doodlebug are pretty close. Uh <laughs> good friends. And we got the antlion coming up, which is a pretty much a scripted fight, I would say. It does, you want him to do sandstorm opening, but that never happens because you can ATB wait with Vivi. And uh, Vivi's your main damage dealer here. So you use Blazera and you get around like 1100 to 1300 damage off. So you want to get three turns in with Vivi. And then you'll uh, kill off antlion with either one lancer or two lancers from Freya, just depending on damage rolls. I don't think in HD can you get three thirteen eleven damage rolls from Antlion. I don't know if you can do that much damage. On the, like, on I, don't the know Blizzara, if no I I don't think so. Y okay. Yeah, you can you can but hit the thirteen hundreds, but it's very rare. Why do we uh why do we want Sandstorm, Mel? What's because you can ATB because you can ATB wait it. Well, I mean that, but what what does Sandstorm do? Oh, it takes your I don't know. It takes your HP down. <laughs> <laughs> it it sets it sets your HP. It doesn't it deal damage. It sets your HP. It sets your HP. I was trying to. Uh, I think that's like interesting to uh, important. Oh to yeah, I don't know the the super technical stuff. You're you're yeah. more than welcome Sa to go more detail. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So sandstorm can't actually kill your party. It doesn't actually deal damage. Um, at least when used by antline. When used by other um, enemies, it does. But with antline specifically, um, sandstorm will just set your HP to somewhere between one and ten. Um, like it'll put you at critical HP, uh, basically, and but it can't actually kill you. So it's it's really good to get Sandstorm twice because he's got a similar thing going from like Black Bolts too, where he hits an HP threshold and uh, you know counters or, or follows up with uh, with Sandstorm. So if oh, you open the Sandstorm, then the party takes effectively zero damage. Whereas if he doesn't open with Sandstorm, he could do like Fira and kill Vivi. And then you get stuck in a fear of loop. Yeah, it's, he's probably not going to open with sandstorm. But then once you get him to a specific HP range, which oh, I don't know what it is, yeah. uh, he'll do sandstorm. Two, two, it's two Blizzards worth. Is it? <laughs> That's okay. all I know. Yeah. 
Uh, Fira reckon... on. No! Ah! Not this. He was so young. Uh, yeah, you really so... don't want him to kill VV. I, I, re was... I wish I remember who it who it was. Someone used to play Darud like the Darud like doo -doo 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 -doo, like during the <laughs> line fight, um, which was very funny. I can't remember who it was though. Here so we I'm go. Not yeah, so Sandstorm sets your HP to critical, so anywhere below 10, so it actually just heals Vivi. Not that it really matters. So this, <laughs> but what it does is it actually makes Antlion skip his next turn. So his ATV actually still is faster than Vivi, but it will fill up and then it just it will just reset. Sandstorm, yeah. So you can use this time to actually, it looks like you're doing an ATV weight, and you are technically doing an ATV weight, but you're not. It's a weird one. What's also pretty crazy uh, about it is I learned actually in Mel's stream was uh, this is like she said a doodle bug which is actually a real uh, animal. <laughs> it is. Which it's is crazy to think about. And all of its moves are actually things that it does in real life. So if you ever watch a documentary on ant lions, it's really funny because it does like this venom. I don't know if it's poison or venom breath or something like that, and they actually like spit out poison and venom. <laughs> Yeah, That's I remember when weird. I was uh, trekking through the Australian outback and an ant lion came up and set me on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you cast Bizarro on it before. It yeah, got yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, I pulled out my, I pulled out my staff and, and cast Bizarro on it. Dude, they're that big over there now, huh? That's interesting. Yeah, it's a dangerous, <laughs> dangerous country continent that we live on. Yeah. No match for you though, are they Sayo, mate? Oh no, no not at all, mate. That's a mate. beautiful ant lion. Oh, <laughs> almost got me that one. Crikey! Oh, he's a big boy. <laughs> now watch this. We're gonna ATV wake this big boy. <laughs> <laughs> what a beauty! Oh, I'm on fire. Oi. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> Set me bloody shorts on fire. Little blood of these shoes are new. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I just noticed the keeper really extended that fight. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> ooh, ooh. yeah we should have been talking ooh. about that instead of screaming <laughs> Australian. <laughs> Australian. It wasn't even close. You can't stereotypes. It wasn't even close. So. Uh, it was actually, it seemed to be, if a situation ends like that, you've actually played the fight optimally. Um, a big thing with FF9 is extending just far enough to kill them before they kill you. Um, there are only a number of fights that actually give you a rewards. Not all of them. Um, this isn't one of them, actually. So if someone's down and uh, Ralva rather flees, you, you don't actually get any AP anyway. So as long as you, as long as you win the fight, you're Gucci. And uh, as long as you didn't miss that last touch there. Which he didn't do, thankfully. This keeper could see the future, he knew what was going on. Yep. Um and the fight pretty well, so nice work. There is someone someone told me, I can't remember who it was, but you can if you are a high enough level, you can actually kill Ralvarava, like genuinely kill Ralvarava, and I believe it's like twenty AP or something. It's not necessary at all and I too hard to route in. Did you know that you can uh, you can get Mew from the, the truck in Pokemon Blue? <laughs> if you push it out of the way. <laughs> Man, shut up. I don't think you can kill it. I think it's got it's it's got the HP threshold thing. Like the plus ten K. Right. Well it's like I the just, whole idea look, is it Sorry, sorry for Rav trusting Rav my friends. Or Ravimago. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if you kill it it will it will break the game. There are a number of bosses that do that. Like Gizamaluk, for example, if you actually use a cheat to set its HP to zero and it dies. Um, the game freezes because <laughs> it's waiting oh. for him to die. <laughs> um, you but... actually can't kill that Ravalmaga, uh, Ravaraha. You can't kill it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was I, gonna say because in Boosters, I believed, you can't a, I kill believed it. a schoolyard lie. <laughs> in Sorry Boosters, for having you can do faith in my hits. friends. So, uh, I guess you can. We can talk about the kind of like the booster version of it. So on Boosters, uh, you hit for nine 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 four nines. Um, but that fight is waiting for you to stop hitting it, actually. So if you do three hits, uh, if you do one hit, 
he'll run away. If you do three hits, it will just wait for you to those hits. Same with the Beatrice fight. She's just waiting for you to stop so that she can end the turn. Mm -hmm. Damn, yeah, I can... actually genuinely fell for a schoolyard rumor. Yeah, you can actually... Uh, How embarrassing. It's, it's kind of an over-damaging thing. Basically, once their HP is reduced below a certain threshold, they will end the fight um, as their next action instead of taking a turn. There are a couple of fights. It, all three Beatrixes do this, and so does the Ralvary Rava. There may be some more, which I can't think of. Not right in now. the speed run, and not in the speed run. If if there are any, there, yeah, it's not. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, I guess technically there's the uh, the guards, the um, Alexandria guards. Huh? Alexandria like guards, you can kill. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can kill them. So it doesn't really count. Nah, that's more of like the under, I guess, under damaging thing. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, so Pete's gonna be coming up to Ravel Rava in just a moment. He, uh, he'll be, again, he'll be pretty unlucky to get an encounter down here in Gargan Roo. If he does, um, he currently doesn't have Zidane in his party, which means he doesn't have access to the flea ability. Um, the flea ability is something that you can cast only with Zidane to guarantee an actual escape from a fight. Otherwise, you're kind of at the mercy of RNG trying to get a quick flea, which aren't particularly favorable for this point in the game. Um, if you do get into a random encounter, you can use Steiner to deal really, really big damage and dispatch them. Um, doing so will gain you a number of levels immediately, and that makes Rava Rava a lot more trivial. Two, two crawlers with Steiner alive solo can get you to level eight, R like this early in the game, which is crazy. Yeah, he, uh, he'll be pretty, pretty, pretty beefy. Yeah, Pete didn't get an encounter there. Nope, so he's going to go into the same fight as everyone else. Um, Rava Rava has around just over 2,000 HP. Steiner clocks for about 500 per swing. So you can make up that damage in a number of ways. Dagger hits pretty hard, around 200. Uh, and Marcus is low, low hundreds as well. So you can add those two up into a number of swings. And you want to deal as little over the threshold as possible, really. Um, you want to not attack any more times than you have to. So this is a, a fight where using a calculator to count damage to make sure you hit the threshold dead on consistently yeah. is a pretty good idea. There is also a, a, a quirk that everyone will fall for at least once, where if all of your alive party members are poisoned, Ralva Rava will cast Night mm. and put everyone to sleep. And it sucks. It's the worst. It's pretty nasty. Hey. It'll, it'll happen to everyone at least once. It's also Hi. pretty rare, because if he does do the, the Devil's Kiss, it's most likely going to kill Marcus or uh, Dagger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least in speedrun scenarios. Uh, meanwhile, we have Easily starting the Clara invasion. I'm heading down yep. Clara to take on a bunch of Alexandrian soldiers. Uh, this is where it can get a little dicey. Um, we have the chance on the first battle for Freya to have um, a miss, or sorry, not a miss, a under damage roll, which uh, the Alexandrian guards we briefly talked about, if they don't take um, enough to kill them, uh, usually we're doing just enough where they'll run away. Uh, we'll still get that AP if we finish the fight with at least one of them dead, um, but we don't get that experience, um, which is good and bad, I guess. It, it does you know, give you the AP. But uh, Zidane is further off from being able to do um, good damage here, essentially, because he has Germanus boots on instead of a yellow scarf to up his strength. Um, so he's trying to hit level 9. You, we'll usually see that by the end of this uh, Clara Trunk invasion. You usually have to kill these fights in HD for the experience, or oh my like, God. can you it's, can they it's run pretty away? It's, it's pretty tight. I don't Isn't think it? they... I don't think they can, like... I think you can let more than one go. Okay. So AP-wise, we're usually pretty good to miss. I think two of them we can make up pretty easily. Um, the thing we're missing out on, if we don't um, have BB dead for another encounter, is Freya won't be high enough to give Beatrice her levels um, to be able to easily do the Devil Clim Hazard cast on the right. castle escape. Yeah, so you can... Pretty sure in the final fight, if you take the three black mages and then you knock out BB, you'll always have enough experience. That that last little burst there will 
typically make up for pretty much any shortcomings you can get. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys hear that? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, we didn't hear anything. Oh my <laughs> what was goodness, that? was that was that Lolly? Yeah, was that the like, doodle bug? She's going was that to say bear? <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so cute. Mm. Uh, she's 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 ripped the hole in my mouse mat now. Very cool. What? Hey. Is your mouse mat made of cloth? Yeah. Like you just a piece cloth. of cloth? No, well just... yeah, but there's like rubber under it and whatnot. I mean cloth, like is that no, just a no, they really, you, not, don't worry about it. It's plain hair. You've I never you meant like you could, you could touch, claws before. You could touch the, oh, I certainly have. <laughs> John, John puts up quite a fight. We spar sometimes. Hmm. And doodle bug down on Keeper's screen. Looks to be a pretty, pretty nice fight. So these black mages as well. That, uh, that. The Team Choco representative easily is coming up against uh, identical to the ones before. The worst thing they can do is cast Osmos on Vivi, which means that Vivi won't be able to cast spells to get in before Alexandrian soldiers if necessary. Usually you don't want Vivi to cast spells anyway because a spell is like eight seconds, whereas an attack is, you know, like one or two. Um, but if it's, if it's required to actually, you know, save a turn or something, uh, Vivi being able to cast Blizzard is pretty good. Oh, he's dead anyway. Yeah, yes, Osmos the, usually sucks. The ultimate uh, aim here in this sequence is to try and see as minimal casts as possible. You're not too sad about <laughs> seeing um, the enemies go for basic attacks and things like that because they're nice and quick. Um, but you can't rely on soldiers actually doing that. So you want to try and get in front of many as you can. Um, Zidane can ATV weight everything here and get three turns that way. Yeah, but having Vivi dead here, here is... Just, I mean, it'll be fine for him. He'll get enough experience eventually. The baby boy's just down right now. That's not he's, right. He's, having, he's snoozing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's he doesn't. He doesn't want to see his. Uh, he doesn't want to see his. Uh, his fellow men be slaughtered by our <laughs> beefy party members. I'm hoping he gets a chance to heal up here. That was the last one, wasn't it? Uh, that's the yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the the, the, la the last one of that like forced sequence. Mm -hmm. You get a chance to menu here, and I think the route actually has a full menu. You do yeah. your Beatrix menu on the bridge rather than um, just before. Uh oh, spoiler alert, we're gonna fight Beatrix again. Uh, so, we're switching over to Zidane here. Uh, we had him have Germanus boots on to finish up some flea AP and also get some spirit um, level ups. Uh, we're switching over to Yellow Scarf here as well as um, switch Freya to get uh, Thunder Gloves and Coral Ring to set up for the fight as well so she can get her man eater points. So this is a little bit of a crucial area to get a few AP uh, early on so we can focus on other items. And also uh, crucial to pick the correct options. The, the the town the townspeople will prompt you to like, oh, do we run up or down or left or right? And you got to pick the right options because uh, at the end of the sequence, the living, uh, the living townspeople will actually give you items. You get some cards for a very fun and very cool card game later, uh, as well as an elixir. And an ether? Question mark? I think yeah, there's ether. opinion, ether, elixir, and some trading cards. Yeah, two cards. That's the, yeah. And some children's playing cards. Yes. The probably. card game it is. Uh, Which, ironically, are probably one of the most valuable rewards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially in HD. <laughs> oh, goodness. So. You, per enemy killed, the majority of uh, enemy, enemies we encounter have a chance of dropping a card. You have a 1 in 8 chance per uh, enemy, so that 3 pack of guards we had, um, 3 1 in 8 chance, whatever that comes out to statistically, um, to get a playing card. So we're really hoping to see those, even though that seems like not something. Uh, 9, we are required to win at least 2 games of cards, right smack dab 5 hours into the run. Yep. And if you lose, you just have to keep playing until you win. And it can... It's its straight up a run killer. It is the best part of the run, let's be honest. Like, with, with Final Fantasy VIII, for example, you, you, you play Triple Triad for the route, 
but you are never at any point forced to play triple triad. Yeah, but you can cheat in FFA. <laughs> yeah, you can. It's awesome. Can it's cheat. awesome. I'm so excited to do that. <laughs> I love cheating. Um, yeah, you can yeah, route as much as you want, but in nine, it always comes yep. down to individual runners for the cards. I and think Pete actually was trying to make a, a a sort of challenge run or category. It was like cards percent, where you have to collect every card and win a card game against every NPC that you can play cards with, which was really cool. But then the problem is you've got to do so much completionist stuff for it because you've got to get to like the Chocobo uh, like sanctuary or whatever. And that's just, you may as well just play all bosses <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Yeah, pretty crazy. Um, so one thing we didn't talk about a little bit, uh, we'll see it here on um, Tom Berry's screen is during that ritual. Um, not in particular the ritual, but with auto clicker, the game just constantly clicking on the screen. You don't have a lot of free time to move the cursor other than in like battles and whatnot. Uh, so there are very few breaks where you don't need auto clicker, and that was one of them. Um, where you can scroll your notes, yeah. and so it's it's definitely mental Olympics of when to scroll the notes, because um, the auto clicker is taking up your mouse movement for the majority of the game. Yeah, it's a common misconception that everybody that runs this game just plays the game. Uh, it is definitely not the case. Uh, runners of literally every single caliber when playing this game will always have their notes available, just just so they can read them refresh themselves uh, during the little bits of downtime that they've got. There's a lot of stuff in this game. It's a, it's a long one. So will we see the trance here on uh, Pete's screen for Antlion? Uh, I, I, well, I suppose he hopes not, but it's unlikely that it's going to be useful. It will end the fight instantly, right? He's not getting it. I didn't want to cue the Lancer on turn two in case he did trance, but but he, di he didn't, so. So now here's Optimal. the hope you get through all nine of the invasion battles to take it to Beatrice too. So the reason that we're using Lancer there is because uh, it will hit regardless of blind and also doesn't proc um, Antlion's counter-attack to physical. Uh, if you attack him with physical attacks, he will return with... I can't remember what he counters with. Uh, horn something? Counter-horn. Counter-horn. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, he returns with counter-horn, and it's uh, pretty bad. And so, very annoying. Here's our moment where we get the uh, essentially the patronage of all these people we save. Um, plus, we get a little HD magic here as we go outside. Beatrice is actually going to put her sword through her head, basically showing that Beatrice is all but an illusion in our minds. <laughs> she's we never get AP. We never get drops. Is she even there? Oh, what's that? What's that? Uh, that fella from Call of Duty Black Ops One, like Reznov or whatever, and he was like, "Oh, the plot twist is that he was never real." Be crazy if Beatrice was just never real, but she is. So Beatrix 3, uh, we, this is the first time that we do actually defeat Beatrix in a way we will try and reduce her HP to, well, essentially zero. The turn order is simply, uh, the plan is very simple. We do VV attack, VV Bizarro, attack, attack. The following turn, somebody probably dies or doesn't get their turn. So it goes VV attack. And then finally we do VV attack one more time. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be, trying to get the ATV in. Yeah, very nice. So it's about managing her HP, keeping it above 50% at the right times. Um, Blizzara is a slow enough animation so that her AT grows in the right way. It's it's a really, really cool strategy that goes into manipulating how her, her ATV grows to make sure that you can do the right attacks at the right time to skip um, her cure animation. So when she goes below 50%, she will try and cure herself. And this strategy, which easily is just executed here, is gonna should as long as you don't miss. Very nice. Yeah, skip that completely. Yeah, that was super it's, it's it's 
really bad to have Beatrix cure herself, not only for the time loss, but for the fact that she's healing herself, and then you have to do more damage. So, even though easily had the opportunity to attack with a second party member, he didn't to keep, as Brutal said, to keep uh, Beatrix above that health threshold. Yeah, it's it's another kind of fail forward tactic in a way. Um, Beatrice is not offing your characters because Thunder Slash can still off anyone who's not um, carrying the Coral Ring. Shock is a one hit. Those slashes can get pretty deadly. So her yeah. just not attacking a three party uh, system um, gives you kind of an, a, a, a chance to breathe. Yeah, there's a lot of situations where I just choose to push Kira so I know I can end the fight. Yeah, if you know that she's curing herself, then she's not attacking you. It's also another uh, area if you do get super far behind, you can just take the, the 10 turn out, uh, just like in Beatrice 1. All three Beatrices, you can just wait 10 turns. I did have to do that one for you. <laughs> I had to do that. I can't remember. I think Vivi had, uh, Vivi had no MP. And I think Zidane missed twice or something like that. I had like two missed attacks and I was just like, nah, sod it. I'm just gonna... I was gonna wait the 10 turns. I had plenty of Phoenix downs. Just let it rock. So yeah, all these forced encounters that you have on the Clayra Invasion, um, they're all routed in experience and AP-wise. Uh, they're going towards some really, really powerful abilities. Rosalind and Freya, um, those two are going to be involved in our final party um, for when we want to start dealing some good damage. Essentially, casting in this game is unfortunately just quite slow. Um, so in the more modern routes, we avoid using any casters where we brew can. Things like Magic Sword, Black Magic, White Magic, overall summons as well, typically. Um, and we will stick to using physical attacks. I think with um, MP attack and bird killer and certain arrangements of, of equipment and Freya and Zidane are two of those physical DPS that are going to be joining us for a good chunk of the game. Um, Vivi does get retired uh, some, sometime in disc 3 unfortunately. Yeah late into disc 3. But he, he's one of the more crucial characters thankfully. Um, Steiner will be joining us later along with Amaranth when we get him. Amaranth actually does quite a lot of work. Uh, but they, like I said, they'll be learning some really important abilities, like all the different killer abilities they need, um, and some passive protection abilities too. Uh, like, like uh, clear-headed, sort of, <laughs> kind of, and things like that. Antibody, body. Tech. Yeah, clear-headed antibody and locomotion are the big ones, yeah. preventing you from uh, confuse, uh, poison, and stop uh, and slow. Uh, for locomotion. Locomotion not really used on PlayStation from what I understand. People don't really use it. Um, it gets used in the rebirthless route rather than equipping auto -like. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 gets yeah. To use it. I think Amaranth has it in all of the routes. A nice aspect of um, like AP values. So for example, uh, Zidane to get ability up is like 95 AP or something, for example. But the amount of AP that you need is not, it's not like a binary thing it's not like a static value uh it's it's scaled to because you have zidane for the whole game so his abilities take more ap to to learn and have permanently uh but with amaranth for example hp plus 10 only takes 10 ap to get uh devil killer is also only 10 ap because he joins your party he's the last person to join your party you only have him for like half the game so it's nice that they've like scaled the AP to you know be proportion, uh, right. proportionate or proportional to when that party member joins. We have to talk about this coming sequence. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this part immediately here, this is the cage swing. We are going. You have you have to exit right. So there is a pattern that you can do that is slightly faster. It is actually really tight. It's pretty tricky. Pete uh, loves the cage practice. On HD. He does love the HD cage swing. So hopefully, Easy is going to get it. It's, I believe, 16 swings. So this is 8. This one here, going into the ninth. And you don't just mash it either. Uh, no, you, you need to timing. time these presses. Yeah, you can see he's like, oh, he sneaks in the third one. I think we 
might be a little bit short. I don't have fast cage thing. No. Ah. I missed one you left input. You should have told us. I missed one left input. Yeah, unfortunate, but yeah. it's not too big a deal. It's only a few seconds. Yeah. But yeah. then, when you're up here, you can actually avoid both these guards, so it's up to easily now to give these Alexandrian guards the swoosh around. So we really don't want to get caught with these because each one is, is a forced encounter if you get caught by them. Here they come. That one was a bit close. Ah. A close no. Brutals has a very, very funny video on his uh, on his YouTube channel. Talking about, oh, I'm, I'm absolutely sick of, of people losing runs to these guards. I'm sick of seeing people get caught by these guards. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm teaching you how to, how to avoid these guards. <laughs> and he does a nice tutorial. Uh, very good tutorial. I would have had to drag both back to avoid both because how close the second one was. Yeah. Yeah. On I found a, a pattern on PC that you can do that was very similar to what Easley was doing, where you can always avoid at least one guard, and then there's like there's a weird sort of quirk where the, the guards seem to be in like different places or have different sort of behaviors. And I found four patterns, uh, three of which would be avoided by my little setup. Uh, one of which you unfortunately are forced to get one, but the best way to do it is is uh, Brutal's method that he has. It is a uh, nice tutorial that I made fun of. So that uh, extra experience on the Steiner there is actually going to be useful. It makes Steiner huge. Level eight now he's got four hundred yeah. HP. Um, in addition, um, Zorn and Thorn coming up soon. You can actually get a single turn uh, on the red one, the one on the right. <laughs> I think it's Zorn, um, along with Freya and Zidane, if Steiner has received a little bit of an extra boon. So that's going to help out quite a bit there. Plus, the extra HP means that we're a little bit less likely to get um, slapped up by Beatrix 3 coming up afterwards. So it's not all it's not all downside getting caught by that guard. There are upsides to it, fortunately. It can, if you it fight the uh, the optional Tentarian boss to get uh, auto haste boots, uh, you actually really want level eight Steiner because it 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 has like the likelihood of uh, of surviving like drastically increases if you do have that level eight Steiner. So in some Tentarian routes, you actually intentionally fight one of those guards and have Steiner alive uh, mm -hmm. only. Yeah, Tentarian is um, a, a optional super boss, which is actually on the right of Easley's screen. Sorry, left side of Easley's screen. I'm surging. <laughs> um, you can go in there and it's a bit of a tricky fight. There is an interesting setup that you have to use in order to work with the boss's mechanics involving attacking your own party and using minor strike. It's a pretty awkward fight if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and even then, if you do, it can still be really, really lethal going into it. So it's, it's pretty scary. But it does give you arguably one of the most powerful accessories in the game. Um, the running shoes, which teaches you auto haste, which allows you to perform ATV weights on more bosses than usual, saving you time over the course of the run as you go. Yeah. So it's an investment. I, I'm a, I'm a big. It, it, the, the fight takes about five minutes. Um, I'm a big advocate of Tentarian in the Japanese version specifically, just because of the way that the the bosses are and the route is there's slight differences um in terms of like their damage output and what damage they take based on the spells that you're using um so i think running shoes are better on the japanese version specifically and i think i think <laughs> in a human viable taz i would try and push auto haste as well but I know that not everyone uh, not everyone agrees because it's a five minute investment in a speed run. Where... There's no way, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I it's it's that that's it's one of those things that like I don't have any like proof of, but I feel it in my soul. You know. I feel like um, it's not quick. It, it doesn't save enough time based on our lack of encounters. Yeah, that that's a good that that is a good point on, on HD specifically. Um, I, I was referring to like PlayStation, I guess. Um, but yeah, one huge advantage as well of auto haste is not only the ATB waiting on the boss, but you 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 literally flee faster from from battles. So um, and your opportunity for like running flees as well is um, is higher. That was a really nice fight, easily. Oh, sorry, uh, keeper, good stuff. Yep. 
Yeah, Tentarian is a, it, it's an old strat. Not many people use it anymore. It's usually well, just a... Uh, no, Where was that 1825 the first hit? <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Um, I was actually going to mention something. Um, my invasion was really good, actually. Really, really good. And I know keepers were quite good, but it's, it's very, very different, the invasion, which I haven't heard you guys mention yet. I didn't notice, but thank you for pointing out. So this puts you at the bottom of the castle escape. So easily is going to be working his way back up the Alexandrian prison area um, into the fight with Beatrix 3, which is uh, a bit more linear. You've got four party members now, and they all do pretty good, pretty good damage. Um, there are a few ways you can handle it. Uh, you want to try and finish her in two turns if you can. Sometimes it might take three. It's pretty normal. Uh, and then afterwards, it begins the castle escape sequence where, oh baby, we're gonna fight some dogs, <laughs> and hopefully we don't get licked. Because <laughs> if we get licked by the dogs, we might be taking a nap. <laughs> yep. Older, older routes will have Freya actually re-equip a weaker weapon and pop her in the back row, so that if uh, if Beatrix does get put to sleep, Beatrix is our main damage dealer. She actually joins the party after Beatrix 3 and becomes our, our main damage dealer in the fights that she's in. If she does get put to sleep, it's pretty bad. Older routes will have yeah Freya pop on a weak weapon, pop her in the back row so that she can actually bonk Beatrix and wake her back up. Um, this is risky because if Freya crits, uh, Beatrix can actually be killed, and then Freya can be put to sleep, and then it's just game over. Uh, so most modern routes will actually have Freya in the front row with a with a damage, uh, like a, a more damaging weapon, so she can actually keep up with the damage output. So Beatrix 3 now has just under 6,000 HP, but luckily Steiner, oof, he's ready. He's going to hit between <laughs> 16 and 1,900 damage. He's going to Easley's, start fucking. Yeah, Easley's level 8 Steiner with the Ice Brand as well is going to be very, very pivotal to this fight. So Steiner getting shocked is the absolute worst case scenario here. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we've all we've all been shocked. Steiner's been shocked repeatedly by everyone. Okay. So, when you need it the most, usually Beatrice three. For some reason, there's no coding behind it, but likes to go after our heavy hitter Steiner and just <laughs> nerf them. We, That's another... we we disproved this. <laughs> we disproved this. <laughs> it's another one of those like there's no proof, but I just feel it. We proved that it doesn't exist. It's there. We proved I'm... that it doesn't. Renuer <laughs> is ev all the evidence you could need. <laughs> I don't believe you. We, uh, I don't care. I don't care about the proof. I don't care about the numbers and the empirical evidence. It does seem like she just. I to just it. feel it. I just it really feel does. it. But... Easily having a really nice fight. All four are up. All yeah. four were there to do some nice damage. The, the there is a way to skip. Beatrix 3's Cure, uh, Cure rather, uh, it's just not as reliable, there's just not really a setup for it, especially with how random that fight can be, there's just not as, it's not as straightforward as, uh, as the, well, the Brutals explained where it's like Vivi Blizzara, attack, attack, Vivi Blizz, attack, Vivi Blizz, attack, it just doesn't really exist for Beatrix 3, you just kind of whack and hope. So, we've got Keeper coming up to old guard skip here. There you, ready. Go. There, you go. there 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 you go. To me. To you. There you go. 
<laughs> there you go. There, uh, oh. There you go. Close. There you go. I do wish you could exit left. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? Just slam into the ladder. I have no way out. Yeah, and just, and just no, 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 you don't slam into the ladder. You you jump out of the cage and start climbing the ladder. But but I, I'm oh, just uh, oh 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 Look at his slippery lad. Nice. That is four broken ankles. Maybe in the remaster, Sayo. Maybe in the remaster. Yeah, the remaster that was in those like weird NVIDIA leaks or something along those. So, whatever. Keeper is schmoovin. An interesting difference as well in uh, PlayStation versus PC is that runners don't really opt for a strat where basically to keep Vivi alive, you'll actually have him intentionally be in critical health and you'll have Freya have... I, is it Mithril Gloves or Coral Ring? Something that gives you cover. And then uh, if Beatrix targets Vivi, uh, she'll actually cover him to keep him alive. They don't do it in uh, HD. I'm not exactly sure why. Linen Curse. Uh, yeah, Linen Curse. That's the one. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know exactly why. I think it's just that you don't really need to have that sort of safety because HD has auto saves as you enter each screen. So... You just, it's just not as necessary, I guess. And here we've got the castle escape sequence, which has a deceptive amount of variance. You've got three fights. They're all spellcasters who have a chance of doing physical as well. Of course, the dogs can still put you to sleep. Um, it really... It, it, when I say deceptive amount of variance, it really doesn't seem like you can lose minutes, but you can but you lose can. minutes. Yeah, these you guys can lose can, minutes, yeah. These guys can be really long fights. They all get a turn yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, so slow. Dagger, Dagger XP as well is like, it's not necessary. You can finish the speedrun with Dagger at level 1. But uh, for routes that utilize Quinna, uh, you do want a bit of extra uh, dagger experience so that Quinna's level will be a bit higher. Um, I believe that's the case. I feel like uh, I feel I've, I'm like second guessing everything I say now after believing that schoolyard lie of being able to kill Rob <laughs> or other. Um, but I, uh, Mythic Dawn told me this, uh, so if uh, if I'm wrong, then then blame Mythic. Uh, but some of Dagger's XP or levels, basically, it's like a party average. So, uh, Quinna will be a little beefier if Dagger's XP is higher. Lost over a minute on that Beatrix fight. Yeah. Seemed yeah, pretty rough. I saw that. They're These dogs bad. as well. Just they're good I boys. Hate. No, they're not. They look they horrifying. Are, they're lovely boys. Look how happy they, they don't are even have you. a. They don't have a snout. It looks like some Junji Ito slap. Are you saying you know? they're less of a dog because they don't have a little boop to snoot? Well, yeah, sure. I'm just committing to it now. They aren't dogs. <laughs> they're evil. <laughs> they're evil, evil <laughs> monsters. <laughs> The and they deserve to. They down. deserve to be Klim hazarded. Unreal. The only dog that deserves to be Klim hazarded is Dark Nation from Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that dog's that dog's no, cool, and he always definitely and he it. always lets you get a turn in. He's very polite. In it, I, 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 we're gonna have words. <laughs> 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 I have a feeling I'm over leveled. Well, that one. One's it done. I do um, enjoy that I just destroyed. You just healed up, right? 617 should be on max HP. If you're the correct level. I didn't see you level up in the previous fight. Yeah, you're still fine. Unless this fight levels you. Ooh, the Ooh, lake protection. Dotted, yep. The lake protection. <laughs> um, if my stream has just crashed, it should be straight back up. Um, there you go. It literally, my stream I had a little did, blip. I didn't have any uh, any noticeable delay. 
No, it, it literally dipped for a second. I saw it on my oh, okay. uh, my live sure. light flapped up, flick on and off. <laughs> I don't know why. I also just noticed that we have no gray menu representation here. The way it should be. How sad. This is gray PC menu. style. This isn't some PlayStation 2 Slim run. I, on, dude, man. I... <laughs> I still, I still love that. Like when I first was learning this game in like 2021 or whatever, when I was reading Mutsky's guide, and he's like, "Dude, blue menus, blue menus are faster." I just <laughs> assumed like, "Oh, that's crazy that the pit, the blue pixels are drawn in faster, and like they must save like frames every text box or something." <laughs> and I, I just carried that belief for like a year and a half, and because I didn't ask anyone about it, I just saw it in the guide and didn't question it, and. Yeah, it turns out it's just a it's just a joke, I guess. And yeah, I seriously believed that the game drew blue pixels faster for like a year and a half. <laughs> so you prefer grey then? Oh, I'm I'm team grey now, just out of like out of being scorned by this like misinformation <laughs> that, that I uh, yeah like I it's misinformation that I provided to myself, but I feel wronged by it. Yeah. I would almost assume that gray would be faster because it would check to see default, and since there's no change, yeah, no change, it, it doesn't <laughs> exactly. have to refactor it. In my defense, it was the very first speedrun that I'd taken remotely seriously, so it's you know, I I wasn't the, the only thing I'd tried before was like Crash Team Racing many many years before, and wait, is Crash Team Racing got blue menus? No, no, no. It's like, I mean, like, I, I wasn't really thinking about, like, the back end of, of games and stuff like that. I'd, I would just drive all the tracks and, you know, drift around corners and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. So, these two gates right here, you can actually skip. It's probably one of the hardest skips to do um, because you can pass by it, but if you trigger the the part where the gate comes up, it actually then becomes physical at that moment because it has to stop you from getting by it. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting one, but you can save about a minute of time, which is probably the craziest outside of the uh, plant brain skip uh, in terms of of just, uh, I guess also like boss four, but just for just distancing yourselves. It's pretty crazy of a skip on the cave swing though so as you can actually you may have noticed if you pay that really close attention is that on pete's controls you can actually see a and d so pete actually does play on mouse and keyboard yeah um, no controller keeper, plugged in no keeper and uh, easy play on controller so keyboard it's faster it is faster <laughs> the, the skill check is higher though and the time difference is very slim uh, but it is no, I don't. But shush. Top very crit on me three. And you're it not cuts a full minute from a, it cuts a full minute from the pandemonium menu. Okay. Or right. nearly. Oh my god, dude! I knew I could slip through. Let's go, dude. That, that was, was really I was, I was, I was, was considering really a loop de loop, but then I was like, no. <laughs> very good decision making. Keeper as well just had an awesome uh, Beatrix three fight. Um, I was looking at Pete's screen during the guards, but I, I'm like 99% sure that Cura was skipped on Beatrix 3. Um, he did yeah, use a BB Blazara. But, a beautiful um, Freya crit at the end. Yes, yeah, the Freya crit as well. Um, yeah, very quick Beatrix 3. Here's on easily screen, we have the new and approved Ravu Rava going by Ravu Mago now. Uh, pretty yep. easy fight. We want two Blazara casts from BB and then a hit from Zidane. Um, we don't really care about daggers, so that was actually a more optimal of a, a move. We're hoping to go yeah. first, giving Rabu Mago one turn. Um, and you can actually extend the fight a little bit if you want to deny Rabu Mago a turn and do a melee attack in the middle of the two Blizzards, because uh, it will essentially take away his turn. He'll coil up. Uh, it'll cost you a little bit of time, so it's not as optimal, but somewhat of a safety strat. Um, just the worst to avoid thing. ultrasound oh. waves. Yeah, that, I was literally about to say that the, the worst thing that can happen is a party member getting an ultrasound wave which casts mini on them, and you've got to use a remedy. Just and it itself is a very slow spell. It's yeah, probably your worst case scenario is uh, Vivi or Zidane getting ultrasound waves. It just sucks. The tiny Vivi's so cute. He is, and he's already tiny. Is the thing he doesn't need to be smaller. 
He's even tinier. Actually, if uh, Dagger gets mini there, she gets basically eclipsed by your uh, attack menu. So, <laughs> doesn't exist. So I don't know if we talked about it here, but this first uh, fight with Beatrice and Frey against the Bandersnatch, um, you get a full kind of like MP reset here on Beatrice. So she'll have 64, but in the next fight we'll see she has 64 again even after using yeah. up 32 of those points, which is uh, pretty convenient for a speedrun, I might say. If uh, I, the Keeper's ATBs didn't really allow it guaranteed, but uh, two attacks I believe is just faster than a Klim Hazard. So if, if both uh, Freya and Beatrix get a preempt in that one specific fight, just sending both in for an attack will 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 be slightly faster. Um, but there was a chance for the dog. Miss. Unless you miss, of course. Um, but the I think keeper the the ATBs were a little far apart, so there was a chance for a dog to get in. So uh, you kept it safe with a glim hazard there. Over on the Team Choco side, we've got. Uh, Brutal's cat's namesake, Lani. Uh, and She's Amarant is a funny baby. Uh, Amarant will join our party later. But they are basically like mercenaries who are out and hired to bring Dana back to the castle. Uh, I believe dead or alive. Alive. Yeah, whereas the Black Waltzes were sent out to bring her back specifically alive. Um, Amaranth and Lani have been sent well, out to... Actually, more specifically, they're after the Pendant. Right, right. Yeah, they, uh, they're they not actually interested in Dagger's physical form anymore. They are interested yeah. in personal belongings. Impact font. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Shout out to I've Impact. actually... My my split for uh, for this section is actually called Impact font. So, it's just, it's is... so jarring. It's so jarring. Um, <laughs> so there's actually a big throwback sequence coming up right here, isn't there, Cap? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so this is your probably your largest piece of tie-in to any other Final Fantasy game. Um, and here we just skip right by it because speedrun uh, allows you to. But uh, if you choose to get your first uh, Eidolon cast in the game, um, you essentially collect stories from uh, Ramen Skies, um, and it pieces together the story of Joseph from Final Fantasy II, and how he helped you get the Goddess Bell, and eventually, you know, he died in combat and whatnot. Um, so you piece together this story as like some morality thing for for Dagger. Um, kind of, he's just kind of just gauging her, and he just reveals later on that he really didn't care. He's just hoping she put together a story. Um, but it, it directly references uh, Final Fantasy 2. Uh, thanks for spoiling that Joseph died to me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you were actually watching the relay and supporting your <laughs> I would have been teammates spoiled and earlier. friends, <laughs> you would have seen it before. <laughs> so yeah, as, as we see on an easily screen, he just selects, I give up, and he carries on. The, the purpose of that section for Final Fantasy IX is to get Dagger her summons back, uh, as Cap said. But we don't need summons, they're slow, they suck, uh, in the context of a speedrun, and we just move on. It actually makes me feel pretty bad when I run two now, because... <laughs> Like it, it just puts it into circumstance that you you never went back to tell uh, to tell his daughter that hey you know what yeah your dad uh, not coming back. I mean I think you can you just don't the speed run. Yeah. So doggo fights once again. This is the most scary fight of the castle escape. We really 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 don't want those dogs to open with a lick on Beatrix. Yeah. Incredible ATV. Oh really yeah. Doesn't even, it's not even a risk. Sublime. Um, you actually can't go back to Pinnacle Rocks once you drop down. It locks it off. Really? You can only get to the bottom part of it, which is where there's an elixir. That's because Zidane says, like, I think Zidane says the uh, in the story, like, oh, you know, you'll you like we can. He alludes to being able to come back. 
Yeah, you um, or you says, can't like, get you'll, back. You'll you'll to... get your powers back or something like that. I I always thought you could. That's so crazy. Yeah, it's part of the reason why they made it so you can get Ramu from a really early standard enemy um, and just two. So because he drops from a Zagnol as well. Dang, does it? Oh, no, is it, is it a Zagnol or is it from a Griffin? One of them drops a Parado. Right. It's just very unfortunate that they tied the damage to the gems you're holding. No cure skip for Beatrix 3 on Pete's side. But that's fine, because Steiner is now going to crunch. Nice kill. We don't have cover, so I pushed her to cure intentionally. Smart. That was a very good fight. Here we got easily uh, going through what's so belovedly called Plot City. Uh, Limblum, yep. Limblum 2. Because um, essentially, it's just the majority of it is just talking here. Uh, there's not yeah. much we do. We we kind of sneak away for an exploda at the sin shop. Um, but other than that, uh, it's essentially just progressing the plot. So good I chance don't to think take a little There's even break. anything that like at this point in the game, there's not really anything worth buying from the weapon shop. It's maybe casually, but it's just not very. This is not anything really great to do. So, yeah, as Cap said, something exploder. Carry on with the plot. Yeah, they, they really wanted to make the, the new hotness uh, Black Mage Village shop um, in yeah. Disc 2. So they don't up Limblum that much until Disc 3. There's some goodies in the shop on the way out in Dragon's Gate, though. We're actually yes, gonna yes up, there are. We're yes, actually going to pick up the Mind Realm, which is probably one of the most powerful hats in the game. And uh, an Adam Invest. Adam Invest is pretty good. Does it teach you anything? Oh, Bird Killer. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. What are you, some kind of world record to. holder? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get what given one for free anyway, that's right. Just like you're world giving Germanist boots as well. Just like you're giving Germanist boots. Well, also, in uh, CSR, um, this section is just super short. You you talk to the guy, you get an exploder, and then you're out of there. Yeah, CSR being a cutscene right. removal mod. Top Best way to, to learn probably. any of these speedruns as well. If Instant. anyone's interested in any of these speedruns, FF8, FF9, and FF10 all have an excellent cutscene removal mod. It really doesn't detract from like the skill portion of the game at all. You still do what you need to do and, you know, play parts of the game that you need to play, but you you just don't have to do like a lot of dialogue and then um, they go, yeah, actually you're right, she's trumped by that command menu, hey. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in all those cutscene and removal mods, especially for Final Fantasy X, are awesome. Um, definitely get involved, get in the discords if you want. That was a really, really good fight from Tom Breeze, uh, probably just one yeah, time. Yeah, unfortunately. I, uh, again, I bleed pink, so I don't like to see... Um, that on that graph, I really don't like to see the the blue and, and green graphs. Double ether drop is that normal? Go down. I don't recognize that. Uh, you can't get a double ether other than if it's the additional drop. You only get one. So anywhere in the game, um, enemies, some enemies don't even have a required drop, but you'll get the required drop, and then you'll get a possibility of an additional drop. You only can get up to two items from um, any. Uh, encounter, uh, plus the option of one in eight chance of a card, depending on how many enemies you're facing. I will uh, quickly take this opportunity to say uh, thank you all for, for putting up with my, my voice a little bit. A um, bit of got a block nose, a little bit uh, under the weather. I thought it was your accent, then. No, funny. just thank thank you for uh, putting up with me and having me on and whatnot. I was a pretty late addition to commentary um, due to some other people uh, dropping out. But yeah, thank you very much for having me. This is my favorite speedrun of all time. So um, great honor to be able to commentate it with people that I very much enjoy the company of. So thank you. It's good to have you here. You're welcome, Sayo. And we meet <laughs> my favorite character, Quinna. Let's go. No funny name for Quinna, unfortunately. You mean Quinna? Quinna. Yeah, so, so Quinna is probably the first uh, the first non-binary representation of any Final Fantasy game. No one knows if Quinna's a no one knows what Quinna is really. It's it's very um, very progressive. 
good to see. There's also an interesting fact there on that first screen where we first meet uh, Quinna. Um, the frogs you see aren't actually the frogs the game considers there. That's just <laughs> all RNG. So if, when we come back through, which we uh, don't actually at this point, um, if you would have came back through earlier and then had to get re, re get uh, Quina, you'd notice that. But um, those frogs are are not the frogs that are there. <laughs> the game uh, has spawned completely different frogs, which is Final Fantasy Nine. Do you, do you mean do you mean like that you you can't pick up all those frogs like they're cosmetic? I, I know very little about the frogs. I only played this game casually twice. Well, the only frog you can pick up in the first scene that forces you out is that one frog. So you pick up that frog and it forces right. you. But if you go back, then it actually takes into account um, what frogs you had, and it will show the proper frogs. But that's, by this point, yeah, it should be so a full, full swamp. Yeah, I, I've gotten a little bit more familiar with frogs uh, watching Grim Salad and uh, our MOG representative Pete Swanson. Uh, running all bosses, which is a really cool category. It's basically Hundo uh, for this game. That's but, another one yeah. that's been brought to uh, PC. Recently got that yeah. board up. Yeah, Grim um, Salad Grim's pushed, uh, pushed out. Out. Yeah, Grim's got a whole guide coming out for uh, PC all bosses, which is really cool. Oh, yeah, and then it's Monkey Slinger. Really hard on that. It's been good. We got Monkey Slinger in chat, who is uh, the current world record holder for all bosses, I believe. Um, and a great a great router for the all boss category. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to go back to Grim really quickly, but I really liked her. She's got an awesome layout. <laughs> I love her layout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's when you when you chat in a chat room, you you become a frog, hopping around her in the swamp of a layout. It's, it's so wonderful. Good. It's so cool. I I love as well. Uh, while Grim was working on her guide, she posted in the Discord uh, how yassified the female frogs are. Because like there's the old video game trope of like, well we've got the we've got the sheep. How do we make the girl sheep? I'll just put a pink bow on its head. But like the the um, the girl frogs in this game, they have the bow, of course. Um, they've also got like nail polish, <laughs> and they've got like makeup on. Oh <laughs> it's yeah, so, it's so crazy. They got like a full face of makeup. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> So another hidden elixir, if you actually come back through the room easily, Zon, right where uh, Amadou Han is coming out of uh, is an elixir. But we don't come back in this route, but it's an interesting kind of just hidden elixir in the game. This is also some uh, some platforming, I guess. Not, not platforming, but like some actual like environmental hazards for the only time in this game, aside from uh, germ boots, I guess. But yeah, if you get knocked back by these pendulums, you run the risk of getting caught by this boss. You can flee from it, but you don't have flea equipped from what I understand here in most routes. And right. it's super embarrassing to get caught by this thing. Um, it's going to happen to everyone once, but it's uh, it's not good. It's a, it's a forced encounter in all bosses. You have to get yeah, No, it's not. Yes, it is. it is. You have to take it. You don't have to kill it. You can flee from it. Oh, okay. I because I was looking at the thing, the the list of. I said that so confidently, man. What is wrong with me? Um, <laughs> I because uh, I was considering learning all bosses a while ago, and I was looking at the spreadsheet. It's like, do you have to defeat this boss? Yes or no? And in that list, it's no. So I assume that you don't have to interact with it at all. Okay. Yeah, you have to interact. But I've got to. Uh, I've got to really just stop being so confident. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was crazy. No, you don't. <laughs> to, You're to, a liar. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. I'm so sorry, bro. <sighs> well, I, my brain has actually like increased in size um, from the moment I joined this call. I want to get that looked at. No, it's a good thing. It's what a good thing. Oh no! Double uh, seven. Go back. Do not pass go. Does he know the super secret brutals? Uh, A to B way change. Let's see. She comes, bonk. I think this is this is Dutch. 
Oh, no, no. He needs one I more think we're Z. Short. Yeah, we're short of yeah. Eevee, I think. One more Z. One more Z. I think at this point, they might, they both might have lethal, actually. Yeah, they should. Bonk. Ooh. So, nice. here is one of the spots in the game um, that you're most likely to cast Lucky Sevens. And to cast that, the last uh, digit of health Zidane needs is a seven. And it gives you a 25% chance to either cast seven, double sevens, triple sevens, or quad sevens. Quad sevens uh, beating Lonnie's, I think, less than 6,000 uh, HP. Um, it's, in the, it's in the 5,000s for sure. Yeah, like 5,200 or something like that. You know what? Uh, I've, uh, she's 5,709. 5,7? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because Beatrix 3 is 5,708. So oh, that's, 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 right. a that's a good way to remember it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I just, we have a I'm chance. Lazy. I've just got it all in notes. We have a chance to do it here, and that's also part of the reason you have Zidane keep Germanus Boots on for Clara, because if he had Yellow Scarf, you do get an additional strength, minus you don't get the spirit, and so he'll have some weird HP. So um, we'll get an opportunity there, and possibly an opportunity at Hilgegaard's. To cast it, and then maybe even Amaran, depending on how things go, um, or the the areas. But Lonnie is the the most popular area to cast Lucky Sevens. So Mel, we've we've got an area. Oh, we've got oh. an opportunity. So what we can? What, what's what's the other strategy? That we, don't, we don't really do anymore, Mel. Down here in Fossil Room. Yep, Mel's. Uh, Mel looks she like she's not here right now. Definitely. No way. May she's I? Because I. Love this. Please do. So, um, Quinna can eat uh, enemies and learn certain abilities from them. Those bats that you saw there, the, the older routes used to uh, basically Blizzara all on those bats encounters. Uh, and then Quinna would eat one of the bats and you'd run away to learn the ability Night, which casts sleep on every character, every target on the field. So the strat is that you would equip Insomniac on all your party members so that they stay awake, but you put the enemy to sleep. Uh, this can be done on uh, Nova Dragon. It can be done on uh, Earth Guardian, uh, which we'll see later in the game. It's not really used anymore because the problem is that it relies on an encounter, especially in HD where encounters are more scarce. And the fact that bats aren't the only thing you can see here. There is the Griffin. There is the... Uh, ab abomination, I think it's called, which can also teach you night. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just not really used anymore. I love that strategy though. I love using Quinna and putting him to sleep. Uh, Valley Apira as well, you can put to sleep, which we'll see later in uh, in this three. Uh, but the, it's just not. It relies on too much going your way. Plus, uh, night has a chance to miss, and that can cause all sorts of problems. Um, Fun fact: all Memoria bosses can be put to sleep. Yeah, yeah, so Malarist, uh, I, I was only listing ones that you actually would use Knight on in the speedrun. But uh, yeah, e as as uh, easily just mentioned, every single Memoria boss, so every Disc 4 boss can be put to sleep. You additionally, you additionally have the the headache of trying to find Insomniac for all your characters. Um, yeah, it's that not is, usually yeah. something that's routed in. I It was MPU's route that really utilized Knight a lot. On PlayStation, it makes more sense because the encounter rate is so high. You're going to get encounters in Fossil Roo. So the odds of those being a bats encounter is pretty good. It's good enough for you to rely on. Uh, and even if you don't, then you've got, again, the Abominations as well and Grimlocks later in the game. Uh, but on PC especially and in just more modern routes, you, you're you not playing to get encounters. You're playing to get a time of... 8.33 or below or oh, on PC 7.27 or below and encounters just don't lend to that so uh, the Gargan Roo system of travel is very interesting um, it's probably one of my favorite areas for movement especially on boosters yo I'm muted um, oh, hold on there, there's a lot of good cardinal directions for just movement here. Not a lot of weird uh, screens, so you can definitely do it on a controller pretty easily. Um, 
plus it you know no unnecessary plot or anything like that you're not liable to get an encounter on HD I think on average it's less than one um, so it's just a really nice area to showcase just superb movement Plus, we get this really cool um, situation here when we go out of. Uh, sorry, it's Fossil Roo. I, I might have said Gargan Roo. Um, we get the cool little trope of the first time you visit a continent and this text comes up. As long as the text is still showing on screen, you can't get an encounter. So, we're going to see easily here just pure running. Uh, one of two areas in the game where we just pure run until that title goes away. And then we stutter step. Uh, the first one being to Ice Cavern, where we can just run the whole way. So here we're stutter stepping all the way to the Chocobo Tracks. This is why we picked up the guy, the two Geishel Greens and Clara. Um, we're gonna get it's this Chocobo here because we're gonna be eventually heading into the forest, um, as Silas talked about. When we go into forest, stutter stepping doesn't exactly work. It does mitigate any harmful encounters, but friendly encounters just for some reason. That's just catnip to them. It's also the quiz guy, right? Yes. Well, I consider that a friendly encounter. Is that a friendly yeah. yeah, sure. So that's also another interesting point. When we get to... Oh, goodness. I'm. There's like a name for him, right? Is it just the quiz master? Ragtimer. Ragtime, ragtime, thank yeah. you. It was just I was just totally blanking on it. So Ragtime Mouse. So Ragtime Mouse, uh, it's going to ask a question. Um, if you answer right, you get a thousand gil. If you answer wrong, or you hit him, uh, you get nothing. But if you actually flee from that encounter, instead of losing some marginal level of gil, he'll take away, I think it's, you, if, at this point in the speedrun, it's close to 10,000 gil, which is just absolutely detrimental. Um, a few people I know have done that at some point, so it's a lot easier just to smack him in the face and he kicks you out of the uh, questionnaire instead of trying to flee. And Which is also a very interesting thing that I probably one of the least seen things, because in a normal casual run you're going to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I want to answer this question. Um, we most likely see it probably in a speedrun. Did we get any any lucky sevens yet? Not yet. Uh, we might see it here on keeper screen. We got Let's go keep double sevens. I'm so excited. Do it big so, for Team Pawn. We need you, Brent. No keeper. <laughs> Casting lucky sevens gives you four parts equal chance to cast either seven seventy seven, seven hundred and seventy seven, or seven thousand seven hundred and seventy seven. With Lonnie's five thousand HP, that is a one shot. We're going for it. Let's go. Um, this fight has a number of lines through it. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. But you can also just hit quad sevens. Oh, Double seven sevens. Seven. Alright, Pete seven has to also get two sevens. It's gotta be fair. <laughs> you save about a minute um, if you do get quad sevens here. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Just miss this. Whatever. Oh, Keeper not going for a cliff fall. Sorry, not keeper. Easily done cliff for Cliffall. I have never had Cliffall, so... <laughs> so, there's a big treat, uh, especially on HD, I think it's the most likely to get it. Um, due to just how the map is made, you can actually use the cliff and slide against it, and fall down right next to Black Mage Village, saving about 8 seconds there. Looks like easily uh, keeper's got it. Nice. Oh, we low rolled though. <laughs> oh no! Hear that? Oh, what Actually, no, all. no, 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 no! Sorry, that's that my mistake. So both Sedan and Vivi should have lethal here. Oh, there's... I made a major mistake. <laughs> Easy. What do you do? Just Alt F4 right now, or we're yeah. trying to flee, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so Pete brings up an interesting point. Um, so with PC, we have a few options since there's an autosave built in to every time you enter a new room or screen. Um, 
you could just exit the game and come back in. Uh, take the time loss on wherever you move to. Um, and just load from there. So if you're stuck in an encounter, you can do that. You have to get out of the counter. There's no soft reset from within the encounter you can do. So you have to exit the game. Um, or you can try to get a quick flea off. Uh, so it's usually an interesting play on which way you want to go. As you do have the option of getting an instant flea from holding both uh, L2 and R2. Um, but you have yeah, equal chance to also just not... The most useful that it is, is in a Desert Palace, where you don't have access to Zidane at all. So, if you get... and the, the encounters there are particularly rough to flee from. On PlayStation, runners will typically cast spells and uh, cast summons and whatnot, just to, like, buy time. Uh, but on PC, you can just Alt F4, run it back, try the screen again. Oh my goodness. The punishment. On Keeper BK. Oh, ah, oh, there's no preempt as well. Getting mixed into Oblivion. So you can actually split that screen by um, playing cards with the dude in the middle. But um, you don't really need to in HD. Your encounter rate is low enough for it to not really matter too much. But um, unfortunately, it just matters. Yeah, of course. Both um, Keeper and Easily got punished for that. And both could have learned Knight and chose not to. <laughs> Good on him. Yeah, so in Fossil Roo, uh PC, it's somewhere between 0 and 1. So, and usually that is the long screen uh, that that Keeper is about to go into. Uh, most likely to give you a encounter, or an encounter. Meanwhile, we have Easily here in Black Mage Village. Uh, this is where we get a lot of cool stuff. We get an elixir, we're gonna get an ether, we're gonna get 2,000 gil. We're gonna sell and buy a bunch of stuff and then send some stuff. Uh, this should essentially carry us through to the end of this too. Um, this is also a slight menu into a synth shop in the beginning of disc three. So really big menu here for easily. Gosh, that menu looks so much harder in HD than it is. It 100% is. Oh my it, god. <laughs> the, the, the problem, because again, uh, I, I'll say it a million times, this, this is the mobile version. That's why the text is so big, that's why the text boxes and command windows are so big. And part of the problem with that is, is when you're in shops and menus, you can only see like four things because it's made for tiny, tiny phone screens. And Let's give page that down and page hand. up. Oof. Yeah. Page down <laughs> and page up work very differently. And, yeah. Um, like, yeah, that min PlayStation flows so nicely, but yeah, yeah. the extra directional and inputs you have to do on in, in PC. Addition to, Once you use the mouse. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> um, yeah, just it's just like the menus you you like in on PlayStation, you can really like punch out menus and, and be really fast with it. But on on PC, you're kind of locked to this rhythm of like tap 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 tap. You know, press press press. It's like this this slower rhythm that you're kind of locked to, whereas on PlayStation you can you can really just like bang out those menus so quick, I'm ready and that for carries that over to the dialogue as well. I'm ready for that keyboard mouse BMV menu. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, like, with FF9, you think you're moving so fast on PSX, but, I mean, isn't it super slow compared to, like, FF7 and some of the other, uh... No, it's, 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 about, the, it's about the same on, on the mm. PlayStation versions. I, I don't see any, I mean... Oh, really? I thought FF7 was really fast. FF7 Actually, I are fast because you get the opportunity to have very static item placement. You get to do a lot of item rearranging and picking up and buying things in a specific order to place them in, like, static spots of the menus. You don't really need to like, you know, in, in FF9, because there's so much, uh, you know, RNG with where your items are within the menu. You don't need to be like, oh, where's where's my Mithril Dagger or something. On FF7, at least from what I understand, Brutals is obviously far more um, suitable to talk about this. But there's a lot of- Oh, I actually don't do the Black of... Mage Village with the mouse because there's quantities of items. And uh, yeah, it's hard to do like extra. Quantities. It's hard to like quantities press to like up while I'm using the mouse or- yeah, yeah, that makes but, sense. But yeah, um, 
ff7 very much has a lot of like intentional item placement where you you get to just really like <laughs> you don't need to actually see and look Think where about it yeah and, uh, no, 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 yeah no, no, no. No, 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 no. Is it not? Is it not the case? At, at least, <laughs> no, from, no, 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 no. again, again, I, as I said, you're far more, you're far more suitable to speak about this. <laughs> Mate, even the top runners when they, there, so there is a cell. There is one cell. It's like maybe ten items or something, and that's the biggest cell you do in seven. And every single time you get there, you have to stop. And be like, right, where is everything? <laughs> Because it could be. To be fair, anywhere. to be fair, that's a, that's only like one cell. The other things that I see are very much, um, yeah, <laughs> kind of like more three strategic. shops, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> we could be yeah. brutal saying even the top runners, and he's just hit the number three spot on seven. Yeah. I'm not Can we stop complimenting player. brutals, please? I don't. Brutal's also the up. PSX Fleeless Percent world record holder. <laughs> Can we stop? This man's ego Boom. is growing too large. It can't get any bigger, don't worry. It's too much. This Let's man, needs, this man needs to be humbled. Let's see it. Yeah. Seven. Let's go, uh, Oh, wow. Fog <laughs> is smoothly sailing. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Pete just Stonks. put together the double sevens from Easley and Keeper and pulled it out. You know what, Pete? <laughs> You're pretty good. <laughs> Mog, Mog you. stocks just went up insanely. <laughs> God, that is right, really so... going to close the gap between uh, Pete and Keeper. I don't know. Keeper is pretty, pretty solid here, so we'll, we'll see. But Keeper picking up that uh, 2700 yield as well as the diamond. Uh, very important, I learned one run. Uh, very important to body temp for end of the game. Uh, the diamond is pretty much used for that. You don't really learn uh, body temp, so it's usually just shuffled around at the, the end of this floor. Yeah, body temp preventing you from being afflicted by heat and freeze. Freeze is very, I mean, it just, it's its similar to stop, but if you get physically attacked, you die. Uh, you get shattered. And then heat, uh, heat is really, really weird. Uh, it's a really weird status. If something is afflicted by heat and you try and execute a turn, you die. That's it. Hmm. Um, I lost it a run. Last very long. Yeah, I lost a run once to. Uh, a Tiamat in Crystal World, like a Tiamat kind of enemy. He did a Jetfire. I'd already queued up the flea as Zidane. Jetfire killed everyone but Zidane. The flea tried to oh, execute and Zidane died. That's that was crazy. sub nine pace as well on PlayStation. So I didn't even have the auto saves or anything. It's so bad. Can you cure? I remember can, that. Can you remove uh, the heat status with anything, basically? You can cast, um, uh, yeah, Ice Magic. Yeah, I, oh, ice magic. The same as, as okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As with as with freeze, you can cast fire on an uh, on a party member to to heat them back up. Uh, but yeah, everyone was dead, so they couldn't have they couldn't have done that anyway. And even if even if they could, I had no spell cast in the party. It was just four. Yeah, and, no, no. no. Yeah, I was just curious. I knew you could do. I knew you could do it with freeze. I didn't know if it was. Yeah. Heat, yeah. Such a such a heartbreaker. Yeah, for sure. So oh. here we are picking up our seventh party member, uh, Mudski. I mean, Ico. Um, <laughs> you'll notice she has a horn. Hmm. You know what? I like Ico. I think she's a good character. Oglops? Okay. Oh, I didn't pick up the Oglops easily. No, but how will you make the stew now? <laughs> Whoa! Did no you stilt skin as well. From? Yeah, that was crazy actually. Holy! Was <laughs> what was that? <laughs> the, like a side no, there. Stilt skin there. Uh, stilt skins are sort of a traveling. He'll, he'll offer you like little stilt skin packages for X amount of gil. That one there you buy for 666. And he gives you a Phoenix Pinion and something else. Which is just stonks because you sell the Phoenix Pinion off for a thousand gil later in the game, and then you you profit four hundred gil roughly. You know what? This is what makes you a immorally unjust runner, Sayo. Because personally, I don't buy that package because I don't like people scamming don't. my friends. Most people don't. Um, I do it because <laughs> um, 
you know, Stiltskin will give his wallet for my PB. Okay, he, <laughs> I will. I will do whatever needs to be done. I will step on whoever needs to be stepped on. Okay, Your true speed runner. <laughs> I don't even save the dog in uh, in Dollet. Oh wow! Oh, it so doesn't even save time. It doesn't even save time to skip the dog. But that dog will give his life for my PB. All right. Not so right here, we got the Jolly Green Giant come up on easily screen. Let's go. Shrek. Uh, she's gone. Are we going to do quads? This actually could get really bad. Really quad seven. Has he gone for seven? Oh, I don't no think so. Seven. Okay. You know what? Quads, you're going for seven series. Actually, there's technically a, a merit to it. If you heal up Ico, because he's in a bit of a pinch if this is Earthshake. This one, yeah. So this this is definitely gonna kill Dagrero. He's also going for the Blizzard strats, so we could uh, more likely to low roll than the I think the Oak Staff, which gives you bio. Um, it's reminiscent of a PSX run uh, rather than the Falc variation, which uses Oak Staff and then um, Drain at the end to save two seconds on the death animation. Okay, physical, don't kill the boy. Ah. Okay, we can PD and cure here and get back into the fight. Wait, was this down right? Oh no. If only kind of he did thing. sevens. Okay, yeah, so okay. Hil Hilgar's uh, 8100 HP. Just for And reference. he does have a Curaga that he can let rip. Very similar to Beatrix. And yeah, uh, so Black Waltz too. If he's put the lower threshold to Oh, the baby cure. boy. Not the baby boy again. There we go. We need. To... In fact, I think he might steal the turn here. Yeah, there he goes. He's a quick. He's a quick guy. Oof. Well, Ico is just too slippery. Oof. Yeah, Hilgegaard is uh, deceptively fast. He actually has. Oof. I want to say like in forty speed or something, and She's it only goes up to fifty. <laughs> She's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw him up into the air. And I'm gonna put the killer on. <laughs> yeah, Hilgars actually has 44 speed, meaning he gets his AT back every three seconds, compared to uh, our party, which is chilling in the 20s, getting about every seven seconds. Man, you are um. I, I'm pleasantly surprised with your like functional knowledge of this game. I I just didn't pick you for someone who knew like the ins and outs like that. I'm very I'm very impressed. Uh, th thank you. I... <laughs> I'm, I'm a I'm a cap I'm a captain fan now. Not Woo! that I wasn't before. God. Um, <laughs> no, Cap's done his homework. Yeah, no, that yeah, basically just uh yeah, shout out to Cap for having some like excellent functional knowledge. Um. Mythic Dawn as well. I remember uh, I was looking to... People used to do Rebirth for a section of the game. Like, they'd put Rebirth Ring on for the You Are Not Alone section, which we'll get to in a couple of hours. Um, I wanted to route that back in because I just like it more. And I was talking to Mythic Dawn, and I'm like, well, what if Zidane equips Rebirth? And then he was like, well, then, uh, if you equip Rebirth on Zidane, then Freya needs to equip Minerva's Plate and Venetia Shield and this and that to get this stat so that you can one-shot and do... So like, just... To hit me with all this knowledge like instantly as well it was very very like yeah working knowledge of the game is, is something that will always always uh impress me with speedrunners because i i'm very much just a like i just do what other people do and try and or like i take what other people have sort of set up and, and try and do it better i don't try and like improve on their routes or anything i well, just try and play it as best i can Let's pass that along to easily. I want to say that was a beautiful recovery on him, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Hundred percent. That was killer. That's some scary stuff. Kept us cool. Got out of there. Nice work. We survived. Yeah, Hilgegaard uh, is a secret run killer, man, because he's mm -hmm. got the the stopping power just to shut you down real quick. There's um desert boots as well that you sent in that shop again. It's sort sort of like how how you buy bandana purely for Marcus to survive Blazara. Desert boots uh, give you better earth resistance. So you yeah, yeah you very much uh, you you sent the desert boots for the express purpose of of Ico being able to survive uh, earthquake. 
I, I doesn't always work. Do. For Ico it does. For Dagger it, it does. Uh, Right, yeah, believe, sorry, yes, yes. I believe on sorry, Dagger I'm... they use the gold choker in HD. In um, HD it's... they do, they, they take the gold choker because it, it pretty much makes red dragons a, a pushover. They also, I believe... Do encounter BMV. Nice. HD special. Yeah. That's Ooh. rare. That's rare. Everybody got, a, everybody got a forest encounter. Yeah, I think I think people got two, right? There's, there's such, a, such a killer meme that's like... PlayStation runners getting a four encounter Aoife tree and it's like the guy on the podium like the Olympic podium like cheering and popping off and then it's like HD runners getting a four encounter Aoife and it's this guy like depressed in the rain <laughs> like crying or something <laughs> Oof. Made it. I think I, I love the uh, the suplex from six the best Oh, yeah. Just upside yep. down in the train, one smiling, one just oh, friendly. That's crazy. There's a, um, there's a, uh, I, I can't remember the name of the company. Uh, they, they do like little dioramas of like old games and stuff. I bought one for my friend, a little Chrono Trigger one, because it's like one of his favorite games. Um, but they, they have one for Final Fantasy VI, and it's the train suplex in a little like 3D pixel art diorama. It's awesome. That sounds cool. It's it's so cool, like even casually, that's just such a staple of, of Final Fantasy VI. Alright, so here we got Easily uh, going into main Menain Sari. Uh, we, I don't think we touched on it too much, but we do somewhat of a, an ATE manipulation here to get people where we want them to. We did that earlier in Dally by going to the farm in the bar. We got Dagger to the item shop. But we're going to uh, essentially slyly um, be able to allow... Uh, the early pickup of Dagger to hit the Eidolon wall uh, um, so we don't have to talk quick. to a bunch of people. What color fish do you guys want? Red or green? Green. green. Well, no, I mean red. Too late. <laughs> I realized I've, Too late. I realized <laughs> I've picked green and that's a Tombri color. I cannot support Tombri or Mog. And in the CSR, you actually skip this so you get no fish, which is very interesting. Yeah. You get no Man. fish in the CSR? Yeah, because yeah. this this doesn't exist, old. so it Dude. it never cues to pick the. I fish. think the uh, the Final Fantasy IX cutscene remover does away with a lot of like select option one. It just because you're mashing anyway, it just sort of skips it. Yeah, yeah um, which is reasonable. About that man. Oh, get the no no oglops. Oh, he could have got the oglop at the end. <laughs> oh, picking up the there we go magic tag. That's the big one. Magic tag uh, is is the the big one that uh, so keeper just picked up there. So. There's a pivotal, pivotal, pivotal boss, uh, Soul Cage, uh, in the Aoife Tree section, which uh, Keeper is looking out to uh, wistfully now. Uh, that boss gives a bunch of AP, and it's your it's your iconic uh, elixir to kill um, boss, like zombie I, boss. I but hate... if uh, if Sedane gets uh, zombied in an earlier fight, he doesn't get the AP from it, and you just end your run. I hate to, to, to bear this down on you, but you have a 100% steel chance of magic tag from both the zombie and Draco. Yeah, but steals are slow, and this is a speedrun, so... Yeah, but every time you're stealing, you're not attacking with Sedan. Exactly. Mm. See? Me and Brutal's... You know what? I'm really impressed with mine and Brutal's functional knowledge of this game. <laughs> I'm working on it. I was talking <laughs> you, to Mythic Dawn one time. <laughs> you also might get a magic tag drop. <laughs> yeah, the zombies yeah, have yeah, yeah. on their you drop can, um, table. Yeah, you could have the, the, the magic tag dropped by the enemies. But yeah, picking it up, picking up the magic tag there just basically guarantees your run won't die when you um when you kill it's, that. It's uh, definitely a bit more of a PSX thing to be honest. You can kind of get away with it a little bit more liberally on on PC. Yeah. You're less likely to find the Draco zombie, which means you're less likely to have them hit Sedan specifically with um, zombie breath. There's this nice thing called auto save. Yeah, and this is an awesome thing called auto save. I think the the pinion that he gives you is routed into the gill route as well. But the magic tag and the, the ether is nice. Because at this point we don't sell ethers anymore unless we're really skinned. Yeah, and we actually also have the option here of uh, either picking up the pinion in Conde Petit or getting the one right behind Sedane's head here on Easily screen. Um, alternatively, since he did not get Oak Staff, he's chilling with, I think, 3k more gill than he needs. So he has the luxury of just not picking up a few of the uh, standard routed items. 
Yeah, so the oak staff, I, uh, in my experience in testing, um, I, I think I don't, I don't. It, it doesn't actually save you time, especially on PC, just because of the amount of time it takes for you to operate the menu. Oh, you under there. damage. Exactly. It's Bizarre. Yeah. But if you use okay. Bizarre, you have the chance to low roll. So yeah. it, it is better overall, but it's, it's more it's of not, a mitigation thing. Yeah. It's not super clear cut. It's one of those things that you can you can route in should you want to. Cost you a little bit of money, cost you a little bit of time, earns you back a tiny bit of time and, and, re and removes a little bit of variance. So here on uh, Pete's screen, we saw him drop off the chocobo uh, instead of stepping the rest of the way. Uh, we will be coming back, and since the chocobo stays in put until you call him at any of the other train or footsteps tracks, um, it's going to stay there for later. So it makes it a little bit easier when we need to go back to Black Mage Village. Um, as we said, can't stutter step out of friendly encounters. Just got Pete to go in, into Hilgagars now and then we'll be wrapped up. So the other little minor strategy that you can apply is that if you get a really, really, really good ATB on Sedan, you can um, chance taking a preemptive attack with him. There are two things you can do with this. You can either go for an attack and you can mitigate a cast later and guarantee saving time. Sans misses, of course. Or you can use that opportunity to go for a Lucky Sevens attempt, um, which again is a one in four chance of actually prevailing. If it doesn't roll anything other than quad sevens, you pretty much just lose time, unfortunately. Um, but I've seen it hit, man. I've seen it hit. It's pretty unlikely, but it, it's pretty, it's pretty beefy if it gets them. You also additionally have the option of routing in a uh, counter there. Um, oh, so if you do get that preempt, then that and terrible. that counter, we get that nice two-turn hill, you guys. That sounds absolutely horrendous. <laughs> All right, so easily is at the infamous Aoife tree. Uh, on PSX, you're looking at what six to ten encounters. Um, oh, you get really you're lucky. lucky. You can get down to like four. <laughs> <laughs> um, on PC, like you could get zero. That's what's yeah. so crazy about it. Again, it's 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 that meme, you know, PSX runners getting a four encounter Aoife tree, cheering and popping off. PC runners getting a foreign counter E for their sad, crying, angry, rage, hate, uninstallation. And so, the Death. the bad thing about getting <laughs> encounters here for uh, <laughs> for HD is we're really hoping not to be a multiple of five because most likely, more often than not, Soul Cage is going to cast level five Death if given a chance. And wouldn't you know it? Zidane's going to be the most likely to hit 15 if we do take any encounter at all. Um, so no encounters is great. Otherwise, we have to kind of finesse our way around uh, reviving Zidane in that fight or um, getting him beefier than he needs to be. So you make 15 You've also got a, even uh, a single scraper, is that right? Yeah, you take anything, we're going to be 15. Uh, luckily, we never take these mushroom fights. Um, I got a map list. Don't, don't worry, guys. <laughs> Aglop has been acquired. Nice. That stew is going to taste amazing. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to get the green fish too. Um, Stroper, you can throw a soft on, and it becomes too soft to live. Uh, if we get a Draco zombie later on, you can just easily throw a Phoenix down, you can cast live. If you have an extra elixir you really don't want to have, you can throw an elixir. Yeah. We Elixirs are a little bit more of a dicey roll, but they guarantee it kills it. It's the fastest way to dispatch it, um, but obviously elixirs are quite a valuable resource. So quick menu there from Pete, setting everyone up for this fight. Once again, we're putting um, Desert Boots on Ico so that she can survive Earthquake if it's necessary, giving Zidane the necessary gear to 
absolutely wail on this boss. And also uh, giving Vivi some new gear that we got from Black Mage Village, so now his damage is increased quite a lot. Yeah, yes, make sure you have those magician shoes on. Yep. Take care of that earth shape with a nice big cure all. Checking for crits here. So it's really important that if Sedan crits here, you don't want to cast with Vivi. Um, Hilgegaard has is another one of the bosses where when his HP drops below 50%, he'll do something in particular. It's not, uh, it is just Kiraga. It does slow you down quite a lot and you don't really want to trigger it early. So if you hit a crit, you actually want to hold off on casting on this turn and then wait until the following turn before leading with Vivi into Zidane followed up. And then the following turn after that, you should be able to kill with Zidane. If not, follow up with further Vivi. Saves quite a good bit of time, but you need to be careful because if you do cast with Vivi, you're going to see that Kiraga and you're going to lose an extra turn. I think we easily got away with one encounter. Well, that's so crazy, man. So easily not having the magic tag is pretty scary because <laughs> there is a full striker zombie. Did I miss this? I'm oh, sorry, I, was, I had some... Are you laughing because you've already said this exact same thing? Where nah, does the auto just... put you? The auto is going to put you, I believe, on this leaf. Before or after the zombies? Ooh. For the sure. zombies. Before the zombies? Yeah, because it's per screen. Yep. So, before the zombies, it makes sense. Yeah, that's what I was going to guess, but I was kind of hoping. But yeah, basically, if he does get uh, if he does get zombied, um, it's pretty bad. I mean, it, it means that he's gonna have to do another fight again and hope that he doesn't get zombied again. Or yeah, it's just one of those. It's very unlikely. The boss, the the driver like, yeah. has to pick it from a, a pool of like four moves. Then it has to and then four it targets. Then it yeah. has to hit. Yeah, it's 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 slip. Then he has to not get a magic tag drop. And if Pretty it's preemptive enough, you can actually do the steal. Back it up. There's a number of things that you can do to mitigate it, fortunately. So these uh, these zombies, you can either get two or three of them, which does need to be considered an AP routing because there is a two AP difference in two zombies and three zombies. So you can't rely on getting three zombies. Well, I couldn't steal anything. My goodness. <laughs> um, so yeah, you do need to consider that an AP routing. And, uh, and also, I mean battle routing because as you saw they they uh, easily cast uh cura with Ico on the enemies because they're zombies healing damage kills them oh magic tag drop we're fine uh cure with dagger and fira with vivi if you get the two zombies fira and cura will kill and you don't need the um garnet cure i but... think you can also low roll there still though yeah it's not going it's, it's, it's a, you 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 input it uh third so that if it does kill then the cure won't come out garnet's cure won't come out but if it if it's needed, then it, it'll happen. Um, but yeah, that's just a just a, a little piece of info, I guess. Yeah, uh, I think for Falx route, it assumes the lower amount when AP. So three zombies is actually um, every route should nice be sight. considering the the low roll. Yeah. Um, same with uh, there's a later sort of misted on rush later on in disc two. Uh, which is like 7 to 10 AP, you have to assume you'll get 7. Um, so I actually had an interesting discussion with um, one of the French runners the other day. They've been working on a Dis 3 Tantarian route. and um, Is this Swiss Tantarian or Swed? Uh, it's Mashi. Oh, oh, awesome. Yeah, and uh, he's been putting a lot of work into it and he's recently found a new strategy to kill Tantarian a little bit quicker. Um, but the gill route is horrendously tight. You have to be within 20 gill. Whoa. or something like that and um, you absolutely cannot fail a Mr. on skip <laughs> or else the whole thing breaks oh no <laughs> can you imagine your route hinging on God. Mr. on skip <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later but it's a very tricky skip yeah. and it's basically like if Steiner takes a fraction of a step forward too far you get a fight if he you know is in the right spot you hold left and you'll skip a story trigger and I cannot, I actually can't, without turbo at least, I cannot imagine my run hinging on that. I would, I'd uninstall the game. Snap my discs. Yeah. Whoa. 
<laughs> not really. This seems <laughs> seem like a cool route there. All right, so we have Keeper starting his Efa walk and easily finishing up Efa with a nice soul cage. Yep, so Soul Cage is the, the token undead boss fight of the run. Um, don't, it's, apparently he's really weak to fire. But uh, it's up <laughs> to you if you want to try and explore that. Um, so the, what we, the, in this room here that you're witnessing on Easy's screen, there is actually an elixir that we just saw him pick up. Um, that elixir is going to be used to defeat the boss. Um, unless, unless Iko's ATV is really good. If Iko's ATV yeah. is really good, you can actually have her cast life. Um, casting life actually itself is a little bit slower. It loses a few seconds. Is it twenty percent hit rate or twenty percent miss rate? Twenty percent miss rate. No, miss it's rate. a ten percent okay. miss rate. Ten, okay. I thought it was eighty percent um, chance. But yeah, hit. Eli while elixir is guaranteed, um, life unfortunately just isn't. Um, and as brutal said, the cast is slower. Yeah. So you you take a bit of a it, it, you're saving an elixir. You if if Ico's ATP is good, you are you're spending the life. You're using life because keeping the elixir is worth keeping in this situation you only really want to use it so right here dead on that was some really good reactions and you grab with Zidane and, ah, it's perfect grabbing with Zidane here in case it misses yep no dice and perfect. ATB waiting not committing to the elixir in case there is a um, something that goes wrong but no literally uh, just about the best fight you could ask for mm -hmm. really good soul cage knows shockwave that is, yeah, he does, hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember uh, Chikochi, my sister, did a, uh, a randomizer of nine and got stuck at Prison Cage for so long because not only did it have Grand Cross, it also had Neutron Ring. What? Yeah. That's oh, sorry, nuts. Uh, Plant Brain, Plant Brain, okay. not, uh, not Prison Cage. Well, still pretty um, nuts. But yeah, it had Grand <laughs> Cross and Neutron Ring poor woman her first randomizer of like anything ever and just got two final boss moves on the first like real boss so funny so here on keeper screen we'll see the dive down uh onto the lower efa some clicks uh this is the second most likely place you will use clicking if you do run uh, and you do click um as movement through efa isn't as intuitive as it would look um, so normally, how you'd orient yourself, uh, let's take Pete's screen for example, um, you would just pay attention to how Zidane's oriented. So that staircase down might look like a down right, but Zidane's oriented also to kind of an oblique, so you'd actually do a down kind of movement, um, which just makes things not as intuitive for, for movement as they would be. And then we also have the, uh, the curse of only eight cardinal directions. There's a really bad one in Olvert, which we'll cover um, when we get there, but it's just, it's so deceptively like, if you hold up, you'll walk like way upright. Um, the screen with the, the four little orbs that you have to interact with and the two chests, it's the absolute worst for it. Um, it gets every um, beginner runner, absolutely trolls the hell out of them. So easily returning to Maiden Sari, we have Pete sleeping in Maiden Sari, so maybe they'll do a nice little uh, high five on the way. Oh, easily. <laughs> I was moving my notes, so I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> Dagger in the same place. Even Zidane in the same place. Uh, Keeper got a trance <laughs> yeah. to uh, the zombies. You know what? It's technically doing something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's doing work. So normally this later game of a trance, we're hoping to make it all the way to Amrant, and if so, all the way to Ark. Um, if we do on Amrant, we can end that fight just slightly faster. Unfortunately, Amrant's another one of those fights, kind of like Hilgagar's, where uh, you can't really get faster of an encounter. It's more of just mitigating it being a slow fight. Yeah, he's, he puts himself... In, it's, it's sort of the only fight with, like, position-based combat. He'll he'll jump around to various parts of the screen, and uh, in certain positions, if you attack him, it'll just whiff. With Trance, though, because I believe with Trance, you can't miss at all. So he'll be able to be attacked in those positions. You can end the fight way, way quicker. I think it takes away the option for Zidane to miss, 
but I don't think it takes away the option for the enemy to evade or something like right, that. Right, okay. Hang on, what? It's just a like a weird coding quirk, I'm assuming. Then. Yeah. yeah well, okay. so you, you have two systems. When someone's looking to hit a single target um, when it's physical, it's both the ability of the attacker to hit as well as the um, defender to evade. So that's why we have the two separate animations of just a whiff miss and also a miss oh. um, on a character where they look like they're dodging. Brain expansion. It's occurring. <laughs> um, you, you, well, only your party members have the evasion animation. Right, and, yeah. Uh, but that's I, usually that's the if they're animation. not ready, I believe, or if they are ready. Um, but no, Amaran, while he's evading, he can still be hit, but only with accuracy plus or trance. Also, I've got to say it. It's not life a tree. It's E for tree. It is a capital I at the start. Yeah, it's a proper I, noun. It does not start with a lowercase l. It is not lifer. Too many people say lifer. It is life. Live it alone. <laughs> Let's have this. <laughs> yeah, probably the biggest like aha moment was when I heard E for tree. I'm like, what? Excuse me? Hello? Because it's a, it's a place. It starts with a capital letter. Yeah, tree of life. Life, a tree. <laughs> Except it's about unlife. <laughs> Alright, so we got Keep BK going into Soul Cage fight as well. Let's see if he gets a fight as good as my team's representative easily got all the gear that he needs for it so there we go we got a lovely amaranth starting up here on easily screen yep and pete has the boss of all well, ether tree encounters okay come on on that amaranth i believe always goes oh might not even get a sneaky turn in here like oh, counter, counter, though, that's nice. really gonna help Counter. Okay. That's one. Really. So, we're looking for uh, we're looking for five hits essentially here, unless we crit, yeah. which then four. Um, trans can help us out a little bit with that. Uh, but to do enough before we really need to heal, unless we heal early, uh, we need to get at least one counter attack. It's a zero Efa. Nice. Very nice. Nice, beat. dude. Yeah, it looks like Keeper got through. Uh, yeah, Soul Keep, Keeper's fight wasn't easily. quite as instant ATBs as um, as easily, but still exactly what it needed to be. With um, is that another oh my counter? Goodness. My goodness! Oh my goodness! Um, easily, he's already dead. With uh, with uh, auto haste routes that do fight that optional Tantarian boss, basically Amaranth, the, the sort of rule of thumb is he gets two turns for your one. You can actually keep up with him when you have um. When you have auto haste and you you're like a on a one to one, uh, but then you do need to have uh, the correct AP routing to have MP attack learned already, which is usually only an option when um, when Zidane's at level eighteen, because you also need the stones to equip it all. Gotta get the stones. Yeah, Pete is um Pete is also just shredding this uh time deficit here. Um with the zero encounter ether as well, that's gonna really do well to to bring that little blue bar you see on your screen closer to the pink one. Gotta connect the fish. What? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta connect the fish on the graph. Come on, man. <laughs> Which relay is this? Oh, for you? right, right. I see. It's like shaped like. Okay, all right. Keep it. Don't gain or lose any time. Okay. <laughs> you need to be the <laughs> central, the central point of the fish. You gotta hand off a perfectly average split. Right, keep it. <laughs> I'm cheap. Let's see some time save. <laughs> That's right. We're gonna cheat. Alright, so Dagger dead here on Pete's screen is going to be a little extra experience. Yep. Uh, 
Oh, you just hit 14 there, so you might... Yeah, you'll probably still be good. Did you say 14? I thought that was 13. It was 13, but you saw the level up, and it went by so oh, fast. Okay. You I thought it that was 14. Yep, yep, yep. okay. I hope Usually not, because on, uh, at level on, 12, you're not 6, <laughs> 17. On PlayStation, um... I guess just because mashing isn't as fast, usually. I don't think he hit 16 here. Maybe, though, because Dagger was dead for the invasion fights. Ooh. So additionally, what you could do is you can knock everyone off for Draco Zombie. And if you're that close, you can hop right over 15 and get to 16. So Pete yeah. as well, rather than using an elixir as a backup there, life killed, but he had a nice backup where uh, he put a phoenix down on the Draco zombie, which for undead enemies will drop them to, it'll either, it has a, I believe, 10% chance to kill. If it doesn't kill them and it still connects, then it will drop them to 1 HP, and he sent in a VV attack just in case as a backup. Um, saves an elixir, but is slower, of course, because you've got an uh, item and an attack rather than just an item. Yeah, it has equal odds to... Um set the enemy's HP, or if they're undead, at 0 through 9, I believe. Rather than um, Final Fantasy X, I think Phoenix Downs on undead enemies in Final Fantasy X just deal a chunk of damage. I don't think they actually, like, kill or do anything cool, it just, like, deals damage. Yeah, I think you need... Don't they have, like, Mega Phoenix Downs or something like What is it? Mega? I don't even know. Yeah, there, there's one boss. There's one boss that you... The, they're, you know, the iconic zombie boss of Final Fantasy X. I believe it's, like, two Phoenix Downs that you use to kill it. Oh, okay. And the final boss as well you use a Phoenix Down on, which is cool. Um, but that's a later game. So, Keeper... Right after this? Let me check the schedule. Keeper getting gifted a uh, elixir as well as an ex another exploder, uh, which is actually kind of cool for our route because we can have Amaranth throw it to deal additional damage later on. Yep, Amaranth's kind of like your ninja type. Um, he's like a ninja slash monk. Uh, if we're comparing him to like uh, older games heal. or older games, so he's we got the throw okay. function and he's got the uh, he's got claws. He fights with claws. I do love that uh, every every Final Fantasy has its essential iconic undead boss, and if uh, if it's Final Fantasy VIII, you have two of them. You so see how long I had to wait to see if he had a turn? That's crazy, yeah, man. That was absolutely good crazy, check. Yeah. Good check. You gotta wait a yeah. long time, man. So Soul Cage here, what Pete's referencing is, um, you'll see it some other times, but the enemy queuing up an attack, it could just essentially pause, and you can queue something up and not happen, and then suddenly it looks like they get a free turn. Uh, that's essentially what usually happens with Soul Cage. That's why you would usually wait if you're worried about level 5 death. In this case, um, Pete's level 15 on Zidane. Uh, but also that Fire is a good example of just a non-level 5 death kind of thing that could uh, nerf your run, because you really need the AP out of this encounter. Um, Soul Cage drop an 11, plus that ability up on Zidane's 22. That's just gonna slide right into finishing off the majority of his uh, early game gear, getting us Flea and a few other things. I remember one time I uh, tuned into a Mutsuki stream, and he was like sitting on the uh, the results screen, the XP screen or whatever, and I was like, what's he doing? What's it, what, why, why is he sitting on the results screen? He's losing time. And then I realized that it was the Soul Cage results screen, and Zidane was dead. And he was just sat there like, all right, guys, you know, whatever, like, you know, wasn't meant to be today, <laughs> like doing his whole like spiel for <laughs> that you do when you're like closing out your stream. So as long as you don't um, take that on PC, you could just reload. It doesn't save yeah. until you're out and done with that. Is that a dead amaranth for Keeper? No, not quite. Mm -hmm. He's just gone down. Oh. Oh, a, whoops, a little I, bit longer uh, of a, 
the fight, but ended pretty good. No counterattacks. I have... Because I'm watching through, like, a couple VLC media player windows. I, I didn't realize that I'd accidentally uh, minimized Keeper's one. So I was a bit delayed. All right, I'm back down. Okay. <laughs> it was a nice try, uh, easily. <laughs> what I was gonna, I was gonna him? call him irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, but it wouldn't fit. And he tried it a few times. It wasn't working. He just deleted it. Went no. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna force those letters in there. <laughs> it was the only character I planned to rename or run. Optimized Ico there, but quick fix at least. So easily done, picked up the uh, red-headed stepchild of F9 and head him back to the Aoife tree to finish out disc two, or I mean chapter two. Section <laughs> two. Section two. F9 rebirth is almost over. UHD runners usually get encounters on the second Aoife? If you're unlucky. <laughs> Rarely. I had one in PB the other, in the other day. Mm. Tis a shame. <laughs> a big shame. Encounters in my PC version? <laughs> Get out of here! Get out of here! <laughs> Encounters in my PC version? I bet Namora did this. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Another high five between, or actually a high five between Tom Barry and M Moogle now. Right in uh, Iko's house. So essentially what's happening here in the story, for those not familiar, um, we killed the big bad thing that was in the tree hoping of baiting Kuja out uh, so that we can you know take him down a peg um, so that's why we have turned here to the Aoife tree hoping to find Kuja or essentially just wait uh, to fi figure things out figure out what's going on since um, we know now that he is behind all of the Queen Brawn attacks final Amarin fight coming up so before the run Pete actually promised me that if at any point during his Amarin fight his HP ended in 7s he's like Riddles I promise I'll go for lucky 7s and well, Pete I, isn't <laughs> I never said such a thing <laughs> 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 gonna have to Nip that in the bud right away. <laughs> just, just cut that one off like, nope. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you, you, you can actually go for sevens on Amarin if he sets you up, but it's, it's, it's RNG dependent. He has to hit you for the right rolls at the right time and whatnot. The lineup does exist. I don't know what it looks like on HD though, because your, H, your half value is a little bit different to what I'm used to. I'm sure it exists, though. So. I don't know if you can do it from one touch. But it's not a very, it, ultimately, it's not a very good idea. It's always a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no it's, count, not, it's not terrible, no. as long as you average uh, a little over 2K for all your other hits, but it's not likely. Okay, that's two on Amaranth. Can we avoid the counter? Ugh, no. These counter attacks really, really sting. But we're not out yet. Getting this attack after he comes in here. It's going to give us an opportunity for a counter. If we get a counter on this hit, we can actually push lethal. That's three. Amaranth's going to get a turn here. No counter. You get one more chance for a counter. 
No counter. So he's going to have to heal up. And then go for turns 4 and 5 in a moment. He will be able to attack in Amaranth's first position away, though. Oh, beautiful. Oh, there is the counter. There is the counter. Yeah, beautiful the miss counter. from Mr. Lance. One of the single most annoying things in the entire run to me is the fact that Zidane's low roll is 1,472, and these have 1,473 HP. I mean, at least you didn't get put to sleep. I think it's like a give and take right. situation there. Oh, I thought that life missed as One well HP. for a second. <laughs> um, so easily taken on the three Mystodon encounters here that are forced upon you. Uh, with the possibility of a fourth, and that's another nice RNG dependent kind of system. Um, but they can cast Mist, which has a chance of sleeping your party. Uh, and extending that fight out pretty pretty well. Uh, and then also, as easily pointed out, uh, after the, f the first fight, until you level up Zidane again, he can low roll one under the HP value of the Mysterians. There was a uh, an excellent race between a bunch of uh, PlayStation runners, and uh, I nearly had to bow out early in disc three because uh, I think Brutals was commentating at the time. You'll probably remember this. Um, I almost had to bow out early because in the very last fight, Steiner and Beatrix got put to sleep, and I survived on one HP and managed to uh, to bring it back. That was tremendous. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of my most popular clips. <laughs> oh, really? Look at that. So, yeah. You're welcome. Uh, I'll be expecting my royalties. <laughs> um, my brutal stonks. I'll pay you in brutal bits, mate. Actually, that's worth more than money. <laughs> to me. Alright, so easily going down the trunk, we're going to hit this first one, and usually it de it's determined if we're going to get the second one, depending how far down we can get. He's going. It looks like... He's going. Wow. This is not, this is not like it. Ah, oh, there's Ralph. This is not a normal screen, by the way. Zidane almost has to like gain momentum as he's running down. You're not just, it, it looks the same as his like running animation, but like if you actually have your hands on the controller, it feels horrible. Um, yeah, you're like gaining momentum as he's running. It's really strange. Um, yeah, it's not a normal run. You'll see it. You'll see it. As he's fading in from the screen, you'll see he, like, needs to gain his speed as he's running, whereas, like, through normal dungeon movement, you, you don't... It's also really funny because ah, really it doesn't it. matter which direction you run, um, whether it's down or left on that screen, it runs the same. What if you run right? Well, you'd probably go back, right? <laughs> there's, a nice, there's a nice save Moogle to meet you there, Brutals. No idea. I actually don't know. I've never tried it. I'm never brave enough. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> I've actually tried it either. Uh, is it Nazna? One of the Moogles is up there. So we get the ever useful Aquamarine now to cast Leviathan. Uh, we're totally going to use that a lot, right? You do yeah, actually so use Leviathan it. actually pivotal uh, to the run. Um, there was a lot of older routes, uh, mostly by the uh, West Indies runners, that uh, didn't util utilize uh, Leviathan before. But um, yeah, Leviathan found to be as important to the Final Fantasy IX speedrun as uh, Leviathan is in Final Fantasy VIII. Which is very as useful, in, isn't it? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Aquamarine actually does have a use. Maybe not yeah, in it, HD, actually. It's no, not, not used as, at all in HD. Not in HD, yeah. Not at all? You give it to Steiner? Nope. What, is, um, what does it give? It's used for Steiner and Valley of Pure, but what does it give him again? HP 10. Yeah, that'll, yeah, that's the one. I think that's it. You get it I off of uh, Chainmail on HD. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, that'll yeah, do it. Yeah, you do buy it. an extra one, I think. Yes, there is an extra um, Chainmail that's purchased, which I learned the hard way. Um setting up some some notes and whatnot hmm. which is used later to craft the gold choker as well a synth rather the gold choker in hd is it an alternate synth option oh no i'm i'm sorry i'm thinking am i thinking chain plate 
Uh, no, Chain Plate goes on to them. There is a second gold choke. Uh, sorry, a second um, chain plate that you buy in HD. I'm fairly confident that it goes into a Even gold though, choker. Not a chain. Oh. No, the gold uh -huh. choker is. It consists of a Freya's hat. One of Freya's hats. I think. You know what? We have. We have a the whole internet in front of us. <laughs> yeah, funny, gold man. choker synth FF9. Ah, oh, linen curus. That's oh. so. That's why you have the second chain plate to equip onto Freya to free up the linen curus to be used. Did I say hat? I meant chest. Nice. That's what I meant. <laughs> A little swoosh. I never even saw it coming. So uh, easily heading into this three. Got what, like 15 minutes still cards, something like that? 16 minutes, Mel. Oh, an extra no, minute? Actually, actually, it's 16 minutes. This, this shows how much you pay attention to my splits, because <laughs> this split for me is called 16 minutes of black. It's, it's of basically black. 16 minutes until you get released from Tots. Yeah, so it's um, a lot of dialogue here. Um, the other runners going through what uh, they need to I think excuse now me, I just need um, what to... we've uh, we've already seen from, from Easley I think now would be a great uh, time to explain cards and how they work they don't <laughs> <laughs> so, so we removed them who, who wants to do the honors I, I was about to and then I realised I don't want to I mean, you can explain it, and I'll explain how the the number rolls work. Yeah, you, you can explain it, and then we can tell you how it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's part of the course for this for this commentary <laughs> session. Hey, um, so basically, you uh, if you're familiar with, for example, Triple Triad from Final Fantasy VIII, you know, you play your cards and they they fight each other. In FF9, it's a larger board of play. I think it's a five by five grid, uh, and there's like some sort of unusable spots so you can't put cards down in certain sections uh, basically when you do put a card down it's got an arrow that points to what it will attack if there is an arrow pointing back at that card which is up down left right and diagonals as well um, so if you put a card with an arrow pointing left against a card with an arrow pointing right they will fight each other uh, those that there's a magic and power stat on each card as well as a magic defense and physical defense stat on each card uh, they will clash together and the game will flip a coin effectively um, that coin being more favorable for the higher number but not necessarily guaranteed and if you have more uh, number than the card that you're fighting you take over their card the best thing to do is to put an arrow against something that doesn't have an arrow pointing back at you because then you just win the fight by default but there are some nasty cards that are out there it is always better to go second and on uh hd specifically because there's just less encounters therefore less card drops you usually have pretty shocking cards um there is an option to get cards from dr tot but it's time loss and you could lose the cards so yeah we'll yeah, see so uh We'll Card what... quality is worse in HD, but did you talk about the AI? Sorry, I'm not sure if you did. Um, not anything too specific. So that in, on HD is not as smart as the AI. Oh, on that's PSX. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It'll I, make I uh, the the AI on PSX will always make a quote unquote good move, but the HD one sometimes will like throw away a win for a battle for no reason. Like, yeah, just, it doesn't always make the best move. But, yeah, your cards are worse, so it's a trade-off. I wonder if it's going for a good card or something like that on the code unit. I just always so, notice that the, the AI, it, it, across both versions, tries to prioritize battles wherever it can. So like, as, as Brutal's mentioned before, you are forced to win two of these card games. 
The third one, where you get to the finals, you're not forced to win, but you're still forced to play. The reason that you want to win and why cards are so frustratingly important, um, even if you don't lose any matches aside from the last one, the reason that you want to win that last one is you get a rebirth ring, which allows you to, it boosts your holy damage and also gives you access to auto life on its equipped party member, which is just safety because there are some absolute clunker bosses coming up towards the end of the game. So you really, really want that, uh, that rebirth ring. Technically, no rebirth is faster because the menus are shorter. Um, but it's just the safety that you're looking for, especially in a game like this. Yeah. Um, so to get a little more technical on cards, um, when you go up against... If we don't battle, you have the option of getting, I think, eight, up to eight cards you can capture all around you, right? But if you battle and you win that card, anything it's touching, you can capture. So you can theoretically win the entire board yes, if you play right I in the middle. Yes, I did forget to mention that. Um, it's it's so, sort of like chains out to the other cards. If you yeah. Win. It gives you what we call a battling back end. Um, so if the reverse side of it, if uh, the AI takes, say, two cards, and you only can take one card back, right? You're obviously netting a minus one loss. So there becomes some situations where you have to battle back in. Um, in those situations, really the, the easy thing visually to look at is uh, your card has one power, you want to go up against a zero power. If you have two, you can go up against one. You normally don't have a three at this point. Um, and then actually statistically how it works, if a zero is going against a zero, the defender is more likely to win by 4%. It's a 54% chance that the defender wins, which is gets really odd. Uh, if a one versus a one goes up to, I think, almost close to 49%, um, is how it works. But the best battle you can take is a one versus a zero, which is an 80% chance to win, um, just because how it's calculated. So the first number and the letter determines um, what defense you're going to attack on the other card. Uh, so um, M is for magic, uh, P is for physical, uh, X is either, and then A is any of the numbers on the card. So if you have an A, then you'll go up against their weakest number. In uh, X, it will go either the first of the second numbers after the letter, which is physical, or the magical defense. Um, and then A, it could even go against the power, which is a pretty crazy idea. Um, from there, it generates off of hexadecimal, so it takes the hexadecimal range uh, since cards go from um, 0 to F, uh, which is 16 options, and then essentially it times that by 16. Um, it takes that, and then it determines another number, um, and then based off of that other number, it minuses. So you can end up having, after that, netted only one. <laughs> essentially value, and if someone has a zero, they can net like 16 if they get a really good roll, um, which always gives you the option of of losing, even if you go an F versus a zero, which is pretty pretty crazy. Um, but it, it gets pretty, pretty complicated on it, but the easy thing to just look at is, okay, my one physical is going against a zero magic. I have a really, excuse me, really good chance of winning. And that's where it kind of gets like, oh, my one loss versus zero, that was very unlucky. Yeah, um, the, the second to try opponent it. has some nasty cards as well. Archbishop something or other is a nasty opponent. Um, the the only sort of like the only I, I guess like in, in the context of the speed run, you basically just want to avoid fighting. Um, you just want to play arrows against no arrows and hope that the enemy's cards aren't better than yours. The best sort of uh. I want to say um the only real like major thing to keep in mind that you consider in the speedrun is that sid the last opponent doesn't have any magic cards or magic defense so you want to save your magic cards for him yeah you particularly want to save ones with magic attack and physical defense yes. yeah those are your best ones 100 percent so um, the strategy that's unique to hd when it comes to trading cards is that between rounds if you so at, whenever you win or lose when you draw you stay in the fight but if you win or lose you're actually kicked out of the, uh, the tournament and what you can do is if you win you can actually exit the screen and re-enter it and it creates an autosave whereas on PSX if you want to do something like that 
you'd have to go all the way over to another screen and talk to a Moogle and do all these animations and it takes ages and it is not even rel close to being worth it. Yeah. Whereas on HD, you can actually get to say the final round. You can exit the screen and then go back in and try again. And if you were to lose, if you just reloaded your save with a soft reset or an alt F4, you can instantly try that fight again, which is um, a much easier way to have multiple attempts at winning the fight. That's true. Yeah. Uh, something else I didn't touch on is uh, if your card does win a battle, um, which you can't do if you just take a card, it has a 1 in 8 chance of leveling up one of its stats. Uh, so there's a little something the gang from taking battles, um, but still a lot easier to just win these cards by taking cards that are undefended. So the general idea is going to be... So you can first rule is go second <laughs> hope that yeah, you've been always. At, like told to go second um being able to play the final card just gives you the flexibility of making the final play the, but obviously the person who goes last has the last opportunity to flip cards it is that simple um there are some things that you can do to offset it for example if you're going first and the board so the board is also randomized if the board creates a scenario where there's like a corner where no other, uh, where it's completely boxed in, you can play a card in that corner, and then you will always have that tile. There are very, very small ways to play around it. There is another strategy which some people use called goblin strategies, where you basically just play a goblin card as close to the center as you can, with as many arrows pointing out, and you just kind of try and play around it, and try and have like a big take back uh, as late as possible, and not leave them any opportunity to get in. It's pretty risky, can pay off. Um, but ultimately, the, the general priority is uh, you are going to be playing cards in a way where your opponent has minimal opportunities to fight back in. Uh, like I mentioned before, the AI will try to prioritize taking fights. They seem to like it. They have a bunch of things they check for and ways they prioritize it, but fights is, is up there. So if you, were to take a, if you were to take a card or something like that, you want to take a card in a way that's hopefully potentially going to cover up other arrows that you've played on your card that they've played on other cards previously so on and so forth you want to force them to take cards directly just because every time they do it it saves maybe two seconds or so and if you think about how many fights could potentially happen in a card tournament it can add up it can go up to about nearly 20 seconds without too much trouble yeah. i gotta say as well it's so funny how much we can talk about cards when the duration that we've talked about cards is probably longer than the time you spend in the speedrun playing cards. <laughs> there's oh, so much, there's so much to it. And it's like a five minute segment, if that, unless you lose a bunch and get unlucky. But it's so funny. It's just such a, like, in terms of time spent, such a minor part of the speedrun, but it just has such an impact on the run. I think the funniest thing is thinking about how cards works. The, the, the complicated nature of the numbers and just canonically yeah. how does that work in the game like are they just chilling like rolling dice they roll a like d that? 255 yeah all right pete now into disc three we have all three of our runners in this three i think now would be a good time to sort of uh whip around do some little introductions you know talk about ourselves and whatnot for anyone who isn't familiar or is tuned in after. It's like a little halfway point, I guess. Anyone's there? To... Alright. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'm Eastley, I'm from the UK. Um, I'm still pretty new to running Nine, essentially. I've been running it for six months. Um, I'm, to be honest, having a pretty awful run so far, but that's okay. It's been fun. Um, and the other two in the run are definitely a lot more experienced and people I want to keep trying to beat. Yeah, all, all three of the runners are relatively new blood, which is awesome to see. Um, sorry, cut off mouth. <laughs> no, I don't even know why I'm going. I'm not even running right now. <laughs> Someone else can go. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm the Brutals. I, I, I played Final Fantasy Nine a few times. It's pretty fun, and I'm here to... He's being modest. This modest. is the Brutals! 
the yeah. world record holder for PlayStation, and I think currently third for for PC. What are you focusing yeah. on now, The Brutals? Um, FF7, mate. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know the answer to that. Don't talk to me like I don't know the answer. This is for the <laughs> people. He's doing FF7, Tyler. Didn't you know that? <sighs> Man, sorry for trying to run like a professional show. All right? <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'll just... I'll, I'll go beat it, all right? Like, I'll, I'll just leave. I won't, actually. Uh, I'm um, Pete. I started running on this version uh, about two years ago. I mostly run PlayStation now. Uh, yeah. And I also run all bosses. Yeah. Hey. That's a, that's a really like. You're the pioneer of Tetra Master plus all bosses percent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if Keeper's Keeper. gonna unmute here. Yeah, I'm but not sure we can is. talk for Keeper. Um, I I will do my best unless Keeper wants to jump in. Going once, going twice. Just say he's the Ace Attorney. That solves it all. Yeah. yeah. He is. Um, Keeper is Keeper is. Uh, uh, I've talked a lot about Keeper like during this too. Um, but Keeper was uh, is, is also like very um, new blood to the scene. I, I, again, I think started running this year. But um, anyone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and made really fast, really significant improvements. Um, the, 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 the sort of crux of these games is, is when people have to work full time, you just don't have that time to put in. Um, Keep is the, the ace attorney. He's got a big job, but still manages to be so, so good at this game. It's always like, it's really, really impressive to see. Um, and yeah, Keeper has definitely, uh, definitely impressed all of us. Um, yeah, Keeper's with... been leveling up really fast, man. Yeah. Um, and then for commentators, myself, I'm I'm Sire Television or Sire, Sire, I guess. Um, I also started running on this uh, this version of the game. This is the first ever speedrun uh, that I kind of tried to learn. I just wanted to get a uh, Excalibur two, and I was like, oh, I have to play the game fast. Well, I I, you know, I know I know who does that speedrunners. And then I joined the Discord, started learning the route, and just fell in love with the the idea of it. Um, mostly these days I focus on Final Fantasy VIII. Um, I didn't even think that I would learn any other speedruns truthfully, but I've done a couple of games. Um, mostly Final Fantasy VIII. I'm representing Team Choco in Final Fantasy VIII tomorrow. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's sort of my sh my spiel. Yep, we got easily just denied Tots cards, so you can actually get Tots cards if you throw away all your other cards. Uh, heading into cards now. Here we go, round one. Really quickly to the entrance. So the way that you win is by you you have more cards that are your colour on the board. Once everyone's played all their cards, everyone has five cards to play. So oh we got a nice selection to play with here. Make it for those fresh. um for those familiar with FF8, sort of speaking of, um the this is nothing like Tetramaster at all um even oh it's a four by four grid i said five by five earlier um so in tetra master you can very much manipulate where the opponent what cards the opponent will play and where they're going to play them nothing like that exists in in nine there are not really any there are no manipulations as far as i'm aware for nine whatsoever it's just a it's just a rock solid game in that way there, there aren't even really um there aren't any major skips on the playstation version at least Ah, oh, he had the arrow. Yeah, so it ends in a draw. Oh, I done there. Sent back in. Um, other commentators, though, we've got Captain of the Dorks, the specialist of the Pixel Remasters, and uh, PC with Major Skips world record holder. <laughs> with Major Skips. Okay, this is a big play. <laughs> oh, no way it lost that. Yeah, two That's adds crazy. to a zero. So, this right. is this is what I'm this is what I mean. It's a, a significantly stronger card can just lose. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't uh, like that. I think that was uh, a less than a ten percent chance there. And when they two um zero. When when so when you win a game or lose a game, or like the the winner basically of each card game gets to take an opponent's cards that they won during the match. So you just saw easily lose one of his cards. Fortunately, uh, not okay. one of the same goals. Uh, uh, the game Hello? Bugged. Oh dear. 
We'll let you load four cards. Oh, you can quit. Yeah. I, I have to quit there. Like, that was what kind of, the, no, yeah, I've yeah. never seen that in my life. Yeah, that was me that neither. Was That's that. cursed. Okay, well, oh. uh, run cursed, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. Oh fortunately, fortunately, you we... nearly click. Okay. You nearly click new game. I was going to scream. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just wanted to scare uh, you. <laughs> easily sent back to, uh, easily sent back to the first match as well. This is, unfortunately for Team Choco, a really, really good chance um, for Mog and Tom Brady to gain some ground. Uh, I just can't believe I've been first every game. <laughs> it's because you're very talented. Yeah, the game likes you. <laughs> oh. That's shocking. Okay. okay. Are you yeah, mm -hmm. good to take? It's worth it. Oh, and now on. we just need to pray. Oh. 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 <laughs> so wow. this would, in a in, in a in a PB attempt setting, this this would be it. It'd be over. I, I would have reset. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. No sane person would carry on this run, especially when you when you're becoming more of a competitive runner and pushing those more like competitive times. Uh, it's not the first time I've seen cards claim a relay run. For sure. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. There is one more What's... wave. Oh no, he took it. Wow. Oh yeah. my goodness. You know you about it. Is the draw is it a win? It's yeah, a draw. draw. It's a draw. Alright, well back in I guess. <sighs> Dang, this is not cool, man. Easily, I'm really trying not to do, like do bias commentary or anything. Um, can we please win? I'm trying, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can make some headwork here. No up left arrow. Okay. Oh, that's a lovely single in there. Uh, kind of awkward to play into, but you. Can yeah. Win. Big take. Nice. Oh. Wait, so you win? Oh, I can't do maths. There we go. Okay, okay. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I think drama's trying to be stirred in the chat. So yeah, some of the nastier cards coming out of the arch. Oh! Look at the size wow. of that one. The, bloody the... hell, that's, that's a bloody big one, that Oh my goodness. Jesus, she's beautiful! <laughs> Look at her! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Look at her. She's a beauty. <laughs> she's a gorgeous little Sheila. Look at her. Oh, okay, That's good. a great little abomination there. All right, so Easley's won the two necessary games. Result of the third game doesn't matter. Like, in the context of being able to progress through the rest of the game, it doesn't matter. If you lose, it will still let you out. It'll still let, uh, let easily out of card hell. Um. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just like, I hate this feeling in my chest. I really, uh. Yeah. You guys so know again cards we, um, when it fades out afterwards right i split cards personally when the card match itself ends I know, the third one. Visit and later. right oh oh here's the opportunity nice just put a card up there can't touch it free square easy peasy Turns going first yes into that's a... exactly what uh what brutals was describing before when the sort of stones box in a, a spot to keep a free card mm-hmm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, fighting back in. You're mine. 
All right. Yeah. Easy peasy. Nice. nice Bang. Good job. Good job. Easily. easily. Some time loss. Some time was spent on it. But easily has secured the rebirth ring. Whoa. Yeah, so not required at all, but as I was saying earlier, really nice. Um, gives us the ability to make quick work of some fights with the free revive. So now Easley's heading into the Alexandria attack sequence here. Um, the uselessly is making me uh, it hard to focus. It's crazy how one person can cause the chat to be put into emote mode. Like, I request she be timed out. Like, I just actually can't focus right now. So some of the uh, options here that are going to be presented on uh, Easley's screen. Uh, you're going to send some orders to some guards. I don't actually know what you're meant to do for these guards casually, but if you send the first order to the third guards and then just mash through the rest, um, you'll get angel earrings, which can be sold for 10k gil. So which is, yeah, it is the correct option anyway, even in casual. Real? So, that's so funny. That's very good. So the idea behind this is um, at the beginning of the game, uh, you get uh, also a little treat, um, but you're supposed to find all the guards and talk to them. And essentially, they give you kind of hints at it. Um, if you visit all of them, you get an item yeah. from the one guard climbing the stairs. So it's kind of playing back to the end of the game. Like, were you paying attention? Did you right. take the time to uh, to talk to all the Knights of Pluto? That um, so that that guard is actually worth something rather than just being a punish for uh, if you've accidentally left your turbo on <laughs> and you lose eight <laughs> seconds to that guard, <laughs> oh, which dear. I have done many times. So we're going to take some equipment from Beatrix here on Easley's nice. screen, pop it over to Steiner. Swift, um, now time to dodge the Mystodons. Yep, so there are two Mystodon skips here. The first one is similar to the guards where the enemy is actually present in the screen. And then the second one is, is lining up. So we're going to line up, unless Easley's doing the turbo strategy, we're going to line up Steiner's sword with a position on the fence, and then we're just going to hold left. Yeesh. Try so again. It's, right. it's a little yep. different than in uh, PlayStation. Um, there's yeah. a oh. different location. Oh. Right, Easy's getting caught on Beatrix, just trolling. There we go, nice work, dude. Perfect. So, um, the story trigger that you're skipping is uh, a Mr. Don jumping out from behind you. So, it was actually net time save um, over taking that fight. Even though it was uh, it needed to be attempted multiple times. With turbo on playstation there's like a specific setup with the hertz that you're using and the button combinations where you can just sort of effectively stutter step over the uh over that um that gap but it's not as uh i, I don't think that, that that setup can be done on pc there just aren't the sort of facilities for it uh keeper actually does it Can I say like one thing <laughs> correctly <laughs> without being, without being <laughs> sorry? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> God damn it! So Keeper uses my world map sutter macro for Misto skip. So 74 hertz skips the Mistos, but it's not right, as optimal okay. as the world map. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. That's interesting. Can you not have like two macros? Uh, I believe he does. I nice don't, percent. but I believe he does. Like I know my, uh, I know my knowledge of nine is a little rusty, but my word, it's not, it's not coming up, Sio today. <laughs> Donk. So a little something I do here for Mistodons. Uh, it's a little bit different, but instead I put uh, Mithril Helm on Steiner uh, for Insomniac. Just kind of saying no to, to counter at yeah. this point. Because um, mm -hmm. these Mistodons can get a little nasty with mist sometimes. Very smart. Get him, Steiner. 
Yeah, dude. Bonk. Counter attack. <laughs> was that actually a counter? No. Yeah. That was it? No, I don't think I thought it was. Thought it was. It was hidden by the can't escape, I thought. No, it, it wasn't a counter. Ah. Yeah. Counter. That's Ooh. like the, the... The thing is that, like, Misto's attacking is relatively rare. And on top of that, they need to target Sina. And then on top of that, they need to... Um, no, they got the arrow. Like, the counter ah. needs to proc. So Keeper, unfortunately, failing that um, Misto on skip. You had to play make that play beat. Dang it. Yeah, unfortunate, but could. Ah, it's so draw. Putting that thing to work. That's a huge bird. That's a big bird. Nice. another uh, forced trance situation in the game. Uh, one of three. Uh, the other two being Zidane and Vivi. Um, Hard-coded, so even if we do happen to skip trance and never learn it for the rest of the characters, the game forces it here. I had a uh, an organic Steiner trance during the Mistodon section once, and then he tranced again later on in that section. It was very fun. <laughs> Dang, this is a it's really... Still Oh, sorry, Weird. oh my goodness, I, I think Keeper is uh, in a bit of a pickle here. Yep, yeah, I respect that. I respect that. Just run it back. Run it back. Get out of there. Meanwhile, Pete's not having the best card tournament either. Dang, yeah, he's got no left really, arrows, so he, yeah. Really, really rough sequence for the. for everyone, I think. Yeah, card's not behaving. This uh, Final Fantasy relay number eight. <laughs> the eighth relay. Nice fine. That's it, played at the bottom, very nice. <laughs> yep, that's that's what you like to see. E oh my goodness, take two is it enough? Oh <gasps> nice. <gasps> what? Mate. Card tournament is taking zero oh. This is unreal. Wow. Oh Stone. my god! My this word! Is unreal. Oh, savior. Our holy guardian. I'm 99% all three of us would have just reset in the last five minutes if we were doing our own runs off uh, relay. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have gone to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy to me as well on the topic of uh, forced trances. So, again, in the last boss. Freya's oh. trance is actually like detrimental to the strats used. There, it's it's a horrible situation for Freya to trance uh, because jump is necessary for the strategies. Um, but Freya is like the only one in that final party. I guess Amaranth. Um, Freya doesn't have a forced trance, but there are so many story-based situations where it's so reasonable to have Freya trance. And if she did. We wouldn't need to worry about trance at all for the final boss. No, it's because Freya is really cool and collected, man. That's, that's, she doesn't I, let her I, emotions that, take over. She's very. That's powerful. a bad excuse. But uh, is it is it wrong? Jeez, yes. So many of those matches were just <laughs> battles at the end. That yeah. yeah. Um, see, that I was just yeah, classic worst card tournament. Minimal arrows. Second I every time. Or sorry, Keeper first had the time. best card tournament, and By even Keeper's way. wasn't very good. <laughs> Even keepers was like quite unlucky. When yeah. I say not very good, I mean in the in like a luck context, not in terms I was of being just gonna played. Say, poorly. Everyone's actually played their cards on pretty well, man. Yeah, they played it well. Like, it was just they made the right decisions. Game, yeah, that's, that's, that's like, the thing with cards. That's what ah, oh, it's so ah. Uh, it's the only thing that really has like in her, it hasn't really changed between them. It's harder. It is definitely harder, but it's one of the only things where like the RNG is just as lethal in no matter how you play it. There's well, no escape in the cards, man. What's it's crazy so is like a... any category oh. has cards. Every single category, you have to play cards. So it doesn't matter. Boosters, yep. uh, any percent with skips, PSX, Fleetless. Every if single one has to cards. win cards. 
Alrighty, alrighty, there we go. We're out. So if there's one moment that's FF9, it's Tetra yeah. Master. Mm -hmm. We survived, sort of. Alright. So everyone out. got the rebirth in the end there, right? Yep. yep, everyone did. Did Easily as well? I think he might have lost. Yes, Easily did. Yeah, Easily, easily got did. it. Because I actually pay attention to my teammates' brutals, so I, 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 knew, <laughs> I knew that Easily got the rebirth ring. I just had faith that he was going to get it no matter what, man. That's all. <laughs> so does your does your like Tonbury favoritism overrule your your country countrymanship with Easily? Oh yeah, yeah, Bruce. What, what's this all about? Nope, I'm on Team Tonbury, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm defying my long-term friend Pete as well. Yeah. He bleeds. He bleeds. Sorry, kid. Friend. You ain't special. <laughs> so yeah, with the with that card tournament, uh, yeah. I, again, look, I bleed pink, but I gotta say, the I I'm at the end of the day team close race, uh, and that card tournament, although pretty unlucky for all players involved it has narrowed the the gaps between our runners significantly um i think this is the first time they've been this close to like the store the same story beats which is really really cool to see uh, the yeah, annoying door back from a 16 minute deficit to under 10 minute deficit There's a, there's a few annoying doors in that, that one of them we just saw on easily screen where even if it looks like you're touching it it wants you to be essentially exactly middle and with the perspective there it, it's kind of just waving around until you find something yeah i i use analog for that screen and then when i run up to the door as a day and i start like <laughs> wiggling the analog stick back and forth <laughs> just praying that he gets through Eight nails, Mr. Skip one. We're gonna go two for three on the Mr. Skips. This particular Mr. Skip, that is. Pete doing the sword lineup. Retrying it. Didn't look like it was too good. I thought it looked good, but he's the world record holder, so. He nails it. Excellent. Nice. Uh, chat saying Keeper di was going rebirthless. Yeah, see, uh, I did pay attention to my team. Well, if you were paying attention, then you wouldn't have needed to ask, innit? Now, stop, okay, and let's focus on what's going on. <laughs> uh, if that's the case, um, we do have an additional pickup later on for some extra holy damage for the end of the game. Um, Fortunately, yeah, it's the... basically right next to where we need to go, so it's, it's another no good time thing loss. About... Yeah, and another good thing about um, rebirthless strats, a sort of like a benefit, I guess, um, is that the maiden prayer, which is your backup, that gives it's a, a accessory that gives holy damage to Freya for her holy lance. Um, it is a female-only equipment. So while the rebirth ring can be optimized onto any character and with some like menu mistakes and whatnot, can you know be put onto any character accidentally, uh, maiden prayer can only go onto Freya in your final party, which is a nice little like something that you don't have to think about, I guess. Another good uh, a good thing that uh, we didn't really touch on with that that last Mistodon fight. So there's, you've got like your right Misto and your left Misto. I'm probably gonna get it wrong, you know, knowing my uh, track record. You got this. You got this. The right Mistodon goes first. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> so no, that who's was right? You're <laughs> that right. That was correct. Or okay. Steiner's right. Uh, yeah. Right. So basically, there, there's one Mistodon that will always go first because your party starts with the uh, MDATBs. 
And so Beatrix will cast life onto the Misto that she gets uh, in front of. Uh, but if she's got enough MP, she can actually cast Shock and then mitigate that chance of life missing. Shock is 46 MP. And if she does have the MP for it, then um, yeah, it, it, it mitigates that, that risk of uh, life missing. And Shock will just insta-kill. And I don't know if the animation's faster or not. I don't think it is, significantly at least. But yeah, Pete is, uh, is, is out of range for that Shock to be cast, unfortunately. It's definitely um, cooler. It's a yeah, it's, it's a cool strat. Uh, I think Pete actually taught it to me, um, which is cool. Pete taught you uh, shock. Whoa. Well, well, I, I just didn't know that. It, I didn't know like. <laughs> Sayo's buff, man. Uh, Don't mess with Pete, Sayo. Don't yeah, mess with Pete. Sayo. Pete gave me enough AP when I uh, <laughs> when I killed him to, <laughs> to learn shock. So. <laughs> Yeah, so you'll see Pete here. Uh, as you can see, the ATPs are empty. Chuig Law, Chuig Law is going to trance. Chuig Law. And if Steiner counters here, that'd be optimal. Nah, nothing, unfortunately. I, uh, yeah. Well, I think it would be about the same, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it really? I'm assuming it would be slightly faster, some in some way, maybe by matter of frames. Uh, nice fight though, nice, nice, uh, Misto to repeat. So now essentially we need to uh, get out of out of Alexandria. Um, just a big part of. Um, its own pseudo plot sitting here. Uh, after we're done with this, we do get dropped in Limblum 3, um, which is Plot City, where there is a few things going on, a few things also I assume that they took out of the game, the way that they format it, but essentially what we're going to do is we just need to uh, collect some potions and that's the end of Plot City for us, uh, along with talking to some people, you know, progressing plot and all that. All those things we care about. During this Not speedway. potions you can actually use. Potions to, to turn Sid, the Oglop, back into a human. Yes. And it does give and you a ratio for mixing them. So it always like threw me off of why why did you tell us this and we didn't have to learn about it. It's just oddly specific. There is as well uh, for... I don't think any of these runners are going to or have or will take this but because they've, they've got the experience uh but there is an elixir that you can pick up in this room that keepers in um up at the top the unfortunate thing is that you have to take the time to go and grab it but i always recommend it to newer runners just to have as many elixirs as possible just because what we did pick up there was an egoist we're gonna buy another one but very important yep. item to learn level up um that's gonna help us get to the levels we want to be later on as well as we're going to buy a Coral Sword, which is another integral piece to the speedrun. It allows Steiner to learn Charge. Uh, charge essentially any any of the characters, even Steiner included, when he casts it, um, anybody within crit HP is able to take a physical attack turn. So that turns Steiner's turn essentially into a full party attack. Plus, we can also yeah. do physical attacks with the other parties, turning four, what would normally be four physical attacks into seven. Um, kind the, of quickening the targets the rest of charge the are random. Like, the, the party members are sent out to random targets, but the most useful use of it, uh, weird way to say it, but the, yeah, its best use scenario is, is being used against bosses where there is only one target. So, yeah, as Cap said, basically turning one turn into four attacks. It's slightly slower than just sending in four attacks, but if it can save a turn, then it's much, much faster. Yep. Um, additionally, it does not proc a counter. So we'll see that on Nova Dragon. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll see it on uh, Kraken as well as Trans Kuja. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it gets around quite a lot of stuff. Charge, it's uh, it's pretty essential. You can you can go without it if you so wish. <laughs> the game <laughs> can be finished can. without charge. You can, but you, you choose to accept it. You yeah. shouldn't do that. 
The Coral Sword actually is uh, really cool in a bunch of other ways too. It's the only weapon that we get for Steiner that we are able to amplify based on its elemental affinity. Um, the Thunder Gloves allow uh, boost uh, lightning elemental damage, which the Coral Sword deals. So when we get to Desert Palace, we're actually able to give Steiner a nice big boost that's going to help us deal with some random battles should we get into those. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier today with FF2. You don't get a lot of Thunder weapons, but uh, here we get it nice and nine with the Coral Sword. So, Little Moon 3 can be a little confusing at times, because you do go upstairs uh, thrice, um, and you come downstairs. So if you're not really paying attention, especially in a speedrun where you don't have those text boxes to rely on what's going on, um, where we should have went to the room here, the, um, uh, the guest room, uh, we could go out and attempt to go pick up the potions um, or something like that and just forget what we're doing. Uh, just to notice that, hey, we can't actually talk to anybody about potions yet because we haven't talked to Dagger, who is uh, now mute um, and having a bit of a crisis in the guest room. So you can actually pick up the potions in whatever order you want. The only other objective that you have is that, fortunately, near the other potions, there are some things that we need to do. So we need to go and buy the Coral Sword for one which is right next to, I believe, the beautiful potion, which is in the mm -hmm. trade district, commerce district. Um, the business can, district? Business district, that would be the one. Um, there is actually like a little macro optimization that you can do, which I don't think anyone really does, uh, just because of how much more likely you are to scuff your run because of it. It saves like maybe the better part of a second. You can go and pick up the potions from the theater district first and then make your way over to the business district afterwards. And when you do talk to the shopkeeper, Zidane will skip doing a little thinking animation. And, it's uh, such a minor thing. It's, but it's real really cool. tiny. It's real tiny. And then you can you can interact with the shopkeeper straight away rather than have Zidane ponder whether or not he's going to ask them if they have potions or not. He's already got them all, so he'll just go straight into the, uh, the buying process. Uh, we also pick up the Lapis Lazuli. I think it's one thing we missed, which gives us accuracy plus and... Ability up. Ability up. Which also oh, very do more pieces. of the most powerful abilities in the game. Yeah, yeah. accuracy yeah. plus, of course, meaning that you can't miss, a, you can't miss any of your attacks. Um, and ability up giving you uh, double the AP you would typically get. You yeah. can actually get the ability up effect without ability up if you have two pieces of equipment that teach bird killer your bird killer uh, will be earned double and there's a, a cool um a cool bit in mythics uh japanese route which uses tantarian and knights um, that i play for the japanese playstation version where zidane has ability up and two pieces of equipment that give i can't remember what the ability is but you get four times the amount of ap from a boss and you get um i think it's mp attack no it's not mp attack that that's no I'm, i've got to think of what it is maybe i'll look up the chart um, but yeah, you get an uh, you get an ability super early, way way earlier than you would get in um, uh, Petro's route, which is the most um, competitive and, and popular route. Yeah, which, the closest um, thing that we have to this in Petro, we, there are a few occasions where uh, we're doubling up on gear. But the one of the really cool ones is uh, when we uh, get to oil, the oil, vert, sorry, when we get to the. Oh, actually, you don't take a fight in Hildegard one anymore, do you? Not in this route. We do. Uh, you still well, take actually, Hildegard one. It's optional but you need an hd2 or 3 for freya right yeah there's um there is there's there's backing up of bird killer going on for amaranth uh, somewhere around there i'm assuming the rest of it's the same because you can't quite have enough ap for just a single fight to get you to 10 if you get the minimal amount of ap from some other fights so on and so forth so there's two pieces of gear that go on in there which can double up and give it more in one fell swoop in case you get low-balled on AP previous to it. There's a couple of cool instances where that sort of stuff happens. So I think something we didn't talk about so much was AP. So uh, with ability up, we can learn twice the amount, but also if we have two pieces of gear with the same ability to learn, um, it doubles down before. on that as well. <laughs> did you say that one I, I, I did, yeah, I did cover that. <laughs> gotcha. No, it's funny. It's a, I do that all the time, uh, truthfully. 
<laughs> All right. Are so... we done yet? <laughs> <laughs> quiet, Mel. Not quiet. We gotta know that Cinna washes his face every day down on Easley's screen. It's very important. Yeah, at least we know that. Mel, did you want to... Because we did all the intros before, but then we got cut off by cards if you wanted to... to oh, yeah. plug your own yeah. streams and whatnot. This is a pretty good I'm time. Mel. This game has broken me. That's about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a... like a recovery group. <laughs> no, I know. I mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, you, you say, you, you, say like, you say you say your name, and you say that you speed on FF9, and we all we all applaud. <laughs> We're all in this together. <laughs> yeah, so I'm the currently on a 12-step program to change to speed running the game Portal um, or Super Mario 64. They're only five uh, minutes long. It should be really good for me. I hope to um, <laughs> one day have the courage to sell my Final Fantasy discs on uh, on eBay. <laughs> I think uh, just change franchise, like getting a straight to Zelda. That'll, that'll solve all my problems. Yeah, like, uh, I was gonna go to the bathroom and then you try and leave, and like it's just a bag full of FF9 discs just fall out your pocket. <laughs> Someone ducks off to the bathroom and you just hear a really quiet. <laughs> Are you playing on an emulator in there? <laughs> yeah. That's right, you don't even need this, man. You just play on your phone now. Yeah, no, just do an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> we joke, I promise the game is fun to speedrun, I promise. Please don't be deterred. It's crazy how many more runners there have been since. Even when I started, there was just, like, barely anyone running at the time. I know there were a ton of runners, but just no one running at the time. So, yeah, it's it's a really big community, and we're very welcoming of any new runners. So, I mean, even within Australia, there are two new runners and one more um, who's planning to start very soon. Um, so, And uh, in uh, Final Fantasy X-2, uh, Dact, Dactly just picked up. He's a typically a Spyro guy. He's picked up Tentu, um, Kenora, who runs Hi-Fi Rush and some other games, uh, picked up the cutscene remover as well, and Vince, who I don't know if he's speed on anything before. Um, yeah, more Australians who do, like, which is crazy, because Australian speedrunning is relatively small, as is, let alone Australian JRPG speedrunning. Yeah, right? It's also interesting awesome. to see, like, this new advent of runners that have got, like, these tools available to them, right? So like CSR yeah. and whatnot, and like a, a pretty well established HD route at this point. So it's I think we're going to see people getting involved and leveling up even faster than ever. To be honest, yeah, because yeah. back back in like back when we started or when I started rather in 2021, I was I was like pretty late to the party, all things considered. But all, all I had was Mutsky's guide. Sheriff Falk's guide wasn't even out yet. Um, I think I actually was the one who told Sheriff Falk to put his guide, rather than just post his notes that he runs with, write it as a guide, like Mutsky's. Um, I'm going to take credit for that, even if it's not true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like we did, so when I fi f first started learning, I was actually playing the PlayStation MPU route, which requires night. Um, which, again, on, on the HD version is just, just bad. Um, yeah, there, there wasn't even a... There, I also got super trolled by Mutsuki. Um, not just with the, the menu colors thing, but... <laughs> what I started, else did he do? <laughs> I started... So I started learning in, like, March of 2021, roughly. And for his April Fool's prank, he replaced his guide with um, his, like, pictures of his notes. And it was just like an April Fool's prank. He, like, took down the guide and replaced it with just, like, his on-paper notes where half of evil... Like, half the Disc 1 notes uh gone because he spilled coffee on them um and it was like i i was so frustrated because i couldn't like learn the game i got so trolled i was like still i was genuinely using the guide to learn and he and he took it down as a, like an april fool's prank and then i um i think it stayed up for like two days or something i, I actually i think i dm'd him and was like can you please put it back up <laughs> <laughs> I, actually need these. I genuinely need these <laughs> You people in your spoiled guides that you have. Yeah. 
Well, Sai, you wouldn't even talk about the stuff that you made for this game. You made some really good resources for this, which has definitely helped me out, so... Yeah, Always I've... Um, people that contribute. I've made a... You don't really need it on HD because you force the encounter, but for PlayStation runners, I made a little calculator for um, your Evil Forest XP because you want to get Zidane to level 3. So you just basically tick what the fight was, who was alive when the fight ended, and it'll spit out... Um, how many spiders you need to kill in each situation as well as um because the, the the routes all of these routes vary so much you know did this drop from this enemy did you get nobles did you get this steel did you get that steel um and i got really frustrated with notes that had to have like multiple sections so i wrote notes in an excel sheet or rather a google sheets uh sheet where if you tick broadsword steel it will actually change the cells and the data in the cells and the color coding and everything and it will actually just like you you it, you don't need to think or, or read them really. It's um, yeah. It's the PSX ones are, <laughs> yeah. The PlayStation ones are finished and, and like perfect. They're exactly as Petro's route fo follows with all of the um, necessary stuff in them. I'm working on it for PC. It's not finished yet. Um, they're out there, but use at your own risk. There are mistakes in there. Um, Brutals uh, helped very much with that as well because um, he caught a lot of the mistakes in the in the um. Uh, original spreadsheet. But yeah. Um, oh, yeah, there weren't many. There was just one or two. Don't this be modest. Been... No, no, no. It was it was really good. It was really good. <laughs> it was just <laughs> one 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 thing. Yeah. Um so if anyone is wanting to sacrifice a few runs to finding mistakes in my uh in my HD versions of the notes, you're more than welcome to. Again, there are going to be mistakes in them, but uh, and on PC as well, it's kind of it's a little sketchy to use on PC because like you're using your computer to play the game most likely, so you don't really want to click off the window. Um, it just sort of depends. If you have a laptop or something or a phone, it's a pretty good way. But yeah, I I, I absolutely love uh, um, running the game with that version of the notes. Um, Kenora has currently been my sacrificial lamb for the PC notes. If I start soon doing CSR, I'll probably use those just because I don't know of any other ones. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. It's just there's a bunch of things that you need to like play FF9 HD to, especially coming from a PSX background like yourself. Like, yeah, it's just figure. I know the equipment yeah. is a little different and all that, but just the way yeah. the game handles a little bit just takes a little bit of getting used to and there's just a, little, a few little minor things like you never seeing ap on the way up clay or trunk and whatnot is a bit jarring and um yeah there's some menus in some new places too which are kind of interesting so honestly that some of the optimizations he's made to like kind of uh reflow it all is actually really cool yeah sheriff yeah. falk that is another another yeah. aussie who unfortunately just doesn't have the time to run a seven and a half hour game anymore but he was once the world record holder um the premise of his of his modifications to Petro's route is basically just cutting out as many menus as possible because menus are just slower. Yeah, so sluggish. Um, yeah, which it's it's cool. It's really good. Um, and also taking advantage of the fact that nobles on PC is just so much easier to get. Why not just like optimize why not just, for that? Well, yeah, yeah, you know what? It's very easy to say it's really easy, but it's 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 not <laughs> it's not because one of the common problems you have with um, nobles on pc is the the button mapping so by default yes yes <laughs> yeah yeah by no, default yeah. um circle or, or cancel b is confirmed on the uh, the hd port of the game which can be really jarring for most dirty westerners um, circle confirm is correct i mean yeah it's great if you're used to it, but a lot of people... So what you can do is you can change your config inside the game. If you easily actually did it at the start of the run, it's the very easy, um, no fuss way of doing it. Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually change your button controls in Steam. So it just loads the game up like that. You won't need to take the few, what, like two seconds time concession to sort it out. Um, but if you do do the Steam one, what obviously that doesn't do is then exchange the buttons during nobles so it's very very oh, no. easy to get yeah. confused really it's, fast yeah i kind of forgot about that <laughs> but yeah it's so it like the nobles thing will say press a and you have to see that and go uh b 
be. Yeah, it's like if you're playing with um, that happens to me on Switch, and I think if I play on Xbox, oh, like, Switch I is just, the I can't. worst. <laughs> Switch is the, the the big one that gets me when I go back to PC. Yeah, yeah, the big one that gets me when I go back to PC every time is it says press X and it's a big blue X, <laughs> and I hit the bottom most button on the controller. It was, I was actually ranting, I had some friends over last night, I, I, I'm getting deja vu, because I was literally ranting about this to, um, to them last night. <laughs> oh man. Uh, we finally have some gameplay though, here on Easley screen. It's happening. Mm -hmm. So Getting our this... party ready for oil vert. Absolutely, this three is kicking into full effect. We're on our way through the Hildegard screen for the first time, we're gonna make our way over to oil vert, wherever, like Mel just said, where we're gonna fight the first major boss of disc three arc who shouldn't be a problem but can be a problem uh, he can kill you <laughs> he can get you <laughs> he can get you <laughs> do they need encounters in hd on the way I don't think you need them. Let me pull up the AP chart. I think Cap was saying um, one, the one on the way there is optional, but you need one in Hildegard 2 and 3, which is what I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you take out... You, cause I guess you can get AP, but I guess it doesn't really do anything, so you want experience of anything. Just to uh, yeah, yeah. so as, as Brittle said exactly that, the, uh, Hildegard 2 or 3, you need uh, at least 4 AP, but you don't need anything else from what I can see. Um, it's just, yeah, just one encounter in Hildegard 2 or 3. Um, which is pretty good, because it's such a long screen and it's very threatening. So it's one of those situations where on PC it's actually reasonable to require an encounter, because you're almost certainly going to get one. Uh, however, on PlayStation you're almost certainly going to get 5 or 6. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you usually need a bit more AP, because it's just going to come your way, it's going to find its way to you. Oh, hold on. On a uh, Pete's screen, the potion didn't work. Sid appears to have been turned into a frog. Oh. Hold on. Mm. Uh-oh. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> you actually scared me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that Quinna contemplates eating Sid. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a shame nah. there's two of them. For those, uh, for those unfamiliar, yeah, Sid does uh, intentionally turn into a frog. It's normal. Um, that's, that's frustrating. Yeah, Excellent. trouble knife Still. is oh. so trouble is a status effect that basically. <laughs> uh, oh my god! <laughs> what so a tr of <laughs> trouble is a, a status effect that any damage that that party member takes, any uh, I believe physical damage only, uh, but any damage that that party member takes will uh, they they will then spread half of that to the other party members. It basically creates uh, AOE damage off of a single target uh, attack. And you can lose Ronge to it. So there was also recently discovered uh, on PC, typically people will uh, start a step backwards to the chocobo tracks, grab a chocobo, and then ride to the next section, because it's a very long start a step otherwise. I, uh, I can't remember the runner's name, someone uh, jump in, uh, but basically discovered that if you start a step towards Olvert, there's a Chocobo Forest on the way, and you can save about two seconds uh, by taking an alternate uh, an alternate Chocobo pickup point. I'm not sure if any of the runners will do it. Um, I'm not 100% sure. So this is going to be the, well, not the last, but the last major part of overworld movement uh, for easily in just a moment after this airship drops him off. He's going to want to go and get a chocobo. It's going to be the last chocobo that we, we summon. Um, while we're there, we're going to do a quick arrange of our inventory, get everything in the right place for the big menu that we're going to do in Oilbert. And then we're going to take that chocobo all the way with us to Oilbert, where we can uh, commence the next dungeon. Uh, we can use the stutter step macro as well, just to uh, nice and tidily get us over there. You yeah. can make a slight decision as the runner here. So there is a forest between you and the chocobo tracks. You can go all the way around it 
I think it costs nearly 10 seconds or so to go around. Or you can chance going through it and uh, hope that you don't get an encounter with good old Ragtime Mouse. Yeah. Ragtime Mouse as well. Uh, I actually lost a run in quite possibly the stupidest way of any, uh, any runner ever. And I didn't know, because basically when you flee, when you cast the flee ability as the day and you drop some gill, uh, rel relative to the amount of gill that that encounter would give you. Uh, Ragtime Mouse, from what I understand, gives a ton of gill. So fleeing costs about 6,000. Um, and I fled. And I could not afford what I needed for Olvert. Which was Dang. really cool. Yeah. Um... Did you just buy less, one less fork or something? No, I couldn't afford anything. Oh. It was it was over for me. Um, I couldn't buy uh, like half the equipment that I needed. It wasn't even just the fork. No. Oh. I it was just GGs, and it's such a bad place to lose a run as well because you've just gone through like half an hour to an hour of of you know plot Nothing. and cards. Could you yeah. fight your way through it all? <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> I was pretty new. At the, fork. <laughs> I was pretty new. At, I was pretty new at the time, so I didn't. I, I, yeah, but uh, it was. It was just over. And then I went to bed. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. <laughs> I wonder if this little menu has a big. Armory in his back pocket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder if this menu is as brutal as the Black Mage Village one. Did you say brutals? Brutal. The uh, brutal. The brutals. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Just... <laughs> it gets me every single time. Who? Oh. <laughs> <Do> me? <laughs> it must be talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Easley's forgotten stuff. Easley, Easley, Easley! It was. Uh, ah! Easily! Angel here. earrings! Angel <laughs> earrings! Sell the angel earrings! I'm sorry, I'm trying really not to help in backseat, but you didn't sell angel earrings. Oh, okay. I was like, why am I so sure? Because <laughs> <laughs> you want Freya to be beautiful later on. I'm not sure if that was allowed or not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just panicking. <laughs> I think it's fine. Uh, it's just your instincts, it's alright. <laughs> it's just, it's I got just my... I uh, we trying to get on the boat. I'm very, uh, very competitive. <laughs> There's Trouble Knife back again on Easley's Amaranth. Oh, actually, no, another another really stupid way that I lost a run one time was uh, Steiner got troubled, and I was like, oh, I, I know what I'll do, because I can't get rid of trouble, I'll just kill Steiner, <laughs> and then revive him. And I got Steiner to whack himself, he critted, and uh, <laughs> I gave over it. Because <laughs> I, no, uh, I had no anointments. Yeah, so the the trouble status effect is is pretty bad, man. You can you can get got. It's uh, I've seen I've seen a few runs die to. Uh, oh, okay, I haven't got any anointments, but I should definitely clear the status. And even Quinner has ended a run. He's like, oh, okay, I'll yeah. just give him a little poke with Quinner just to finish him off, and then Quinner will high roll and just yep. roll party. <laughs> Quinner's got a <laughs> Quinner's got a very interesting way to calculate damage, whereas like most uh, like all your other characters, basically they have a range of damage they can deal, and they will do like one of four basically uh, potential damage options. Uh, Quinner and Sinner as well, their roll is anywhere from one to their high roll. So even a level ninety nine max stack Quinner, while it's extremely extremely unlikely. A level 99 max stack when it can theoretically roll a 1. It's part of why uh, Quinn is not really used in the speedrun, is because it's just not ba, ba, as reliable. Ba, 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 ba. Are you uh, disregarding the good word of Mythic Dawn again, Sayo Television? Well, as a, as a damage dealer, <laughs> despite Quinn having access to some pretty beefy weapons, Quinn is just not like a damage dealer. 
it's no, not there's, alive, there's, there's a route. There, there is a route with it. Is there yeah, really? So you get a silver fork early. Yeah, it's a ton route. Of course it is. You get a silver fork early on to Quinneran. If you get like decent enough rolls, you can two turn Lani with it. <laughs> oh yeah, that 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 is in Mythic's route, but you have to so you have to steal the silver fork from Tentarian. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you get it every so time. So it's not it's, it's not guaranteed. No, you don't. Right, so all the all the runners opted. Actually, I'm not sure. If, no, Pete's not quite there yet. But uh, so far, all the runners have opted for the standard Choker Forest. You can see just to the left to keep his screen. He passed it now. But you can start a step to that forest over there, and uh, it's it's only like two seconds. If you're not hugely familiar with the path that you have to take, it's probably not going to net you uh, a significant amount of time. But it is like a two second time save that exists, especially on PC. So, the next boss fight that's coming up... Ah. Oh, he's a big boy. He's got pretty much dead on to 20,000 HP. Uh, 20,002, I think, right? 20,002, mm -hmm. yeah, dead on. The the biggest um, hurdle that Ark presents is it has AoE confusion. So, for this fight going in, we need to absolutely guarantee that everybody has access to clear headers. Yeah, uh, that's done through, I think, an assortment of pretty hats. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the the green berets, the lamias. The, in fact, it is just a, it's an assortment of lovely hats that uh, yeah. helps us keep our head. Haha. <laughs> and then um, he also has access to an ability called photon, which is a single target. Uh, I, I believe it's physical. Maybe it's. I guess it's gravity. I suppose because it it sets your HP to one. Um, it can be avoided though. I'm not sure. Either way, if it connects, it reduces your HP to exactly one. Um, and that, in, compar in, in, in conjunction with the two physical area effect spells, it's got Whirlwind and Boomerang can deal really, 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 really big damage to you really quickly. So in this fight, uh, we don't have access to magic because of Oilvert's magic sealing properties. So Quinner is not able to do any blue magic, unfortunately. So if you did learn Knight, unfortunately, it doesn't do anything. I was I was actually just about to say it'd be a really interesting strat to have Quinna learn Limit Glove, which is a, a blue magic that if Quinna has one HP, deals max damage. It'd be really interesting to get like an optimization. It'd be really that interesting to have that there and then have it not do anything. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be an interesting little uh, optimization. Rebirth Ring also places Quinna on one every time, so I believe in all bosses, uh, you sack Quinna. Quinn gets back up and spams Limit Glove uh, in certain scenarios. So the fight isn't too bad. It should be roughly a three turn fight. We're going to be using Amaranth to throw Silver Forks. They actually deal really, really good damage uh, between like 3 8 and 4 4, I think. Maybe even up to 4-5 as well in PC, I'm not too sure. Uh, they hit real hard. Z's only going to hit for yeah. just around 2k. Freya hits for about 1300. So the Silver Fork is what carries us through the damage. And um, we're also going to throw a Diamond, Diamond Sword. sword yeah. 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 Diamond Which is Sword another here. thing that uh, you, you don't want to forget, because and another way that I've lost a run uh, is not throwing the Diamond Sword because I killed too early. And then I tried to optimize Steiner for Red Dragons, and instead of getting Coral Sword, you got Diamond Sword, and I died, which is very fun. Hmm. Yeah, there's some funny stories about people. If you, so, it's the the problem that you have is if you don't throw the Diamond Sword, you end up taking it with you into Desert Palace, and the first menu it opens with optimizing Steiner, which will put the Diamond Sword on him, which is that's off script. You don't want that. Yeah. Uh, you need it to not be in your inventory so it doesn't get burned up, like managed incorrectly and whatnot. Um, Coral Sword is definitely the way to go. And especially considering the Coral Sword is the one that teaches you charge, which you mentioned My earlier is very important. My script is breaking. I might get an encounter. Oh dear. Okay, so Ark isn't too fast. You can wait it if you have access to... Oh, might get one out of Freya though. So we'll put three. Okay, okay. Yeah, Ark isn't too fast. You can wait it if you've got auto haste on a tank route. See that 3600 yep. there. There was a... I, I think if you have uh, 
Amaranth with auto haste as well. He can ATB weight with Silver Forks, which is really fun. He can, he can like ATB weight the throws, which is, yeah, I love it. It does unfortunately drop his damage a little bit, and I believe in most routes at this point he's learning MP attack for his accessory slot. So, yeah. as great as auto haste is, it actually isn't just as simple as you get it and now everything's fine. There is, yeah. a, there is a lot of brain power going into making it work properly. Easily opting for an elixir rather than a high potion on Zidane there, which is pretty interesting. Keep it safe, man. Yeah. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Zidane also almost trancing. He actually will off this uh, off this boomerang. Don't know how much good it's going to be. Fortunately, Quinna doesn't need to survive this. Their job is almost done. They don't actually learn anything. Quinna, uh, Ico, and Vivi are the three characters that never learn any abilities. Um, Dagger can learn stuff and it's completely optional. This should be lethal. Nice, good fight. I think the best thing uh, Dagger can learn is like protect for yeah. one of the Yuan of the Lone bosses. Yeah. It's it's quite difficult to get it on her. She needs to survive Hilgu guys, which doesn't yeah. happen very often. Yeah. Especially in HD where she doesn't get much of the experience she gets in the early game. Right, so we do have a menu here fun. that is. You absolutely have to do this menu. Um, because basically, when we go over to our other party, we don't have access to taking gear off of our other party members. So like the Dane, Quinna, Amaranth, and Freya, you can't alter their equipment while you're in the in the Ico party. Um, unlike say Final Fantasy VIII, and I think no, not seven, not seven. Um, but Final Fantasy VIII, you can uh, menu anyone from anywhere. Um, in this one, if you, if you miss that menu, then you're probably not getting charged. <laughs> I believe. We've got the the fun red light green light mini game. It's a good um, mini game. This was one. this was really cool. Uh, so it inspired this uh, um, this this mini game was actually inspiration for a uh, show on Netflix uh, called it's a Korean uh, like drama show. It was called um, Squid Game. Um, this little mini game the the producer of that show actually cited as the uh, inspiration for it. Yeah, he, he actually came forward after the show uh, it was so toxic. For he's like, I really 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 enjoyed my time with Final Fantasy IX and I wanted to honor yeah. it. In the only way I knew how <laughs> was to make a whole show on Netflix. <laughs> so it's it's red unrelated. Light, green light. Yeah. yeah. Don't move when it's looking at you. Uh, if you fail, well, he, he has he can turn not like a normal speed, or he can turn really quick. And easily he's going for first try. This is actually yeah really impressive. Yeah. So there's a there's a safety strat five people. Uh, sorry, the safety strat the people will do, not five yeah. people. Um, where you'll die five times intentionally uh, in this mini game or get caught. And then it basically means that he only slow turns and uh, he looks at you for less like amount of time. With Turbo, this mini game is a lot easier because without Turbo, you have to actually like mash the button. And stopping, like stopping mashing as a reaction is surprisingly difficult. I wish Street Fighter Six players online knew how to stop mashing. I'll be honest, man. Turbo or no Turbo, this is all, this is rock hard on oh, the first it's tough. try, it's bro. Tough. It's tough, but yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. Started. Incredible, yeah, easy, easy. Did it. well played. That yeah. was really, really good. First try is very difficult. Mm -hmm. I I don't even bother. I just go for the five, nope. the five, uh, get caught five times strat. Me either. I, I get caught five times too. I think the last world record that had a first try red light, green light, because Bomb Bomb did, Bomb did five it. deaths. You no, did five deaths. Did no, I think he goes yeah. for the first try. I'm pretty sure he goes. Oh, okay. He did it first try. Oh, okay. Um, I remember that incorrectly then. I know there aren't many of us that do first try still. I I always do. I don't like to fail it. Reject failure. Gamer. <laughs> we got a gamer in this. We got a real gamer on our head. That's a real. <laughs> I have reactions. Real I use them. <laughs> I'm st I started doing it too easily, so I'm with you. You do first yeah, try as well, though? Like. Yeah, it's a lot easier with Turbo, of course. Did you but... just call her Melon? Mellow. Oh, Mellow, Mello. Mello. okay. You can call me whatever you want, Brutals. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> that's so... That, that, that's such a, like, cute nickname. Hello, Melon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
not going to be using it. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's tough. Gotta... It's tough. First try, it's tough. Yeah. You got to commit a really heinous crime so we can call you Melon the Felon. Ooh. All right, I'll work. I'll think about it. Your Just heinous going. crime is running X2. I'm not going to say I'll work on it because then that incriminates me and I don't really want that right now. So. Your, your, hein your heinous crime is taking so long to start learning Final Fantasy X, uh, uh, 10 2 in Japanese. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's your that's your felon, felony. Is it felony? I'm not familiar with it. It's a US thing. I'm a bloody Australian, mate. <laughs> Did you know that I used to think you could get encounters in this room when I first started running? I was like, wow, I'm so lucky I never get encounters. <laughs> <laughs> <Here."> <laughs> I, I um, was uh, under the impression that you couldn't even after you grab the, the orb, which is not the case. After you grab uh -huh. the orb, this is a very threatening room. But I sort of similarly was like... Like, I didn't know that you could get encounters here. And then Sheriff Falk, um, very kindly, while I was learning, he was like, uh, I want to, like, coach you through a whole run, front to back. I'll just give you all these little optimizations and that, which is really kind. Um, and he was like, oh, by the way, you can get encounters in this room after you get after you grab the orb. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, like, the next five runs in a row, I got encounters. Uh, after grabbing the orb. Of course you did. Um, so, another really fringe thing about that screen with the uh, with all the candles it's waves told me about this uh, so in this game this game actually does have like steps and fractions and all that sort of stuff but they're just nowhere near as relevant as they are in other playstation final fantasy games but on that screen in particular if somehow you're able to know what your fractions are if you're able to activate it when you're on the lowest point possible there is potentially a chance that you could avoid a check but you have to it, if you that approach so it as you've just hit a new step ID, it's quote unquote step ID, then you, there's a chance that maybe you could route it in a way that you could squeak out of there without getting the last chest. But it, it's a bit of a pipe dream. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, your, your movement and your danger checks, the to the distance for the danger checks is still going, but you just never hit. Because because it's not hostile. Every time it checks, it just doesn't increment, right? But once you activate the screen, it takes whatever fraction you were on and then starts using that. I love Desert Palace in this game. <laughs> Isn't it? You just zoom in. What what enemies? <laughs> What's the problem <laughs> with this place? Why does everyone eat it? You can just oh, a four out of them as well. It's beautiful. Yeah. Obviously, it's, it's still pretty slow booting back in. Especially, you know what? It's not so bad um, when you're actually running the game because you go off, you go off um, load remove time. But yeah. in this scenario, when it's RTA strictly, it's it's a bit, bit, bit more bad. Easily punished for leaving turbo on. Unlit the candle. This fight looks like it's going on a really long time for P here. Is this where we're going to kill Z? Oh, close. Should have I actually first. got a triple preempt. Yeah. But, uh, six attacks is not enough. Just seemed to low roll everything. Yeah, you're still that alive counted. at least. Nice. It was a pretty fast fight though. Still, still alive as Quinn is just lying there, tongue stuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone made it. <laughs> she's sleeping, it's fine. Yeah, she's fine. Take a nap. <laughs> So the, the significance of these orbs in Desert Palace is basically Valia Pira will have uh, access to a full kit of abilities, status effects, um, you know, spells, this, that, resistances, you know, damage, buffs, you know, whatever. Each orb you grab will um, will nerf Valia Pira in, a, in, like, different ways. So the three that we grab increase, or rather decrease, magic resistance. Uh, removes the... They also have uh, equipment with them as well. So, the only one that we really need to grab is magic resistance uh, getting lowered. You can see it's enhancing its defense systems and whatever. Uh, so, yeah, we just grab its magic resistance, cast uh, Carbuncle with Ico, which puts Reflect on the whole party, and then bounce Water All off of our whole party, <laughs> which is a really cool strat. Bounces it back onto Valley Appearer and does, uh, in the HD version, about four 
0.5k, so uh, we need three of them in the HD version uh, with some Steiner attacks to to take out Valiapira. Whereas on PlayStation, where that water resistance is lower, uh, Valiapira can be taken out two casts of water. Ah, uh, not the baby boy. This is yeah, this pretty is pretty much the worst timeline, unfortunately. Yeah. It does mean that you can start the fight, though. So, uh, this fight's really cool. It's actually not as broken as it is on PSX. They have to make a small concession in HD. So, uh, this is the only summon that we actually willingly cast in, in the run. And then we use Reflect Strats, because we're not using Knight. So, we are going to put Reflect on our entire party and use VV to cast Water. AoE on our own team, and that's going to reflect back and deal a boatload of damage straight back at Valiapura. So the reason why that was less than ideal is because unfortunately killing Vivi means that um, he's not going. To, we have to wait a turn before we can start we get started. Yeah. If Dagger goes down, she's got auto life on. If we've got the rebirth ring, so she'll just pop straight back up. No action required. If Steiner gets targeted, he's wearing the gear to make him survive anything. So the, uh, the only one worse than Vivi is Ico because then you do have to get her yeah. up and then you do have to hope that she doesn't go down again, which, trust me, can happen. First try, Pete, let's go. Let's go. Nice work, dude. I, think I always get my heart try. racing. <laughs> yeah. So Valley Pira as well, also, it can cast Reflect on itself, but the, the main thing it's doing is hucking spells at you, so Reflect is pretty good regardless. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, as Brutal's alluded to, there is uh, another um, another strategy which I, uh, Mythic's JP route uses, where and I think MPU uses it as well, where because Valiapira is susceptible to sleep, you have uh, Night cast on your whole party, and Valiapira as well, but you all have Insomniac. Valiapira goes to sleep, and you take it out with physical attacks. The JP route that I play has Amaranth throw the two silver forks at Valiapira, uh, but it can cast heat and freeze because you're skipping some of those bloodstones. Uh, I think MPU's route has Steiner attacks. It's like Knight, Steiner attack, Knight, Steiner attack. It's a somewhat faster fight. It's, a, it's, it's actually a, a lot faster to use Knight. But then the problem is you're, you're using Knight, <laughs> which in itself is relying on an encounter, which is just sort of apparently slower. Alright, we'll see if Keeper can get a preempt off with I don't think so, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say with like uh... Oh, there it goes. Sandaga on No Valley of Pira keeping oh. team ton down. Why dude? Yes! Go Valley of Pira! <laughs> <laughs> wow, cheering for the bird, you would. Oh yeah, Valley Pira is a bird, hey. <laughs> Look, it's nothing touching the ground, it's a bird. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh no. That's oh, pretty this is... oh. We are in the fight. The, the, the fight, yeah, the fight has started now. The fight has begun. Because yeah, once Carbuncle's cast, Valley Pira can't actually... It doesn't have any physical attacks, at least none that it can do with the bloodstones that you've picked up. So easily as well, getting his uh, required uh, Hildegard 2 or 3 encounter, which is good. Wow, they are really glowy in this version. They're just vibrant. They're happy to be around. <laughs> No, not the miss, dude. Come on, how do you miss a tombstone, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's got moves. Did you see it pop backwards? It did smooth, man. It's got smooth. <laughs> so the cool thing about reflect is that you can't reflect a reflected, reflectable move. I just wanted to say reflect as many times as I could. So <laughs> by casting a, a spell on ourselves and having it reflect off Earth, their reflect spell does nothing. Wouldn't it be crazy if you could soft lock? 
because like the water just keeps bouncing between you. <laughs> just <laughs> ten <years laughs> wouldn't, later. wouldn't that be so funny? And every time it gets just... stronger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then whoever's reflect runs out first, cops like twenty thousand. That it breaks the damage threshold. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and of course, it targets Iko. <laughs> wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be fun to make this game more difficult? <laughs> I, for one, welcome our new RNG overlords. That is true, Monkey Slinger. I forgot about that. That does happen sometimes. Yeah, the full animation, right? Yeah, I completely forgot. Monkey Slinger also mentioned that uh, while there is an ability called Stone Killer, the big stone that you were just fighting is not a stone. It's a bird because it's <laughs> off the ground. Imagine if it was, man. Imagine if just, if just soft it. Like, look. Yeah, oh, that'd be fun. so sick. This was fun. But I need you to leave. <laughs> Instead, they made it a bird. <laughs> it's crazy as well that there's a there's a um like a uh, a griffin enemy with it's a big bird monster thing with wings, but the problem is it's got legs that are touching the ground, so it's not a bird. No <laughs> it's a beast. Way is that thing not. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a beast. It's a beast. Keeper got his encounter, I believe. Uh, so next section that we'd be coming up to shortly is Red Dragons, which is a huge pain point for... Oh, easily with a back attack with two ogres. That's bad. Um, what was I going to say? There is like a, a pretty fun... Uh, thing that you can do if you do take Quinna to Red Dragons. Uh, there's a certain encounter that if you eat it, Quinna can learn um, Mustard Bomb, which casts Heat. We're going to use Heat on a boss later, or try to at least. Um, and that's a fun way to get a second uh, a second way of getting Heat stuck onto that boss. Uh, unfortunately, neither of these runners are playing a route that takes Quinna to Red Dragons, because they're playing the best PC route that we know. Um, so it's uh, it's not going to happen there. But Red Dragons, pretty tough. They've got Aerial Slash and Twister, which are two really, really strong wind moves. Um, this version somewhat lessens the damage of wind moves because it takes the um, Japanese PlayStation values. Um, the So the strat will be that Zidane with the Angel Bless when he casts Soul Blade will confuse the, uh, will confuse the target. So we're going to confuse one red dragon, then Vivi's going to Blizzaga, and Steiner will follow up with an attack. Amarant will KO himself, because we don't want him to get any XP or AP from it. Uh, then, while the second dragon is confused, Vivi will cast Blizzaga, we will take out Vivi, and then Steiner will finish with an attack. And it's fine to do that, because you get a free heal and revive immediately after for the following boss, which is Multi Gemini. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, I guess, there. Um, so it's a tough boss just because Aerial Slash and Twister are so, so strong. There's such... Uh, aerial Slash, not so much, but Twister is such a... Just such a painful, uh, punishing move. So we really don't want to see Twister. We especially don't want to see Twister and Aerial Slash. Um, easily having to fix up his party there. Not a huge deal, but... No, I accidentally pressed circle too quick. Yeah. The the reason that the gold choker is in this route is to mitigate wind damage. Um, gold choker will help Zidane stay healthy. Is there a, is there anything to buy? Yeah, you do buy a Rising Sun, Octagon Rod, and Flame Saber here as well. In a Esto Gaza. There's also some pretty scary, uh, scary birds that we can encounter. Garudas in the section outside, um, the cave that we're about to head into, or the mountain rather, I guess. Estogaza, it's like, 60% of everyone's favorite song. 
Yeah, Everyone loves Esther Garza. It yeah. Is. Oh, Pete on the last possible check. Double ogres. It's very chill. Oof. Catching up. He's got one more hill to guard to go. <laughs> Just one more. <laughs> Just one more hill to go. <laughs> Trouble knife getting put on brutals there. Tifa copping up. A whack. <laughs> don't you worry about me, mate. I'll be just right. You'll be all right, mate. I uh, don't, don't, don't believe in trouble, me, mate. Bounce right back. <laughs> <laughs> Exaggerated Australian accents to the point where it doesn't even sound remotely Australian is so that just makes me smile every time. I'm glad it makes you smile. It doesn't make you seethe with anger. <laughs> uh. Right, so the next hurdle for easily to take care of here is red dragons, right? Yes, so we're going to get everyone geared up. Um, missing something on someone. Yep. I refrained this time. So red dragons are actually, they're pretty scary, man. Yeah, they have access to and, uh, uh, and they uh, uh, they aren't dragons as well. They're birds. Well, that's fortunate because we ain't got dragon killer. Yeah. And they um. Yeah, they have though they have two two aerial effect spells and a single targeting melee. They got aerial slash which well, we don't really care about that one. That one's fine. But they got twister. Twister's the bad one. Twister actually oh, hits really really hard. Cool. Um, it, it's it's a random damage. It ignores ignores defense aside from uh, elemental mitigation, which I believe we are wearing a gold choker on Zidane, which reduces yes. wind damage by fifty percent, as well as Amaranth, sorry Steiner, who is wearing the bronze armor, which has fifty percent resist on wind too. And finally, Vivi has got his shiny new octagon rod, which actually absorbs wind, uh, so he's gonna have a real good time here. All we need to do is survive the first turn. After that, we can. Use Soul Blade with Zidane to confuse one of the red dragons, and ideally have Vivi and Steiner dispatch the other one before setting up. Finally, we so the, ultimately these red dragons—they're not actually a boss; they are considered uh, random monsters. They're forced, but they're regular mobs, so they give you experience and they give you a lot. So, in conjunction with level up here, we're going to gain a lot of levels really, really fast. But we don't really want to dump any of them onto Vivi, definitely. And Amaranth doesn't need them just yet. We really want to dump them all onto Zan and uh, Steiner for now, so that they're a bit more fit to deal with the following boss, Melty Gemini. So as long as we survive the opener, we get the confusion off, we should be right as rain. Yep. But we'll see how we go. Um, in a typical marathon setting on PlayStation, again, because of the uh, damage differences, wind is so, so much scarier on PlayStation. Um, not as bad here, one, because of the difference in the spell um, damage, but also because you've got auto save. So let's see how easily dispatches the dragons. Oh, it, it's viable. So uh, Amaranth can also throw a Rising Sun, as easily as just done, to sort of help out there. Yep. The Rising Sun counts as a Steiner attack. Yeah. Ah, oh, Twister, no. Actually, the Rising Sun's gone off, so the damage uh, is Oh, no, that's a, that's a mistake, though, because I've just queued Steiner, because I didn't expect a second Twister. I think it might attack Zidane, but you should... As long as it doesn't hit Vivi, you, should, you can recover. Because you're going to get Soul Blade off first, which is the most important thing. Yeah. Wait, 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 the dragon didn't die, so Steiner will go in to kill. No, he's done a self attack. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Yep. <laughs> I respect yeah. it. Just, you know yep. what? Nope. <laughs> so, Keeper could actually take the lead here. Yeah, wow. Balancing out. Yeah, look at that. Team close race. Fly faster, Pete. I'm coming. Pete, just chug <laughs> on three times speed. No one will notice. Floor, floor it on the boat, Pete. Let's go. <laughs> I 
think that actually comes three times uh, speed, please. It would actually uh, invalidate your life. Stop coaching him. Come on. Oh. Sorry. I have to. I have to even it out now that uh, I gave. <laughs> <laughs> now that I gave easily some, some coaching, I'm gonna even it out to everyone. That's weird. You face a different direction on this world map than CSR. Spooky. <laughs> yeah, it does look like you low roll kind of low in this version, huh? Okay, keepers. Keepers fight was pretty textbook. Um, Easley's is going a. Uh, a little bit less so. It's looking okay now. Yeah, no, it's fine now. Okay, perfect. So many dragons on my screen right now. It's <laughs> terrifying. All right, well, only one left. And Keeper formally takes the lead. All right, let's go, Keeper. Come on, Hashtag Team Close Race. That's right. Okay, final turn coming in here. So we use it on, take down BB, Steiner deals the lead blow, very nice. Clean. Nice. And I guess the Rising Sun stuff doesn't work on PS on uh, no, HD. Hammer and his like, yeah. He is a chunk weaker. Uh Rising Sun does work on HD, that might have just been some low roll in there. That's yeah. what I mean. Like, I don't think it can low roll. It's not as yet. reliable. Yeah. yeah. It's not supposed to. I've never had that happen. Um, what if they never had a low roll? No. Yeah, maybe it just was the, like a pair of low rolls, not really unlucky. Uh, for the record, I've never had a low roll either, that's why I did it. Yeah. Hmm. So, as, uh, as mentioned before, you don't actually need to pick up Vivi or heal up. anyone, uh, because. Um, we get a free heal and revive here um, in this cutscene. So when we head into Melted Gemini, uh, VV will be replaced with Ico, and uh, you'll fight Melted Gemini. Um, you can get AP from this fight, but it's not. People don't really route it in because Virus is an option which cuts AP gain. So you can't rely on it basically uh, unless you're going to heal that status effect before the final blow. Which is just slow. There's not much we can get here either. Um, Zidane's closing in on the the stuff that he needs. Uh, yeah. We need to pick up a few items later on. Um, so really, anything he can learn now, he'll learn later anyway. So it's not it's not really viable. Um, Steiner's yeah. not wearing anything he needs. We have uh, Vivi, and then Amaranth learns basically nothing. So. Uh, Dude, that dragon exactly animation just fun. scared me because CSR doesn't have it. <laughs> I thought I got the counter. <laughs> That's so funny. Some of these encounters are pretty rough as well. They're pretty scary encounters that you can get here. It's unlikely, especially on HD, but... And also just the fact that you're not really moving much at all in this Great. area. Yeah, you, man. The I don't know what it's called, but it's like some weird dinosaur plant monster thing. It's yeah. real evil. That's a freak. That got, it's got some real nasty poison stuff. I don't know if I've seen anybody in any encounters once we head into Mount Gulag. Um, if they're just going straight for the well. I'm sure you get at least a check. That must be a crazy low check. Because, yeah, everyone I've watched, I've never seen that. You can get it. You can get the birds uh, going in from Masto Gaza, but... Of course, that's gonna happen the next time I do a run now. I'm just gonna get that check. So, Pete, in a bit of a strange situation, he committed to the Steiner attack on one dragon, and it wasn't the dragon that got its turn in, unfortunately. Ooh. Look, there's worse things on the local news. Um, this dragon's fight is definitely salvageable. And if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be Pete. the ATB waiting. Oh my game? god. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh 
<laughs> Whoops. Oh no. Oh. Okay, living. Living. Yeah, he's still confused. I don't actually you know see what, what happened there? It's because uh, I'm used to Steiner in the second spot. Oh, wait. No, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. That's okay. That's right. E Lucky devil. That was a fantastic noise, by the way. I want you to know. Oh, no. <laughs> Bonk. Nice. So Keeper heading into Multi Gemini, which is a... Yeah, again, if you have any Rising Suns, Amaranth can throw them. Um, but for the most part, we'll just be whacking them down with Zidane and uh, Steiner. If you do have Auto Haste here, Zidane can... Uh, if you have Running Shoes on Zidane, he can outspeed Multi Gemini, but he needs a combination of the Running Shoes themselves and uh, Auto Haste. Uh, and there can't be any Triangle Presses to switch um, party members. He barely outspeeds Monster Gemini. It's got to be by like one point. Oh, um, that was quite a slot. No, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I respect the cheeky cure. Absolutely. Pop him up. Get him back in. We're not done yet. Wings everywhere. Oh my god, another grip! 18! Wow! Hello? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, yeah, they, they are in different spots in PSX, right? I did that in practice they before. They are. They are uh, in different yeah. spots. I just. If you, I'm used to attacking BB's the third by person. Amaranth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, I thought you attacked with VV because I saw your third person went I'm like what oh no that's Steiner okay <laughs> I told myself I was gonna put the party members in the PSX order because of that but I forgot I guess yep Two melties down. All right. Last plot city of the game. Coming up. Yep, we got a Limblum 4. Uh, Consider the longest actual break in the game we got. Um, once we go head into the conference room, there's over seven minutes of You're just lucky to get out. <laughs> they lock you in. Yep, and then just full steam ahead to the end of the game. So very action-packed end of disc yeah. three into disc four. I'm really excited for disc four. Hopefully it's super close. Make for a really exciting race. Sorry, section four. <laughs> the worst, okay. I believe that's a, a nod to Mutsky, because Mutsky hates Psycho. There was a there was a fun challenge run that was done a long time ago, actually far before my time, uh, where it was like a race between a couple runners, and and the challenge was that you play the game exactly as normal, but the last bit of damage to the final boss has to be an Ico physical attack. Oh my god! <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay, now Sid's actually back to being a human, which is awesome. What was the what was the reason he he got turned into a Oglop again? Was he like he cheated unfaithful? on Hilda? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he she took his off. airship, yeah, and turned him into a an Oglop, I believe. Honestly, 
he got off pretty easy. Yeah, he did. And she came back. Yeah. Bad mistake, girl. Get out of there. <laughs> you can do better, Hilda. <laughs> <laughs> He does have a pretty cool mustache, though. I would like to see uh, that mustache go even longer, though, and just become like a circle. <laughs> can, we, can, we, can a modder make that happen, please? Maybe in the remake. Yeah, maybe Amaranth can throw him <laughs> with his circle mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Rising Sid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's see if uh, Melty's good to peat. See if he's gonna yep. throw Max around. Tifa with the preempt, let's go. Yep. Yeah, viral smoke. This is the one that uh, I believe is the puts a virus Ooh. on everyone so that they yeah. can't get any uh yeah, they can't get any uh, AP or XP or well, you don't get XP because it's a boss. But uh, no one gets AP from this fight now. It's slow, no AP. Just yeah. destroys everybody. Right. Wings on the Twig Law, but he lives. I respect it. Safety elixir. Yep. Oh. Crikey! It's over. Not yet. <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. At least Tifa won't trans. Say that one. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. Now it's over. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Alright, good. Pretty stock standard Melty, it was just unfortunate, I guess. Um good decision to Elixir Stoner. Uh, that yeah, was very for sure. that was very good. Otherwise, like Pete probably would have wiped. Yep, you can definitely possibly die there, Melty, if you don't heal. Definitely possibly. Definitely possibly. <laughs> Amaranth, squishy. That's squishy. It happens every now and again hundred percent of the time, so <laughs> sixty percent of the time, it's hundred percent of the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. So right now everyone's looking for Garnet, and that's why we get this this uh this big cutscene just run away. Um, we don't know what uh, don't know what's actually going on. Don't know where she is, where she's at. And there's a nice little Scooby Doo esque scene with uh, Zidane and Beatrix coming up on. It'll be coming up on. Uh, keep the screen very shortly. as a reminder for all the lovely people at home this is the rpg limit break final fantasy relay the eighth one teams of like 19 people i think three teams playing through the whole series in a relay style format uh i don't know the, the tallies of like who's won. more the whole series and more we had tactics advance earlier we had a. Uh, I, i'm really sad that i missed that i didn't get to see much of it because it was just not on a good time for australia I would have watched it, but uh, Pete very generously um, offered a commentary spot for me. So I had to actually get some sleep. Um, got a little too much, uh, evidently. And I was a bit late to the party, but... Um, you can you type in a... exclamation point schedule or exclamation point info for runners, schedule, splits, all that good stuff. I believe we have Final Fantasy X coming up next, too. Yep, so it is uh, 
it'll be Final Fantasy X cutscene removed, so it's a much shorter run. Uh, clocks in at about four hours rather than eight and a half. Uh, and it also has the RNG fix, which uh, very deceptively named. Uh, basically, that game features a lot of tracking. I'm sure the 10 runners will uh, cover it, but there's a lot of tracking involved in that game. RNG fix just removes that uh, that aspect, so you don't uh, you can't do those crazy manipulations and, and whatnot. It's basically no manips. There is also a deceptive time loss here in the or time loss potential in this section uh, that easily just passed. There's like one text box, if you've got an auto clicker on, there's one text box that you've got to clear manually. Auto clicker won't do it because there's like two text boxes on the screen. And um, if you're not ready for it, you can definitely, definitely lose some, some time to it. It'll be in the realm of seconds unless you're away from your computer. Um, I think we found the <clears throat> kind of secret area to that was a little millisecond auto clicker. We don't have to deal with Oh, you have to deal with that text anymore. Boxes anymore. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a little, little out of practice for the PC version. Um, I just hate computers, so I try not to run anything on a computer <laughs> when possible. Understandable. <laughs> I say that and then I'm running 8 on PC tomorrow. I, uh, I love computers and the PC version of games. Yeah, as uh, the other commentators touched on earlier, this is pretty much our last big break of the run. There's a smaller break, but you've still got movement and shops interleaved in it. Uh, but this is like your last huge bit of relaxation before it's pretty much gas for the rest of the run. Garnish is going to cut her hair real quick. You know, yeah, which, by the stuff. way, she should look terrible. The way that she did that, that is not how you cut hair whatsoever. Um, like that, she would just have like the the crappiest like bob looking thing. There'd be no, you know, there'd be no layering to it. It'd, it'd be all sticking out and pokey, but she does it, and she looks uh, she looks excellent. So. It's, uh, this game's not realistic, is what I'm trying to say. Got that good knife, RNG. I'm going to head over to Ibsen's Castle, which as a dungeon, it's pretty interesting. It's got a, a nice little quirk with uh, physical attacks. Uh, the Basically, your stronger weapons are actually weaker. So you want to equip the... It's, it's funny, the, the, the shop seems pretty crap in Ibsen's Castle because it's selling like daggers and broadswords and, you know, like javelins and that, just, just bad equipment. But it's actually really useful uh, because, yeah, weaker physical attacks or weaker physical weapons will actually deal way more damage in this dungeon. It's kind of flipped. Uh, but as uh, as speedrunners, you get around that by just using magic instead. Or, if you're a gangster, you land a 10% chance of Steiner putting heat onto Haka. So Steiner's going to use add status for the only point in the run here. Uh... And yeah, basically because he's got a fire weapon, the status that is being added by that ability is heat. So he's going to pop heat onto Haka, and then uh, when Haka tries to take its next turn, it will just die. But it's about a 10% chance to land, and it doesn't really do any damage. It's only doing like 
30 damage per swing so it's not even like uh you know even if it doesn't put heat it's at least contributing to damage uh it's just not really doing much if it doesn't land heat talk about the ori yet at all yeah yeah that's that's another yeah so you can also steal the or calson which is Zidane's uh sort of end game weapon not counting his like super weapons that you can go out and find but it's basically his strongest weapon that you can buy from a shop uh so if you get the steal uh against a haka you save sixteen thousand gil as well as uh yeah i mean you you can also you get it earlier so against the earth guardian boss it will die in like three or four hits rather than like six what would you do with an extra sixteen thousand gil sayo with an extra sixteen thousand gil yeah. i would uh I would buy more bistro forks and throw them at Same. enemy. Yeah, I'd throw them at Nova, probably, if I needed to. Yeah. Yeah, I've never gotten an Ori, unfortunately. I, I have what may be the greatest Earth Guardian split of every runner ever. From the, from the point of killing Tahaka... I got no encounters up to Earth Guardian. I had double auto haste, Knight, and Ori. Wow. And Earth Guardian, Earth, <laughs> Earth, Earth Guardian, Earth Guardian didn't get a single turn either. I put him to sleep straight away. It was glorious, but I have to run against it now, so <laughs> it's <Yeah>. crap. <laughs> well, now you can just get that, but with some crits, and you're good. Uh, yeah, but the likelihood is not good. I think that's in my 902 Japanese run. Yeah, it's that's a good spicy. little segment. Yeah. yeah, it's very very spicy. Alright, we got Keeper coming up to Taharka. Yep. Doesn't get the... You can actually get encounters up at this wall. Um, doesn't look like he's going to, but I might jinx it. Commentator's curse, I'm sorry if it happens. Even on HD you can get it here? I mean, you can, but the again, the likelihood is just so low. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of a PlayStation thing. I was like, oh, be horrible to get it here on HD. Yeah, yeah biggest chance are the longer screens. <clears throat> the, there's also, uh, when you're in Kuja's bedroom, you can get encounters as well. Uh, which I got one on PlayStation, which was very funny. Oh, Keeper wasted some movement, but didn't get punished for it, so it's, it's okay. Jump scare warning, by the way. Tahaka is very loud. I might have been late. Alright, let's see if our Tombri representative can land heat. Gonna cook up this shrimp, mate. Stick one other one on the barbie for me, mate. I'll take the left hook. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> so yeah, if heat doesn't land, then we've got poison ticks going and Vivi casting Faraga. Just gonna see who it targets. There are a, I believe everyone but Vivi needs to survive in this fight, so. Um, yeah, true. It's if it, you can, well, I don't know about this route, but there there are ways you can back things up, but it's not amazing. Yeah. Fast. Yeah, I think the only so, real no go is Freya in this fight. Uh, Zidane again, not learning much here. Uh, and anything on Steiner, we should be able to back up in the last sequence. Before this yeah, point. he's not getting any charge AP now. You can see as well, Keeper very carefully not uh, committing to the Faraga right after Steiner swings. That is because, which has happened to me as well, um, you land the heat, and then the Faraga animation uh, basically lasts long enough to have uh, Tahaka unheat, and then he doesn't die. And so you just rolled a 10% instant kill move, and uh, didn't get the reward for it. <laughs> so...
Nice. That's huge. Yep, good. So um, Freya is, is everyone else you can kind of manage and back up and whatnot. Freya though, she's she's a tricky one. So if you use jump at the end there, you can just remove her from the equation uh, of people that can In a good way, AD. in a good way. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. obviously still get AP, but she can't get AD down. So jumping here at that point is not to deal damage, it's to remove her from the fight. Really good stuff. Okay. Easily stealing an elixir. Not quite good as an Ori, but it's definitely like a... It's not going to be too cut. All things considered, since the fight lasts three turns, elixir's pretty good. Yeah. with a little bit of misplay here not quite getting enough poison ticks to have the to have Tahaka go down it's just this uh, this boss as well typically most runners will have like a calculator to their side and they'll actually be counting the damage that they're dealing this fight is very difficult to count damage on because those poison ticks are occurring the whole time sometimes when Tahaka is eat, like off the screen so you don't see that you get the tick. Um, and it's all just happening really fast, so... Um, yeah. Well backed up by Easley. But, um, yeah, it's just unfortunate there. And so here, without uh, Rebirth Ring, Keeper's going to need to pick up that item we talked about earlier, uh, the Maiden yep. Prayer. Um, we're not going to be able to sell it for anything, so pretty much... Yeah, it's There's with no one guild. It <laughs> um, it's this is just one that, time loss. Yeah. If you have rebirth, that is. This is another one of those games where uh, elixirs are also not worth. It's not like uh, Final Fantasy II where it's worth 25k. Uh, you can't sell elixirs either for any extra money. Yeah, elixirs are also one guild, aren't they? Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Elixirs one guild. Ribbon one guild. In stark oh, contrast stuff. to ethers, which are like a K. <laughs> yeah, contrast to those uh, angel earrings from earlier. Yep, nice ten. Angel earrings are uh, like functionally identical to maiden prayer, which is really funny. But they just sell for ten K instead of one. It's really, it's a nice little like silly quirk. It's like the difference between. Uh... The Magisite. Which 12. game is this? 12. Oh, 12. 12. Yeah. 12. I, I know nothing about 12 other than that game as a speedrun is insanely difficult. Uh, well, a lot of respect for people who run 12. Probably the coolest, though, because you do some pseudo programming with the Gambit system. The only thing that I, the, the, the main thing that I know is that uh, that game has, you know, we're talking about cutscene RNG in this game. I reckon chest RNG is much, much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the chests in that game have a range of gill that you can get and then like three items and you'll just get whatever. It's not, it's not set in stone. I, just, I could not imagine walking up to that chest in Mount Gulag with like 9,000 gil in it and getting anything else. I have no idea what I would do. So Pete, look to me going for the steel first. Uh, not going to do the poison ticks. Possibly hoping for a trance. Yeah, trance would actually be quite good. Uh, it would allow Pete to get some shift breaks or solution 9. I can't remember which one you used. Um, and then Zidane will actually contribute much more towards damage, like rather um, instant damage rather than just like poison ticks. It's also interesting um, with a heat possibility too. Merely steel makes it more likely to get that Ori and then yeah. that heat. 
So all around, I like that play. So I think Pete just queued up the Soul Blade before Trent, so it will still happen as a Soul Blade. Yeah. If you um, can queue something before, it will yeah. start. There's a few, few little minor quirks you can do around that. Yeah, Actually, that's what you wanted. Uh, sorry, it works the same with Freya's jump later on. That using her yeah. regular jump over her trans jump is, is really crucial. So if you can get it queued up at the right time, you can actually uh, avoid dealing with trans jumps. Well, if you're good enough, you just do trans jump blindfolded. Could you do that, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Could just guess which cycle you're on. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that later. I, uh, I can just feel it in my nose, mate. Smell it. You could smell that. You could smell that it was the second cycle. Smell cycle. Yeah. yeah. None of our runners, unfortunately, getting heat. Yeah, it's a ten percent chance, I believe. Every time you land yeah. a melee attack with that with that weapon, it's it's very slim. It's very slim indeed. Yeah, I think we're looking at a twenty eight percent chance across all the turns. Yeah, the way it's statistically ramps up. That makes sense. Yeah, no heat for any of our runners. Uh, got Earth Guardian as well coming up. Earth Guardian. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll launch into it later. We've got some cutscenes before. Um, yep, we so we're dropping. We can, we can touch on it. So Earth okay. Guardian... Earth Guardian is a pretty cool fight. Um, in this route, it's very bare bones. Uh, it's Zidane is the damage. Earth Guardian has just over 15,000 HP. Zidane hits for about 2,500 on average, so just over. Well, no, he does. He has 25,000 HP. He has correct. Sorry, you are right. Yeah, is it twenty five? <laughs> it's about. It's, it's 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 in the realm of twenty five. Fifteen? No, it's twenty two. It should be. Yeah, it should be twenty something. Because fifteen point five k is three quarters of his HP, which is the important bit. Because yeah. Earth Guardian is not considered a heavy enemy, and all other bosses up until this point, I believe, are considered heavy enemies, which means that you can't kill them with instant death effects. However, <laughs> Earth Guardian, you can. You just don't really have access to anything at this point because you're so limited on your party. But one thing you can do is if you reduce his HP down below 75%, Winner can eat it. So you don't and need to learn Earth Shake. <laughs> and learn Earth Shake. It doesn't really do anything for us, but yeah, the main thing that we're looking to do is, is kill him like 4,000 HP before we're meant to. Yeah. yeah 2756. So unfortunately, 20... Pete. Had his limit 27. trigger. 27. 20, uh, 20, 20, for oh, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a quarter off. Just over. Yeah. Yeah, 25 seemed like a bit of an overshoot after I said it. But yeah, he. Um, yeah, so the main things that we want to look out for is uh, Quinn has got pretty much resistance or it will absorb any kind of magic damage right now. Uh, Zidane and Quinn both have Gaia gear, so if he does Earthquake. Uh, or Earthshake, I can't remember which one. Uh, that'll heal the party. Uh, Firaga, Blizzaga, Thundaga, ATC will either be guarded or heal Quinner. And will deal damage to Zidane, but he's quite beefy. The big threat is Double Slash, which is physical attacks. Uh, and Quinner will almost certainly die, unless it's like a low roll defend. Uh, Zidane there can die goes. on a crit. Is that followed up with an attack? Oh dear, I tried to take a preempt. Should be okay. Yeah, the only thing that's really bad here is a double slash high roll. Yeah, Firag is fine. So we're going to want to pick Quinner back up here for a little bit of security. Uh, yeah. All magic is reduced considerably against Zidane, and he absorbs Earth. Quinner yeah. nullifies everything, absorbs lightning and Earth, but is only weak to fire. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Firag every. I, I, I said, I said every. Yeah, that okay. Go. This is cool. So Faraga on not Quinner will be okay. Yep. That's fine. Defending with Quinner here is good as well because defending in this game actually increases your evasion by about 50%. Earthshake, perfect. This is going to give everyone all the health back. Yep. Back in action. If you have, uh, I was talking about those knight strats before. If you have knight, of course, a sleeping enemy will take more physical damage. So if you are putting Earth Guardian to sleep, you can um, get in a few turns early, but Knight's a slow animation. I don't think it saves much time without auto haste as well. Blizzaga won't matter regardless um, of the target. Yeah, Knight, Knight does, it certainly saves time. It also makes the fight more consistent. 
It's just yeah. the, the, the disparity of learning night is very, yeah. very frequently uh, worth it. Just for this fight, if you're able to use night elsewhere, it becomes good. I um, think Salty Cell um, had a route where it, it would change. He would basically pivot to MPUs if he uh, if he did get the opportunity to learn night. I don't uh, know if he ever actually ran that. Oh, really? Okay. He might have flexed. It. He at least he at least had a route that that could pivot depending on whether or not you get the opportunity to to pick up night. Looks like Easley's had a, a bit of a chance to catch up here. Yeah, this fight's not really coming up uh, Keeper. The heals are nice, but yeah. That'll be it. That's the double slash whiff on Easley. And nom 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 nom. No, no, check. Faraga on Quinner, not looking too good. Yeah, that'll, yeah, that does do a lot of damage. Easily in a very similar situation to the one that uh, Keeper BK found himself in earlier. Yeah, so even in PSX, Zidane's in a position where uh, Double Slash can actually kill him in one, so we really want to avoid that if we can. Yeah, any other spell is fine. He'll take damage from all of them except for Earthshake, but it's only three to five hundred. It's not too bad. And he's got auto regen. So it's good. Yeah. It's going to null it quite a lot. You definitely want to get this PD off, though. Ironically, it's also something we're hoping for, to get that uh, counter, too, to end the fight one turn sooner. Yeah. Yeah, Zidane can counterattack. There's a decision that you can make based on Zidane's transfer if you want to potentially save some time, as Pete almost had the opportunity to do. You can chuck on high tide if Zidane's kind of close to trancing, mm -hmm. and then um, Earth Guardian will go down in considerably less attacks. Yeah. Zyger on uh, Quinner won't matter, because that will just be guarded. You want to try and get a grand, grand Lethal off or something like that when you hit yeah. trance. That's a lot of mana, though. I think it's 60 or something. Hey, uh, we have our first contender in Terra. So if you were looking for a Final Fantasy IV stream, here we are. We finally made it to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> And Garland does kind of look like uh, Golbez a little bit. He's got similar armor, I guess. Yeah, um, there's also that the Kuja element that they were really searching for, the, the long-lost brother kind of idea that suddenly yeah. appears and is evil. Um, so you got that. Um, but this is the kind of play into for the idea of, okay, we need to go to essentially another planet to solve this problem with um, who's haunting us. So some of the encounters in the um, in Terra are, are pretty pretty bad actually. They can they can really slow you down. There is another one which probably won't really get seen. is <laughs> It's a big old pink pile of eyes. It's actually undead, and if you if you use life on it and kill it, Zidane actually gains a big surplus of experience, which can make death guys a bit more reliable as well as no dragon. But on HD, because of the much lower encounter rate, you're way less likely to. Uh, have it be useful. That's weird, Brutals. I thought your uh, your favorite encounter here was the Movers. Oh, I love the Movers. <laughs> I love the Movers. Yeah, there is a another monster. Fortunately, you can flee from any of these things. But the Movers, they're just these three little pink dots that float around and do attacks and whatnot. But you they each have, like... 6 to 8k HP or something. They're kind of beefy. There's a lot of HP between the three of them. And um, some people have run this game fleeless. You're not allowed to use quick fleas or regular fleas to 
escape from any fights. You have to you fight must... everything. You have to fight everything. <laughs> it can be pretty, pretty minging. <laughs> and uh, I lost a run to those guys because I was not prepared. Ah, the Firaga on Twitter, please, dude. The double Firaga on Quinna. Man, this could have been such a big time save for Pete. This sucks. Yeah. This really sucks. Oh, at least he didn't get another one down there. That's lucky. Alright, is this one lethal? Is this enough? No. Check it for crits. Nice little earth shake. This should be the final turn. So you can see on a uh, easily screen, we didn't. I'm not sure if it was touched on uh, hugely, but basically, um, we're getting all the gear that we don't want off the characters that we're not going to use for the rest of the run um, to use on other people, which includes daggers. Uh, Dagger had the rebirth ring. Uh, if the runner has the rebirth ring, it's usually equipped to dagger just to normalize menus. Uh, make them a bit more consistent and now we've retrieved it because we're going to be using it Man, FF9 has really 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 pulled these times together yeah, I know. Hey, it's, it's returning at like team post race, man. 16, 16 minute deficit that Pete had before has now been closed in to like four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's it's very much one part, um, one part like the run itself being so random, and another part, um, yeah, all these guys have been playing super super well, um, but Pete definitely like doing a lot of. Uh, a lot of good work to to keep this race on, uh, really really close. Yeah, I can't wait to see what ten does. I don't know how much uh, RNG or how variable ten is, but I'm assuming it's ten's, ten's pretty weird. bad. It, it feels like there shouldn't be any like variance in that game. But there just is, <laughs> like, because you're you you set your stats in a way that's very like the fights the fight strategies are literally like. Turn one, do this. Turn two, do that. Turn three, do this. Turn four, do this, and then you win. But like, so, so much variance in it. <laughs> it's crazy. There's encounters too, and that, of course. Yeah, encounters, of course. Yeah, yeah. it's so bizarre because it, it it really doesn't seem like uh, like, you know, there's very few fights in ten that are like, if this happens, then respond with this. But. You know, still, it's a it's a game that can be controlled and mastered and all that good stuff. <laughs> so BK doing a doing a big sell here, getting some coronets and uh, oracalsons. momentarily going to be moving into Pandemonium. Yep. Um, I don't know if... Another the, uh, the... FF2 reference, I believe. Yeah, I don't know if the, uh, the channel moderators and whatnot want to pop the audio over for You Are Not Alone, perhaps, but uh, it is... 100%. It is, it is one of the tunes of all time. <laughs> it is... I'm going to wave the tune flag when it starts. I'm going to wave the tune flag now. Yeah. The power chords are unreal. So one one last menu, um, put, to put the Oricalcon that we've bought from the shop in, in, in Brandbar onto Zidane, along with some other gear to give him the firepower that he's going to need to deal with these mini bosses. So part of the reason as well in this route that you do a, a lot of selling here 
typically on PlayStation, you'll just see runners jump in, buy the stuff that they need and leave, but you've got to do some more selling here because you need to invest in the Bistro Fork because it's just a difference in the route that, that changes. Uh, it, it, it makes the kill on Andusius because Zidane, I believe you, you KO Zidane uh, for this fight. I'm not 100% yes. sure though, I'll leave it in yes. this route. The, the results do? are the same, but the issue is that um, I believe even with the Bistro Fork, you can still low roll. It just the chances are way, way, way lower. No, oh, well, well, yeah. Because I think they, you need to you need to low roll with Zidane and then also with the Bistro Fork. The Zidane uh, has no influence on the damage. Oh, okay. There, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because you attack and you push yeah. the phase, and then after that, you, you set up you set up lethal and the Bistro Fork. I believe it can low roll. Um, whereas yeah, but the, the wing edge would just would never get even get close. No, the wing yeah, edge can low roll, but Freya can always follow up or something. So his throw is based on strength um, here. So I think that's yeah. a, a big difference between this one and PSX where you might have more Easy strength. He looks to have made yeah. a mistake he way weaker. reloads to go and give that shop a second try. I was noticing but, he didn't have enough gil for the, the Bistro Fork that we're talking so so highly about. Yeah, you may need to like sell one or two. I, I, no, I did the menu following it. Not that one. Where you buy those the three eye weapons instead. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, that's a uh, a good aspect of PC, I guess, is that you can just reload the screen. Oh, Aura Carlson's 17,000. I thought it was 16. They're expensive. So actually, yeah. a minor optimization I found out about the other day is that if you do manage to see, steal the Ori from um, Tahaka, you can actually do Zidane's pandemonium menu when you're um, stripping everyone else outside of Brambell. Oh, nice. You can actually condense Oh, them. yeah, because he would, he would have everything that he needs. Hey, yeah, you're right. You can condense them. He won't have the coronet on, which doesn't really matter. You don't buy it to learn anything. Um, but it should completely smooth out when you do the rest of the menu after you know I only found out about that maybe about two weeks ago <laughs> crazy huh Uh, he's sitting on some gear right now, he just doesn't pick it up himself. Oh, the Holy Mitre, you mean? Yep. I, man, when someone told me there was a Holy Mitre, I thought that was like a staff. It's a hat, right? <laughs> 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 Mitre sounds like a... Bonk. How Get do you blessed. spell it? Get blessed, stupid. <laughs> M-I-T-R-E. -M -I <laughs> oh, that's funny. There's a, a shop in Australia called Mitre 10. Oh, yeah? yeah they sell holy mitres. Yeah, you can buy 10 hats. Nice. Yeah, look at that. That's actually interesting. It teaches body temp. Mm. Oh, it's perfect for dagger. <laughs> um, I don't think... But well, Amaranth can wear it. Is it Amaranth uh, can wear it? All the people we don't take can wear it. Everybody else cannot. Anyone? Oh, that's really good. Yeah, no, that's good. Can and Amaranth is even wear it. No, I'll route that just in. Just BB Dagger, Quina, Ico. Perfect. I'll route it in for Disc 4, Quina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first fight, top right here we've got... Um, keeper is Amducias. So we're actually just going to chill. We're going to wait. We're going to sit here and we're going to twiddle our thumbs. It'll always open with bio, it'll never mm -hmm. kill, and even the poison ticks are sort of negated by Zidane having... Uh, I don't even think the poison's stuck. Uh, but, yeah, Zidane's got auto-regen on, so it, um, even if he did uh, have the poison stick, it wouldn't really do anything. Yeah, it would just nullify itself. So, gonna need a little bit of help from Freya? Has Amducius also just made himself a bird? He's already a bird, mate. Yeah, see the wings? He's always Jeez. a bird. Oh, nice. Big stinky burb. 
So now in this section of the fight, we're going to let him have his turn off the natural dodge from Amaranth. That's actually really rare. So we're going to have yeah. Z smack himself, and then we're going to have Amaranth with the beast stroke pork. Amaranth's whiff animation is like when an attack misses against him. It's, so it's very smooth. Hey, we got perfect. This is exactly the fight you want to see. That was yeah. That was textbook. Clinical by Kiko. We're on a fort. The horse is gone. Some uses uh, is very interesting for the booster run. Uh, if you, you don't usually equip anything. It's actually the first fight um, where you can just straight die. You just get one shot and die. So if you don't do level up uh, before Ambusius, you just get soft locked and uh, can't progress. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Welcome to autosave. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Uh oh, open high winds. Oh no. This guy's been getting you recently, yeah. hasn't he, Mel? So, oh, yeah. Abaddon, Abaddon has a pretty scary move called high wind, uh, just having to keep her. Quinn, it doesn't matter here, but Steiner learns charge from this fight. Steiner absolutely, absolutely needs to live. Mm -hmm. uh, in some routes, you can have Steiner attack himself to heal because he'll absorb thunder damage, and Coral Sword is outputting thunder damage. Uh, you, can do, right. you can technically do that in any route, but the thing that makes it viable is if you survive Melty Gemini, he will learn Accuracy Plus much earlier. Yeah. And then you can substitute Accuracy Plus over Manita and re-equip that later. So during this encounter, he'll have Accuracy Plus, so he won't be able to miss himself due to his own natural uh, distract evasion. Yeah. So if, you, if you've so done that, you can attack yourself and spend like six mana on a full, full HP bar. Zidane getting a turn in there very much like normalized the fight for big uh, for keeping BK. There was really nothing that could go wrong once that uh once Zidane got that turn in first, because the risk is is Abaddon high wind Zidane goes down, and then like the fight's just in shambles. Mm -hmm. And I think because the last screen you entered doesn't count because you didn't actually walk yourself to the screen. Uh, I'm fairly confident that it puts you back in Enthusiast in HD. Yep, that's where your honestly is, I believe. Yeah. Because this is all just a cutscene. Um, I mean, for Shell Dragon, it puts you on Shell Dragon. Right. Okay. At least at Abaddon, then you would get put back to Ambitious. Shell Dragon as well. Uh, so the other party members have joined the fight at like sort of fixed points, but uh, Shell Dragon is unique because Garnet will not appear until Zidane is in crit health, and then she'll heal him back to full. One strategy that you can use is to have the Rebirth Ring on Zidane, <gasps> so he'll whack himself. <laughs> But basically, we're going to be, uh, because we've got like a list of the damage uh, outputs that, that Shell Dragon can do in what situations, such as defending, fleeing, etc. Uh, so, yeah, there because Keeper had the, uh, had over 16,000, oh, sorry, 1,600 and whatever health, uh, Shell Dragon could not kill, but could only put him in crit. And yeah, perfect, perfectly, uh, perfectly played. Zidane got to crit, Garnet's rocked up, and now it's. Three attacks Smash to this kill is Shell Dragon. This is perfect. Smash you will set a character to one HP. Um, and on Garnet, that's uh, that's very good because just then don't you don't do have another to smash, please. Let's shake. This is going to heal Dagger up. So Keeper's going to want to take Dagger out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we so if, if Zidane accidentally crits here and, and Dagger's still alive, he's going to distribute a lot of that experience, which is really bad. To a character that that we have literally zero use for in the speedrun as well. <laughs> yeah. So right now is it on? Oh, there it is. Right on time. <laughs> it was really well handled. Nice. Whoa. Nice. Can I see? Yeah. Perfectly, perfectly executed by Keeper VK. All three of those fights, absolutely excellent. I hate to uh, I hate to commend a a green runner, but uh, <laughs> I hate to commend those greens, but uh, now nah, Keeper played that super well. So another thing you can do on that fight, uh, you see in other routes, is actually equip Rebirth um, for the first part and Suicide Zidane, pushing you to, to stage two. Um, but on PC, there's no route we use that does that. But it's, it instantly gets you to the second stage of that fight. You don't have to worry about um, Shell Dragon low rolls or anything like that. Interesting strat. Right, time for Pandemonium Menu. Yep. This is the big one. Here comes no. the big one. 
It's the basically works. your last big chance in the speedrun to buy everything you need and sell everything you need, so we'll <laughs> make full use of that opportunity. It's also your last chance in the speedrun to sell something that you so desperately need to take into yeah. the game and mess everything up. <laughs> One of the reasons as well you may have, uh, the, the, the lovely people at home may have noticed, uh, during all the selling menus and whatnot, uh, there has been the broadsword and the javelin, or partisan, I can't remember which one, have not been sold. It's not because of any, like, it's not because they're not worth much or anything, it's actually because you want to replace Steiner and Freya's good weapons that they currently have with bad weapons so that you can sell them and get more money for uh, healing items and whatnot. Keep it getting a lot of uh, high potions in lieu of Phoenix Downs, which is very... Uh, I would have taken like 40 or 50 with, with as much money as Keeper had, truthfully. But... Yeah. I guess that's why Keith is running the game and I'm, uh, I'm just watching. Level 23. Nope, is it good? 29. It's a... Uh, 33. I'm at, I'm at a slight disadvantage as the menus in, even though the menus in HD are actually the same, the way that you navigate them in PSX works very, very differently. So, you can see <laughs> so many more of them. It's not even that, it's just the way that you tab around and whatnot. The, oh, right, yeah, that that as well, yeah. The menu navigation is quite fundamentally different. There's, there are different techniques that you can use in HD and I'm, I'm unfamiliar. So if I'm seeing a menu done on PSX, I have a hard time like keeping up with uh, what they have and haven't got enabled. <laughs> It's a weird sort of minigame that Keeper's... Oh, oh yep, yep, ahead. easily as well. Um, so there's a weird little sort of minigame, I guess. The 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 thing that Keeper just set before to four will uh, basically change where these elevators go. And so this is pretty much the setting it to four. Gives you the best way to get to the top of this area. I don't know how anyone will figure this out casually, truthfully. Just keep trial and error. Yeah, but with encounters there as well. Yeesh. Smash onto down here is a little bit awkward. Ca casually, there's always encounters. Oh, Pete's in trouble. Go for the high roll? Yeah, dude. I'm assuming he hasn't got accuracy plus, but then again, he probably only made that decision knowing that he did. Alright. It looks like he's out. Yep, easily is Freezely. So keep it going into a little <laughs> yeah. boss rush here. Um, first of which is pretty scary. He's got Aerial Slash uh, and Twister, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and then he's also got Shockwave. Uh, you pretty much need your whole party to survive. Um, there's some pretty crucial AP here from the Silver Dragon. Uh, and it's, yeah, it can do some AoE damage and be pretty painful, but it goes down in uh, five attacks as long as there's not two amaranth attacks in there, there needs to be at least two from No, five else. is fine, I believe it's only got yeah, one. Yeah, okay. should be fine. So, okay. Yeah, maybe a different, maybe different route confusion. Um, but, yeah, basically five attacks, you just want to make sure that you bang them out as quick as possible. I don't know if Steiner's going to get his second turn here, though. We're really the, hoping for yeah, uh, counter quick. attacks. Um, the big thing with the next two bo boxes, bosses, though, is uh, they can only do single target attacks. So they're pretty safe as long as you don't end up with two party members somehow. Aerial slash won't really matter. That's pretty good. Minimal damage good any. Yeah, great fight. Yeah, I think that, guards. It's that really makes Silver Dragon the, the biggest bad here um, with that possible double shock wave under. Yeah. But at this point, everyone's got their accuracy plus, so no one should be whiffing. At this point as well, this route uses um, a lot of counter, which yeah. 
when you've got it on all four of your pointers, it, it has a very good chance to trigger at least one. Uh, and Shockwave has the potential <laughs> to trigger it. It can do some pretty good damage. Shockwave also being a, a physical AoE attack rather than a... It looks like a spell, but it is physical damage. So yeah. fleeing during Shockwave will result in a wipe most of the time. Tell me rules how uh, that counter works out when you only have one person left going into Garland. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> So, these so Garland as well, you can easy. steal. Uh, you can steal something pretty neat off Garland here if you're a uh, if you're a cool guy like me. Uh, you can steal battle boots, which gives Freya. You you equip it onto Freya, but you get uh, initiative, which means that you have a much higher likelihood of getting a back attack against uh, encounters and, and whatnot. So when you're walking around a memoria grabbing a getting your random encounters your 19,000 encounters sounds amazing with that one encounter that you get in pandem in disc four yeah on hd it's three times that one encounter you're gonna get it's gonna be a pretty yeah five seconds <laughs> yep it's very much uh it's not a huge not a huge time save truthfully but it is it is very fun i think there's also you can get ninja gear as well i think which is actually really bad because it keeps optimizing onto Zidane and then I don't know what I'm equipping onto him because it's I usually only run that route in JP I and I'm even like what's that? Just matters because he's wearing power burst. I can have a look at what Ninja Gear does. I don't think it does much. I mean it that it is it is actually one of the more powerful uh, yeah pieces of gear, but I don't think it's... not in the speed run though. In the speed run doesn't really matter. Ninja Gear and Pete is free from Yana. There you go. Yes. Absorbs shadow and it's got plus one speed. Very oh, look at that. speed. That will very effectively bring his strength down. Ah, it has eye for eye. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, there we go. Get that counter uh, right up. So I think Keeper, Keeper might opt for Luna Kuja here. Luna being a, um, a ability Freya has that casts Berserk on all targets on the field. Uh, so, yeah, you would just deal a lot more damage and... It doesn't look like he's going for it, actually. Two crispy cramps. I guess it would depend on, on what, uh, what hey, old mate that, does I mean, No damage, let's go. I, it, <laughs> this has been a really good rush for easily because normally you have to throw a couple PDs during this entire sequence and everyone looks pretty healthy. Yeah. Wait, did you say easily? Did you mean keep a BK? Yes. Okay. Did be keeper. What did I say? Easily. I mean, yeah, easily hasn't had to throw any PDs. Um, no, not yet. <laughs> on this section yet either. So, be pretty good for easily. Thank. Yeah, I'm a. It is eight in the morning. You have to forgive me. Grow up. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, <laughs> 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 hey, birds. I forgive you right now. Thank He's you. He's almost looking solid too. Much love, easily. <laughs> I hope, I hope Brother Keeper isn't too mad at me. Big Bro Keeper. So if you want more illusions to other games, uh, here's the Ultima cast coming from Kuja. Uh, in 2, you're able to cast it yourself, but here Kuja somehow found it. So it's being used on us, so... Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost at disc four. Let's open the disc tray of my computer and switch. Yeah. Switch over. <laughs> there we got easily going into the uh, three part rush here. Um, you need to take each boss back to back. So if you lose to one, you got to restart the whole sequence. Yep. Oh, really? Oh, wow. shockwave opener for easily. This is what we don't want to see. Oh, it takes out Freya and Amaran. Oh. No. Oh. oh. This does put charge on the table. Oh, counterattack as well. It does nice. put charge on the table, but I don't think it's going to be that useful. Double shockwave is such a threat here now as well. Or aerial slash. Oh, aerial slash will just uh, do nothing. No, aerial slash will take out Freya. Yeah, it actually. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's all, yeah, it's just, this is actually fine. Twister. You do a PD um, yep. charge and then attack, and that should be lethal. Okay. 
He's going through without picking it up. Oh no. Okay, might have to take a slightly slower garland just to get back into the fight. But, uh, so is... Sorry, come. No, I was gonna say, uh, what you um, usually want to see for a charge strat is three characters uh, in crit here to make it really viable. Um, so Nane usually has, I think he always has auto regen on, so he's never a viable candidate to be prior to the charge. Mm -hmm. um, but if we get everybody else, then I think that's the only time when it makes sense turn order wise. And uh, actually, Jack makes a really good point. She is just going to self rise because of auto life. Whoa! So she won't get a preempt, but well, I'm sure that's fine. Taking the preempt charge? Ah! No way. Wait, is this a wave? No. Go on. Not. I mean, as long as it's not Amaran. Oh, wait. Kill. Because we dodged, right? Holy moly. Whoa. <laughs> Holy moly. That was a lot of damage. <laughs> it's actually so rare to see a uh, to see it land. Wave is usually whiffed. Yeah. I yes, didn't, sir. I didn't know it hit that hard. Even Amaran yeah. usually can dodge. It's, uh, that's not a very awesome wave, if I'm honest. Oh, got him. And Pete following up behind with Silver yeah. Dragon. Great ATVs what? to start. <laughs> Ooh. They're holding ATVs. Well, nice crit. Stop the take. Sorry. It's going to let uh, uh, get a nice. triple mine. Okay. It's lethal. Fight. He's got three. Should be nice. Oh wait, no, Amaran. Ah, uh, Amaran follow-up. No, not quite. Just short. That's a psychokinesis on Hoomst. Hoomst does this target. Brother Zidane. Yeah, so what easily can do here by keeping uh, Zidane in in crit. Um, with auto regen, when you're holding ATB, um, it doesn't proc any of the health ticks. Yeah, no health ticks, no poison ticks, no nothing. And, yeah. Easily heading into the last boss of the rush. Pete trailing very, very um, uh, closely behind. Another, oh, another wave, wave hit. Wow. So keep it coming up to the the great another great equalizer, which is Nova Dragon. Um, it's one of those fights where it could just go good, or or Nova Dragon just pull out all the stops. That's another one of those fights where double shock wave is likely to cause a lot of issues. If not a total team wipe, it's gonna be one where you're uh, you're trying hard to get all your team members back up. With Keeper being uh, rebirthed, so I was just thinking, uh, he might run his specialty Kraken uh, two turn. Oh, yeah, with the tower. Oh my gosh, so many crits.
Keeper skipping through some of these FMVs. Probably some of the coolest uh, FMVs the game has to offer right here, but being HD, you just pass by them. We have our uh, first what? Luna of the relay happening right now. Yeah. Looks like it. Oh, yes, yeah, it's kind of a shame that the FMVs uh, can be skipped in some way. It's a bit of a shame because like they're really cool FMVs and they they look awesome even still today. But if you can skip it, it's a speed run. Why not? Yeah. The cool part about HD though, um, once you do finish the game, it allows you to uh, I, maybe even before that, but uh, it allows you to rewatch the FMVs from the start menu. Oh, so, that's cool. Yep. So anything you did, just breeze by. You can go back and just enjoy to your heart's content. So Nova Dragon as well, very tough enemy. Somewhat similar to um, to that Silver Dragon that we fought earlier. It's got access to Twister. It's got access to Shockwave. Uh, a much, much more powerful version, though. Um, However, and... none of that matters, does it? None yeah, of it matters. Yeah. He's also none got a counter attack. He's got a counter nope, attack. Doesn't matter. Sometimes. Doesn't matter. Watch it's this. It's free. Luna's it's just free. Psychokinesis, my friend, you have perished. You have perished. Your turn has ended. Ray's gonna get back up here. Oh no, there's no rebirth on this one. Yeah. So as long as Shockwave doesn't just manage to kill everyone somehow, it literally can't. He has no real way out here, I don't think. Not nah, Ch Chattelbert. Chattelbert Steiner. Oh, a miscounter right there. This Shockwave is fine. If anything, it's going to set him up for the triple crit on Malarest. Maybe a, yeah. uh, a counter? Oh, today. Huh? oh I Chris, guess. Crispy sorry, counter? Freya. Nice clean 310. Very nice. Look at that counter. Woo. Beautiful. Very Love good. That. Yep, Luna, it's, it's quite simple if you want to make a decision. If uh, Nova Dragon opens with either Aerial Slash or Tidal Wave with this given setup, it does such minimal amount of damage that if you use Luna, as long as it doesn't open with um, Shockwave and like counter you a bunch, he shouldn't be able to kill you. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, it does happen. It definitely <laughs> happens. So to say it doesn't happen very often, I'm probably going to have someone get mad at me. Um, because when it happens, when it rains, oh, it pours. Because I've seen people lose many runs back to back to Lunar on Nova. It does do that. It's pretty oh. much the last time that, that you'll see no, um, Luna as well, unfortunately. Oh, not pretty much. It is the last time that you'll see Luna, unfortunately, just because the following bosses are just just not as... Uh, what about death guys, though? Oh, Luna yeah. death guys. Yeah, Everybody lives. <laughs> Try it out. You never know. I think maybe a Luna Malyris if you just get no Freya death here with Rebirth. It could work out, but... I did have a bit of fun and do a Lunar on Transcuja the other week. Actually worked out quite quick. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just get lucky with those no flare star counters. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I was like, what? He did the one for the one definite one and then an extra one straight after it, but it missed on Steiner. What a terribly nice guy. And Steiner can take three um uh flare stars before they would kill him even if he takes the full damage every time. We got Keeper in that elusive disc for Memoria. Yep. No encounters yet. Oh no, first screen you can't get encounters, that's right. This next screen's really, really long. You're usually gonna cop an encounter here, but we'll see. Especially if you go and pick up a tower, it does add an extra check, which most PC runners do. You get the tower, this is Zidane's big endgame weapon. Of course, not counting, um, like his ultimate weapon. So, ninety percent of this would start your your big spot of just menu buffering uh, all the way to Transcuja. You can skip uh, all the fiends and death guys. As well as there's a uh, one cutscene about 15 seconds long you can skip as well. Oh, oh, I, I got really 
confused there. I was wondering what what just happened to yeah. Keeper. He just yeah, as he exited a, the menu. It was a random battle, mate. Yeah, that uh, like it, it just looked weird because it was like as he was exiting the menu. So this is an interesting encounter here. Uh, anytime you attack it, it will counter attack you. Um, so if you are picking to choose one, this one is not a good ch not a good choice. There's actually an interesting encounter you could get. Uh, it's the... Oh jeez. The flying guy. Like oh, the mode. evil eye. The evil eye looking thing. Yeah. Called, yeah, the veterans in this game. Yeah, called... the veterans. Veterans. Yeah, I believe they're called like Ariman as well in other FF titles. Yeah. So, those guys can cast Roulette, uh, which is just randomly selects even themselves, possibly as a death choice. Um, so if you get one of those, you could accidentally push the character to a level 5 scenario, um, which we don't want to be in for Death Guys later on. A level 5 scenario, out of context, sounds so horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> like something you'd hear in like a, a, a Report, movie about the Pentagon level five or something. Scenario. Report, send the, send the trauma team. <laughs> <laughs> the veteran roulette it himself. It's a level 5 scenario! <laughs> No, sorry, I can't hold on. I'm speedrunning. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's a level 5 scenario? He's like, well, actually, when an enemy cast level 5 death <laughs> in English. <laughs> Warning. Warning. Level 5 scenario detected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what he's actually referring to is oh, just being Warning. a multiple of five similar threat to uh, Soul Cage for those who went around for that. <laughs> so Keeper's gonna have to be uh, very careful with uh, how he takes damage here, he's gonna have to count. Because um, Mel Iris does do a final stand. And we need one player. Uh, in this particular route, it has to be Freya for AP. Clean. Very clean. No, and easily seeing the open shockwave. This is such a pain. Maybe everyone? No. Gonna have to do some damage, damage recovery here, but you could potentially yep. get a charge in. Any counters? No counters. Doesn't look like it. So, clean fight for Keeper without Rebirth Ring. Right, there's nowhere to be seen. The uh, the awkward part of um, the Nova Dragon fight in this scenario is is because Tidal Wave will damage Zidane and heal Freya, an Aerial Slash, or it might be the, the other way around. Um, but yeah, out of Tidal Wave and Aerial Slash, Freya will get killed by one and Zidane gets healed by it. Or Zidane gets damaged by it and Freya gets healed by it or guards it. So you can't really rely on... on you have to just kind of take a guess in some situations. It's, oh, he's actually going for the Luna. He's pushing the Luna. Looks like Pete also got shockwaved here. I need time save. With a now. counter! Ooh, living. Yeah, Pete's in a good spot for charge strats, so no counters on anybody, but hey, it has... is not bad here, actually. It's not the worst. You want to see no counters here. That's good. Steiner is our most valuable asset here. Counter on Freya. Connection? Disconnection. Round Z. Looks like the counter's coming. <gasps> Aerial slash. Alright, Freya's down. This should be enough. Yeah, Steiner and Z both do heaps of heaps of damage in this fight. Okay, so no counter on Steiner. This is over. This is not. This is fine. They, they live through this easily. Yeah, but e easily eighteen. <laughs> Kill them. Bonk! Oh, the counter! <laughs> and a crit, critical Whoa. counter. Yeah, Pete opting not to go for the Luna. It's simply 
very, very risky what Aisley just did. It's just risky. It's not Dude, recommended. But I have one question for you. Did it work? If you oh, absolutely worked. Oh. It worked, didn't it? Did you die? I should say. Exactly. I would, you hate that one. I would <laughs> you hate slap that one. you. Did that I hate DP that. work? <laughs> the uppercut landed. Damn, Pete, I was correct. Pete gets by with Chattelberg. Meanwhile, we have Keeper BK going into the TMF fight. Uh, very weird. You would imagine this would be a bird. It is only a dragon in the situation. So, luckily, we have Freya with the Barbed Helmet to get some late-game dragon killer. But otherwise, everybody else is just hitting like a wet noodle. Yeah, those wings, they're those not wings actually are wings. They're fake yeah. wings. They're for making jet fire me. They're yeah. cosmetic wings. They're cosmetic for show. Wings. It's He's cosplaying as a real dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so, float, uh, basically... Yeah, it gives the target the float status. Can't remember what the float status does, but in this particular fight, if a floated character attacks Tiamat with a uh, with a physical attack, I believe it's only a physical attack, he'll get snorted out of the battle and just yeah. ejected. It's ultra removal because they they they're just gone. Yeah, they're you can't even, even like Phoenix down or anything. They're just they're not even KO'd. Yeah, they're just out. Bye bye. Cannot bring them back. Absorb magic is good. The big one that you want to avoid is absorb strength on Freya. Um, that one sucks, because Frey is your big hitter in this fight. Yeah, so we're hoping to see Absorb Magic over Absorb Strength. Absorb Strength's gonna drop down by half their attack, well, if they lose all their magic, that's just the 50% yeah, additional... Yeah, all the spells that we're casting, it's not gonna do much. Absorb MP... Or absorb MP, I mean. Yeah, absorb MP sucks, but it absorbed none. <laughs> Even though Sedane had 82 magical points. Is it Team at yeah, nice. of them. So Kira yeah, is um, using Stunner's turn here to knock himself out. Ooh. Because in the next boss fight, uh, Kraken, we really need to have triple crit, excluding Zidane, for the strategy that we want to employ. And there is a, a decent chance that you don't see any more encounters in the coming screens. So... It looks like Keeper's playing towards uh, the best possible scenario here. Hopefully he isn't going to see anything. He's going to waltz straight through. Yeah, and uh, good on Keeper there for counting just how cleanly that was on counting damage. So suicide into the instant, just end a fight. This is where we get into um, our holy boost that we're going to be doing, that Freya's going to be doing. Um, Freya's going to be doing it for the next two fights, and then she's going to hand it off to uh, <laughs> Steiner, Steiner. As we do pick up Excalibur 2 in this run. I remember someone once asked me if we get Excalibur 2 in the speed run. I was like, no. <laughs> nah. Don't need it. No. Um... Absorb oh, the best MP. weapon in the game that's a time-sensitive uh, pickup? No. Okay, yeah, nice quick preemptively. Not letting them up. Oh, it's a, it's a... Never mind, nice booty. Man, look at these oh. Malaris like, zoning at the same time, bro. Look at this. It must be uh, your birthday here, bro. Mm-mm-mm. Good old Malaris. It's my, it is my birthday. There's more than one of them. Holy moly. Unfortunately, she has decided oh. Amaranth doesn't get to play the video game. Nice crit from Easley as well. So yeah, you saw uh, Keeper BK do that little jump earlier to avoid the uh, to avoid the attack. Our runners will look to follow suit. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, they do have Rebirth Ring, and uh, as we saw on um, that first hit for Pete's screen, Zidane did cover for Freya who Protect Girls. So there's a good chance we could just see a nice Rebirth strat for at least one of these screens. Now, Muster Bomb is nice here because it only inflicts heat, and we've already learned that lesson. 
Um, yeah, everyone's, so got, we have a, body everyone's got body temp. Yeah. And well, silly Mel Iris casting reflect on easily screen. <laughs> Keep it heading into Kraken. Basically, like a flowchart. Um, if Kraken does X, respond with Y. But with the current setup that Keeper has, there is possibility for, as Brutal said, this fight to end in two turns. Ooh, freeze opener. Yep, that's perfect. So we're going to be taking down these tentacles by attacking them um, one, 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 and the other. We want to end with Freya. Ah, he's not ending with Freya. See, the reason why you want Freya to go last is. Uh, because she's the only one that doesn't want to attack. So we're not going to be able to get another Amarin turn in this way. So two turn is pretty much off the table. What's happening? Is that Phoenix down on Zidane? Yep, so this is the Keeper special. So he's uh, hoping on Zidane to be nerfed here um, with this melee. And Zidane will be brought up right before the charge. And get in. Is he taking distract off? Dang it. That sucks. Ah, yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah, so there's a two-turn strategy. It's, it's very specific, and it's kind of dependent on damage rolls. It does actually kind of require the tower, so technically it's a bit more reliable on HD. On PSX, there's a lot of scenarios where you don't want to pick up the tower. I don't think you ever want to pick up the tower. You, uh, sometimes it's fine. It's very rare, though. Or at least if you pick up the tower, you have to manually unequip it for Necron. If you're going to nah. do the new swag, anti-protect. If you're going to do new swag, yeah. Kraken and Lich, pretty integral towards uh, HP 20 on Zidane. Not necessarily needed, but very nice to have for Death Guys. Um, Zidane does need to survive both of these fights. But other than that, we're ah. not hoping on any other AP. Now it connects. Ah. Alright, the real question is, is he going to pick him back up? He doesn't like it. So yeah, this is, I would say this is the correct option. So right here, you can spend the time picking up Zidane. But to be honest, you just want to end the fight. Oh, he's picking him up. Never mind. I'll take it back. Charge? Yeah, this is super lethal. Why would you want to unequip the tower at Necron? So the Auric Halcon actually provides speed. It, it will make it down a little bit faster. So there's a strategy that you can do on Necron that requires a really janky, like kind of reverse ATV weight that you can do. And it's much, it's it's very, very, very tight with the tower, but it's a bit more manageable with the Ori. I couldn't get it a single time with the tower, truthfully. Um, but yeah, with Ori Carlson, it's it's pretty reliable. You can do it every time. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. I've got a tutorial out for it. It's very slim. But it's very slim. The, the, the strategy I wouldn't, itself... Actually, no, on PC, you wouldn't even do it because ATB waiting just doesn't work as well. Um... Uh, well, with the Ori, it's probably a bit more manageable. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's the thing is, is it's it's an opening that you can do if he protects on you, and you want to lose thirty seconds instead of a minute. But it's much more difficult, and it definitely requires practice. I actually never learned it. I, I well, I learned it, but then promptly forgot it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't you you would you would just have to keep practicing it every like couple days just to make sure it stays in your head yeah yeah I, if you put me in front of a controller and got me to try and do it now even though i made a whole tutorial for it i would i wouldn't i'd, I'd, I'd yeah. fuck it up it can be pretty tricky so we can get our uh pushover fiend here on keeper screen which uh can be yep. two turned um uh, everybody is just knocking especially uh freya can do almost max damage here at this point I'm pretty certain she can high roll uh, with Holy Lance plus, you know, the... Oh, wow! Freya's preempt got uh, 
stolen by Lich. That's such a shame. Beautiful opener though with Doom. Mm -hmm. That um, won't last. That won't. That won't trigger. He can cast Earthquake and uh, Earth Shake. No, just the one. I thought there was two different Earth abilities you can cast. There are, but I think he only had that one. Um, but we don't want to see those as I, our two guys are on the ground. Like that, that would be amazing, but uh, you know what, maybe <laughs> I have, maybe there is two. <laughs> yeah, he's got Earth AoE, which won't kill Z, but it will kill us. We don't really mind about this. Zane just not trans, and we might get a beautiful trance hopefully on Zidane for uh, trans Kuja. That puts Zidane in max damage range. Yeah, Kuja or potentially Necron as well. Very nice. Final Guardian down, on to the final three. Clean the frame. Crit as well, troll crit. It's not necessary at all. Lich has both Shake and Quake. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The shake, and, shake and Quake, Matt. The shake, shake and quake. Quake, <laughs> the lich special. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our E2 pickup. <laughs> telling me you never wake up and have a shake and quake. <laughs> I did have that once. So I got woken up by an earthquake in, uh, in Victoria. So Excalibur yeah. 2 um, puts us over the 100 attack. So... Uh, Steiner, especially with the Holy Boost, will be hitting everything else for max damage. Uh, just the uh, the crown jewel in our uh, damage rolls for the last three fights. I had an opportunity to suicide Steiner at the end of the Tiamat fight. Wow, Kepa got the, the last first time we got check. lucky encounters. Oh. So this, no, no, so there isn't checks in space. There's just a random chance to get an encounter before you Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it doesn't work like any of those places. Oh, you forcing the encounter, Pete, Ming in. Just, just yep. go fight Hades instead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pete trying to set up what, uh, Keep the BKA attempted earlier with the forced encounter here to pop Steiner in a or Chewy Glaw um, mm -hmm. into his critical health. So keep it going into Crystal World. Very interesting as it can spawn uh, every single one of the fiends you fought so far um, and one of their just kind of annoying abilities. Uh, we can see Waterga from Kraken. We can see Jetfire from. Um, usually we are close to crit for most characters here, so it could just wipe us if we do get an encounter. Um, but on HD, most likely we will see none going into Death Giants. We got Keeper. Uh, gearing up for death guys death guys is an interesting one um you can get some preempt in uh but has more hp even if you did uh, roll max damage for all four of your characters um his first move always is meteor uh he has 50 speed i think yeah so he has max speed in the game so he's gonna just outspeed everybody um so you definitely need to get your turns in but meteor is gonna do anywhere between 50 to 4,950 damage. Um, doesn't matter what gear you have on. So it's really just a, a, a roulette roll. Um, whereas Keeper, I know, likes to call it just spinning the Wheel of Fortune here. As we have simultaneous Krakens for easily and beat. I am praying for Tombury right now. We are all My hands great. are clasped. Tombury, this one's for you. We're gonna get 50s across the board, all right? We are gonna cheat. So <laughs> if you have uh, auto life here, the Meteor isn't hugely scary, because Zidane's gonna live, um, but the follow-up attacks are scary. Demon's Claw, you will not be able to get a, um, another turn in. 
the animation's just too quick. Oh, the spins are really scary. Freya jump? Oh, Freya hit. Freya hit. There we go. Oh, easy. I mean, you gotta just PDZ and just pray, bro. Yeah. Well, you've kind of got a hierarchy of, uh, you've kind of got a hierarchy of, of uh, actions to take here. It's like, top priority is keeping Zidane healthy. <gasps> Slash alive. Second priority is uh, keeping Steiner alive. Third priority is keeping Steiner healthy. And your last priority is Steiner attacking. That's a, a, how I sort of yep. think about this accurate. fight. Very accurate. So now the plan is to try and get Steiner up and into the fight as soon as possible. Spin, unfortunately, is going to stonewall any attempts that we get at progress. This is good though, we can get Steiner to heal himself. Nice, nice, just get him into the fight. Yep. Does it counter After attack? After Demon's Claw, no. the, the death guys is so fast that Zidane just won't get his turn. Yep. Now keep we're getting trance and cracking. Now we're in, and we want to change turn order here. Which I'm sure Keeper's gonna do. Not quite. Ideally we put Steiner in front in case of a Demon's Claw. All right, that's one. Yes, a another good way is uh, as Brittles just started counting. Um, it's just six attacks, or five attacks plus an Amaranth to throw. Um, we did the have the between... yeah, yeah, the Freya, 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 Freya yeah. plus the Zidane is going to be the half. Yep. Yeah, so we just need five from Sir. Two. Oh, okay. So now it's time to get someone else up. Um, the only thing we're really worried about right now is just death. He has a death spell. We want to try and take as much of the heat off of Steiner as possible. He doesn't no longer have any... He's got um, Twister AoE. This is perfect. Z and Amaranth both null this and uh, Steiner actually absorbs it. So we can spend some time throwing some gear here. If we can get two throws off of Amaranth, I think that's four. Throw the tower. <laughs> <laughs> Can't the get rid of it. By... I think both Steiner and Amarin have lethal here. So I could probably suggest throwing an Amarin. Ermit, no coaching. <laughs> oh, it's actually beautiful. If we can keep uh, Steiner yeah, dead. Head on. That's super good. He can charge. So for the next fight with uh, Trans Kuja countering after half with uh, Flare Star, if we can charge with Steiner, that's a guaranteed 20k at the very least, each uh, charge. So we can end the fight in two to three turns, depending on our rolls. Uh, Pete getting Earthquake right out the gate. Yeah, not ideal. If he gets back up though. Almost forgot that our other two runners had a, uh, they do have auto life. Yeah, we get that nice auto life mixed with the charge. So I think the uh, the last uh, parallel uh, we'll make is uh, Necron's actually a parallel to uh, Cloud of Darkness in three, just coming out of nowhere, not really yeah. explained, just a, a yeah. late game thing. So that mixed with a little TK. And what's there's that? Uh, what's that? That trope called? It's like the the giant space flea from out of nowhere. <laughs> Something along those lines. I've never, yeah, that's, that it. sounds like an Australian thing, man. It's like a, it's not an Australian thing. It's just like a trope of like the antagonist of the game or movie or book or whatever just kind of comes from nowhere. It's not explained. It has no relevance. Yeah, it's just like that. So actually, if if he plays ball here and doesn't play a star or doesn't take out Steiner, yeah. So anybody but Steiner. So it's beautiful a opening there with that Maybe. reflect. He wants to, well, we'll see. I think he might need a bit more damage. Maybe it's fine. He should do at least 20k here. I think this is especially <laughs> followed up with a Zidane. <laughs> Giant space flea. Yeah, sounds like a level 5 scenario. <laughs> 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 uh. 
Oh, beautiful. TK right. that, was, that was a, a, a really, really, really good TK. That yeah. was that's gold standard. So, Team Tomberry, we got about four minutes here. And once again, casting Ultima when he has no right casting it. What a scrub. Doesn't really matter though, we got a full heal before Necron. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Actually, yeah, no, it's it not actually... unfortunately. Oh. Uh... Ooh. No, you, you you wouldn't want to, because you'd end up taking somebody that's not in crit, and then it just yeah. scuffy you. Yeah. Unless, unless... No, you need you need to clear the uh, the holy meteor and all that yeah, out. Yeah, that's the yeah, first one. True, I think yeah. it's I think it's I think it's super magic. Then okay, so let's explain real quick. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was about to say brutal. <laughs> really quickly, so Necron has his own ATB, and that one does very 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 simple things, and then he has three more ATBs um, for each character after your last one outside of critical. So uh, the, the the goal here is to have our characters knock themselves out as quickly as possible, except for Freya. Um, that is going to disable his ability to cast um, super magics like Holy Meteor. It's going to disable black magics like Firaga, Thundaga, AoEs. And it's also going to disable white magics, which is going to do things like Shell and more importantly, Protect. Protect is the one that we don't want to see. So by having our characters care of themselves as soon as possible, we can hopefully stop those ATVs from filling and disable them. After that, he's going to do something called Shockwave, sorry, Blue Shockwave with his regular ATV. Freya's going to jump um, over the Blue Shockwave, after the Blue Shockwave. After the Blue, blue Shockwave is going to happen, then Freya's going to do like a slightly delay, then she's going to jump. She's going to mitigate and avoid completely an ability called Grand Cross, uh, which in turn is going to m uh, mitigate the follow up ability of Neutron Ring. And then when she lands, we're going to see three blue shockwaves. And then before the Grand Cross comes out again, we're going to kill him. We're going to kill him. <laughs> That's the plan. So jump is going to come in really clutch. And we're also, this is the only fight where you really do kind of need to do an ATV wave. And that's going to be right at the end. The only one where you really hate to have trance. Uh, like we explained earlier, uh, trance takes away that slot um so instead of jump doing regular jump it does kind of kind of a stay up and jump strat so pete's getting me to but he got a preemptive with steiner which is absolutely enormous and he's living he's living he's living he's super in this he can pick up chocolate and he can get healed up meanwhile keeper oh, some really really good atvs thundaga is okay actually thundaga is great because it's come before the blue shock wave if it's blue shock wave then thundaga you're in trouble but this should be good. Zidane still has ah, a trance. Protect. I'm gonna lose a little ah. bit of time to that, for me. Yeah. Super yeah, unfortunate. Blue Shockwave. So Blue Shockwave's gonna connect. Keeper's gonna have to count for a small, small, small break. And then cast jump. Yeah, I usually do like five Freya bobs. It was actually six. Keeper jumped too early now. <laughs> <laughs> Just sabotage Team Tom Reno. It looks like Pete is actually making short work of Death Guys though. It looks like he's gone really well. Oh, oh yeah. Counter. Woo. Okay, so we're going to get two free attacks in with Freya here, and then we're going to jump over another Grand Cross, and then we're going to go for Lethal. So Keeper just needs to hope that he doesn't build too much trance, because that could scuff him. Yeah. I don't Should think he okay. will. Should be okay. That was a big take. He's taking care of Death Guys there. Marvelous. Nice. Very clean, very clean Death Guys. I don't think he even closed. Oh, okay. Keeper Maybe? doesn't get the trance. We got easily gearing up for a Death Guys fight. trigger a trance which is a bit of a pain oh just because at this point it's a little bit of time loss yeah okay the plan is very simple we resurrect steiner then we resurrect zidane and charge and then we attack with charge the plan is very simple ah didn't want to let it go 
there is actually an avenue where both Freya and Steiner can deal lethal damage when she's trancing like this. Yeah, you don't, you it's don't tough need though. To it, yeah, it's it's scary. I reckon. I, I in this scenario, yeah, pick up Z. We get a nice Z trance probably, but what this does mean is we probably won't have to uh, ATB wait the end. Definitely will not. Oh my god. Team Tonbury representative getting uh, geared up for Final Fantasy X. We'll have Vermillion following as soon as Keeper hits lethal on that uh, on that Necron. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, everyone, that's Final Fantasy X cutscene remover RNG fix. So for Tonbury, this will don't be... go anywhere. It'll be when the health bars disappear is when you know you've done lethal. Hi, I'm Tonberry, go. Go, Hi, go. GG, Keeper. Nice work, Keeper, man. Nice. Huge gaming. Keeper killed it that run. That was an excellent run. Oh, and you see that on easily screen, surviving all four characters from Meteor. Yeah, that was That's crazy. beautiful. I didn't even know what the hell to do right there. I've never had that happen. I was like, uh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> Oh, slapped Amaranth. Luckily, we don't need him anymore. Yeah, he's he's done his job there. I don't even know if I've seen him throw a Demon Claw at Amaranth. Just so far to the right. Well, the counter well that's a counterattack from Steiner. Oh my goodness, the damage just doesn't end. Pete playing this Transcuja very safe. Nah. Another counterattack! Meanwhile, Pete's kid, the only thing that really stops him from making progress in this fight is Chuggle getting slapped up like that. This really uh, sucks. I just had three counters. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? That's crazy. <laughs> that makes you the winner. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Team Chuggle has one Final Fantasy Relay. Yeah. Relay number eight. No, not quite. There's still a whole slew of games ahead of us. Shoot off. That looks like a, about a 740. Keep it. In real time, I guess. <laughs> Transcuja has been dispatched by Petonian Swansonian Team Mog. He wants to boss as easily initiates combat. Is he taking a crit Steiner in? No. No, he didn't get to. Ah, like open is good. That's real good. Real good for easily right there. So we should get about 20k with this charge. Yep. 25, 20. Yeah, right on it. Man, the, uh, I kind of forgot that it was cutscene remover for a second. I, I glanced over at 10 and saw they're already at the sin spawn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, <laughs> what happened over there? Just open the disc tray, innit? Skip the cutscene. Yeah, yeah. Really great job, commentary. Thank For you. Really great, great job running, man. You absolutely killed it. You guys, no, you guys killed it. The P on pace looks like for 732. 732 is a very, very respectful time. No word. Um, yeah, thanks to the RPG Limit Break for having me on commentary and uh, the, the FF9 runners for inviting me up. Um, I'll be back later for Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, you're going to get yeah. a beauty sleep, don't you? Absolutely well done by all the FF9 runners. So far as well, there's still a, there's still a little, bit, little bit of the game left.
Dang, Stan is getting targeted again. Yeah. This is frustrating to say the least. It does make the uh, fight a little bit smoother here with Steiner though. Steiner can get his uh, 10k in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blair? On Freya? Right, right. You've already seen the black- you already saw black magic though, you're okay. What an opener. What an opener. It doesn't really get much better than that. You can do the good strat. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm going to practice that HD, man. Like, <laughs> How would I do that? So yeah, Pete doesn't crazy. need to do the, uh, the little delay there because Amaran uh, KOing himself will actually sort of like find that time also automatically. No specific timing needs to be done. Yeah. We're going to be seeing a very similar. Oh, okay, we're going to start leading some damage. Are we do the strat, or are we just going to get some points in? No. Usually here on uh, Necron as well. If I can just say, I have never looked forward to my bed more in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That was BS2, this is BS3 coming in. Using the stun at self KO is a timer, pretty good. Oh. Yeah, it's a neat trick you can use over and over again. If you got in some extra damage during Protect here, you yep. should also be able to hopefully avoid uh, the need for that. Actually, if you wait. Alright, uh, Timo should be getting ready here soon. Yep. Team Choco, not not far behind. Yeah. Time for more is coming up any second. Ready. I'm steady. Nice. Huge work, dude. All right. Can we go mm -hmm. three for three on Necron Protect? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There's the blue shot right. wave. Oh, I guess it ah! still happened. Still can come through? No way! Oh, three no. for three! No way, dude. The relay has been protected! <laughs> the relay is safe! That you know crazy. why, man? The first law of resonance holds true. We didn't see a single Iron Giant cast Protect. That's not true. Pete's, uh, Pete had an Iron Giant that did. Uh, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. No, he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. I didn't see it. There you go. Let's it. go back to the uh, instant go. replay. Replay. <laughs> Rest on the sideline. All right, and then we'll have uh, once uh, once easily finishes off this this neck run, we'll have some Final Fantasy X action across the board. What? CSR no less. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> Jump. 
We've seen some pretty pretty awkward Necrons, but fortunately he hasn't he hasn't done anything too too outlandish. He can really get you sometimes if you get particularly unlucky. He's if he hit you with a meteor as well, <laughs> yeah, he can actually hit you with meteor the same way the Death guys can, or does I should say. Yeah, we see a holy flare as we already saw. It can get pretty decent. It's a sharp hit. Alright, Jericho. Does he doesn't, does not play on Memory Castle? He does not, yeah. Uh, that's that's the game. crazy. So nice, fresh from attack on every single action. Yeah. Right, before I pass over, I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me on. It's been absolutely delightful. You guys have absolutely nailed it, and I cannot wait to see more from the relay. Huge GG's to everyone involved so far, and yeah, coming up. likewise. It was excellent to have uh, to, to do the commentary with you as well, Rubens. All right, Team Choco representative, get ready. Time is coming up very soon. <laughs> uh, Choco, time. Nice, GG. Good luck, nice. guys. Time. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, Thanks, everybody. Good luck. Thank you very much to the FF9 runners and commentators for that fantastic run. Um, we are now going to uh, take over uh, commentating on FF10. Uh, firstly, you've got me, Crimson Inferno. Uh, we've also got Pegar here, so I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Vega. You may recognize me, my voice at least, from the final songs recently, but I'm gonna watch some way better ones today. So we've got, uh, for Team Mog we've got Hiroshiga, um, for uh, Team Choco we've got Foxy Jira, and for Team Tombri we've got Vermilion. Um, we'll also have uh, Chris Tenarium joining us on commentary uh, very soon. Um, so I am I am here. I'm just yeah. managing a bunch of things right now. But hello, how's it going, awesome. everyone? That was that was a really good set of FF9 runs, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I I found myself just staring at the last two hours without being able to take my eyes off. That was great stuff. I'm glad everyone got to enjoy that as well because that last uh, that disc ball for everyone was insane. Um, Hopefully we'll have something as exciting as Blitzball with Final Fantasy X. <laughs> oh, always look forward to Blitzball. Um, oh, so, so, just to quickly... Uh, you, people may have already noticed um, that there are no cutscenes happening. So we've got um, two things going on in this run. We've got um, a cutscene remover mod, which um, the 10 speedrunning community has been using for I think a little over a year now, um, which, yeah, a year to two. Um, it removes about five and a half hours <laughs> of cutscenes from the speedrun. Um, it makes a massive impact and sort of it has, has made it a lot more accessible to a lot of people who uh, generally might not have time for a nine hour speedrun. Um, and then also we've got an RNG fix mod being used. Um, so for a, little, for a little over a year now, um, the community's sort of worked out how to um, predict and manipulate the RNG in the game. So this was a mod that was made to make that impossible to do um, for runners who want to have a bit more RNG in their runs. Because apparently that's, that's, that's the thing people want, apparently. Yeah. Um, it's very relaxing compared to trapping. <laughs> so this 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 is going to be quite an action packed run, I think. Um, le less of a chill run compared to the to the normal cutscene remove version. Um, so on Team Choco, we've 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 got um, the Sinspawn Armies fight, um, which is the first fight in the game. Yeah. So the good um, thing about it is you can't die. You're just getting used to all the controllers, uh, the controls, and you learn about overdrives as well, which are quite important. I like fights where I can't die. I love those fights. 
just time waste, isn't it? <laughs> It's I guess fantastic. you can dive on hammers. You would just need to start hitting yourself. Um, oh, I've never done that before. <laughs> Only we when definitely I'm wouldn't to do talk. that on purpose. No, why would you do that? It's very silly. Um, so on Team Mog, we've got um, the every Final Fantasy X speedrunner's favourite section of the run, the lagoon. Mm. Everybody loves this. No RNG at all. Absolutely not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so what? So 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 this is this is a very short section run. Normally you'll get two to three um, encounters. If you're very lucky, you'll get one, um, but it's very rare for that to happen. Ideally, we want to see two two piranhas in every fight. Um, we can either get two, three, or four. Uh, the more piranhas we get, the slower it's potentially going to be. Um, and if, also, watch out for ambushes, which is constant. yay. Ambush! Oh, it happened! Oh, oh four piranha oh, ambush. That. The, That's what I did. The literal worst. Oh, God. And then Waku's not going to escape either, is he? No, I'm jinxing it more. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what What we want to see here is if it's not a two piranha uh, fight, we want to see uh, the, oh, the, the runners escaping. There's a 25% chance that each escape can fail. Um, so we just saw Tidus failed to escape once on this four prana ambush so that is a horrendously slow encounter yeah. uh, for team Tombry, unfortunately but we don't know what everyone else is going to get because no one is tracking today so hopefully everyone will have just as much luck within the lagoon and her alley and tiny fishes i don't want to see any more four prana ambushes no thank you what, it's very one upsetting. is what one is too many so upsetting um, oh, at a ah, very rough lagoon. Three encounters. Yeah. And they were three piranhas, four piranha ambush, and four piranhas. And I think Tidus has failed to escape once on both encounters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this, he's got away this, first try both. This is this is about as bad as lagoon goes. <laughs> it's a very bad lagoon. Um, so we've got but Mog currently. Sorry, I was just gonna say. So we've got Mog currently in yeah. the in the click fight. So. Um, we start off, this teaches us how to steal and use with Riku. Ooh, and uh, I think that was a rare steal uh, on the first steal. So we open up with we open up with a grenade and then um, the runners will steal um, up, hope, up to two. Well, they'll attempt to steal two grenades. Um, Mod got very lucky here and got a rare steal on the first one. So got th uh, three actually. Um, well, yes, we, we stole three, we've now got four. Yeah. Uh, and we want six for the Tross fight, so um, we then look to get up to, to a total of six um, in the upcoming encounters. And then for Team Choker, we've got, or we, we just finished the uh, Geos fight. Um, Geos is a boss that we can't kill, and it can't kill us. Um, it has a fixed number of turns, and when it reaches its third turn, um, it transitions into a cutscene, which yeah. in this version magically doesn't exist. <laughs> so um, we yeah. we yeah, just defend sure. our way through that fight. Let's see. What's all going on? They're all bit at different points, but I think that's just the nature of it because of the CSR. So normally you would be waiting for like cutscenes to um, basically get everyone. Like moving at a certain pace, but these guys are literally all over the map at this point. Yeah. yeah. Like, so here oh is she. Here she just got um, two steals from a three piranha for Team Mog. So I think that means that here she is done. Yeah. Uh, with uh, steals now. Yeah. Uh, oh, a, a crit and a yeah. crit and a dodge for um, Foxy on Team Choco. So that's a... look at what Hiroshige did is slightly unoptimal though, because the actual play is to steal five grenades and then you hope that one of the grenade crits and then that saves oh, you a steal. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so crits are always very, very um, easily mappable and something you should rely on in this game. Especially in RNG oh, fit. Guaranteed. Exactly. <laughs> I, just assume, I just assume every attack is going to crit in some way, shape or form. Oh, especially when it comes to Seymour. <laughs> Can we only fight once, honest? Okay. 
Yes. Uh, so the other two are having a good start. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't catch some of the minions. I did see the aura and overdrive uh, actually crit Amers for like um, 780 odd damage. He had a good Amers, mm -hmm. but I think everything else since then has been a little tragic for Tombury. Yeah, Vermillion's had a, a rough start. I believe we got a little death, a cheeky death at one point from Riku as well. So I think it's been Choco a... just had a nightmare stealing from the click it looks like i saw a lot of failed steals um so have yes. we explained all those steals worked uh i don't think so kind of the way steals works is you oh. have your first steal is 100 percent successful and then it will just be cut in half for every successful steal you have from there on in so it'll be 100 percent and 50 percent and 25 percent 12 and a half sometimes that 50 percent will feel like zero percent you will steal and steal and steal on click, and the game will continuously tell you that there was nothing to steal, <laughs> despite it being there. It's definitely there, promise. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if so stealing is really important for this part of the game. We don't actually rely on steals too much through this. You'll see why later. But Riku does get a very important job at one point as well, uh, which involves stealing specific things for uh, from the Thunder Plains and Michelania for specific bosses. It's very fun. Yeah, Riku has a few important jobs uh, across this run. She's super <laughs> fast as well. She's very fast, as it turns out her overdrive is also very, very good as long as we use items right. that casually right. would hurt you to use, but in a speed run, who we cares about 300 them. more HP on a character, right? Just just throw <laughs> it out. Just mix it. You don't need it. Like... Blah. Yeah. So Vermillion for Team uh, Tombury is being taught how to play the game. Very important to, to learn how to play the game. You've got to pay attention to those tutorials. Um... So, Imagine. like, something I never understood, though, like, fire and ice are opposed, but then what about lightning and water? Yeah, that's not how that works. <laughs> no. So, water doesn't, like, stop lightning in real life, but physics, right? Or chemistry? No, it does. Does it? If, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you electrocute or water, uh, water, it evaporates. Uh, so, do you want to go on the Kimari <laughs> flight real quick? Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, T well, Team Tombury okay. right now uh, is doing Kamari. Basically, what you want what? to see what is that? 125 uh, damage or more for every attack because you want to do an average of 125. It looks like Vermillion is currently plus 10. Uh, Kimari has 750 no. HP. But if you don't do 750 damage in six attacks, there is just a chance you die. Ooh, okay, that... I didn't see what the first roll was, but that last attack, it looked a little dicey, but... No, I think, I think, it, was, I think it was fine. I was doing the maximum, I think it was fine. Right. I think it was okay. like 127, 7... Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, so the Kamari has, seven, has 750 HP, so it works out we need an average of 125. Yeah, so we, over that, yeah. So we're basically just counting the, the oh, difference to the average and if we're plus seven it means that even the lowest roll uh it means we get over the line on that final hit uh, mog mog now getting the two piranha encounter that Tombry wished <laughs> they got beforehand oh, oh, think best things can yeah so um foxy is on the tross fight so this is where we use all of those grenades that we steal um so he's currently just throwing uh, each and every one of them at Tross, mm -hmm. and the six grenades we steal plus one or two attacks from Tidus is just enough damage to um, to, to kill Tross. Also, really uh, funny as well is the fact that um, so the game doesn't tell you this. The game doesn't tell you a lot, but it doesn't tell you that you can actually throw grenades through the second as well. Crit kill for Foxy. Didn't save any oh, time, but it got him, got, got him some extra powers. It got him some extra powers. So these yeah. across this run can matter, depending on how little you get across the run. Those two power spheres could end up saving him time later on in the run. Yes, uh, collecting power spheres is a very enjoyable thing to do. Um, 
but we normally, so most runners uh, start that count immediately, but also there is a part in Luka where we kill a lot of Sahagan chiefs. And depending on how many overkills you get there, um, it can depend on how many you need for the rest of the game. It's If you get Lightning Steel as well, you're probably fine. So that's why we like Lightning Steel. You hear like a runner screaming, Lightning Steel! That's, that's why. Yeah. I think if I got Lightning Steel in a PB, I wouldn't bother getting the extra power spheres. But in a marathon, I might. Like yeah. in this relay race, I might. Yeah, because like in a marathon situation, the goal is to finish, <laughs> so oh. maths is important. All all maths, as uh, every runner is aware, or every person who watches runners, we like counting. Yes. So much uh, counting. Something else to briefly notice as well. When Team Mog was in the Lagoon, uh, Hiroshige got a three piranha encounter. Mm -hmm. um, he opted to kill it. Now, the the Japanese runners do opt for that kind of thing. They don't mind being a little slower if it's more consistent. So I I, I tip I tip I if I if if I was running for a PB, I wouldn't do it. But typically, when I'm doing uh, marathons, I'll do it because the extra power and speed sphere yeah. that you get 80% of the time, uh, yeah. which is worth it for the safety. Just kind of like a safety thing if you kill it, and it's not yeah. it's it's not a terrible time loss to kill the three one. No, not at all. Um, so basically, uh, what we're saying is yeah. no, no, go go go. go. Oh, I'm just going to quickly quick. Yes, so basically what you're trying to do here is go fast. Yes. That was what um, I was going to say. If you escape from <laughs> a uh, three piranha encounter and you get both escapes first try, it's actually faster than killing two piranhas. So, yeah. Also, everyone in chat is currently discussing the electricity water thing, which I love. Well done, everyone. Well. I mean, they're going to have to trust me. I, I have taken physics to a secondary school <laughs> level. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm talking about, guys. Come on. Uh, oh, yeah, and we can see the difference now. Team Choco get the three piranha encounter, tries to escape, walk the fails, and gets it. You got a preemptive as well, though, which is really sad. Yeah. yeah. So, Vermilion for uh, Team Pombury is currently on the synth invite. Um, mm -hmm. If you haven't seen a Final Fantasy X speedrun in a while, um, you might notice that, that something looks a bit funny. The strategy for this fight changed fairly recently. Mm -hmm. I say fairly recently, it's about six months ago probably, but... Yeah. Um, so, we no longer... Um, we used to go back to pick up Energy Blast in um, in, in Besaid. Um We no longer do that. It turns out it's about 20 seconds faster to um, alter the strats um, and use energy ray here because of a few changes that we'll talk about later on that happened in the run um, in the last year. Very exciting changes. Um, if you've not followed FF10 speedrunning, there's going to be a bit of a surprise later <laughs> Later on. Yeah. <laughs> so much fun. Just a tad. The best surprise. <laughs> um, but we, we open with energy ray. Um, and overdrives have an insanely high recovery time. Um, so Valifor has to basically sit here and take it for a while. Um, <laughs> and then once we uh, eventually get a turn again, we spam thunders and um, hope we don't get really unlucky. <laughs> uh, there's about, seen that happen once to there's, a, the, 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 there's approximately a 2% chance of yeah. under damaging on this fight. Um, I, I think the um, energy ray damage he got there was high enough that it's impossible for him to low roll the thunders. Yeah, was he gone? So basically, he's going to die to this. So, yeah. It's quite on rare. It, yeah, on one hand, it would be quite funny if it happened, but I also really, really hope it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because I've only ever seen it twice, and it's happened once to me, and I think yeah. I've seen it once happen to Vermilion, and that's, it's, that's it. It, it, yeah. happened, it happened to me the first time I the first time I did these strats after calculating the 2%. Oh no! I, yeah, I, the, 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 the first one I did where I implemented these strats, I was like, <laughs> I under-damaged and I was like, huh, did I really get the 2% first time? Yep. Yep, that happens. 
and now we'll see uh, Team Tom Brailson spawn Equilles. Um, there's actually like a little bit of nuance to this fight. Uh, you, the first thing you want to do is blind. So, so, uh, oh, that's a crit. Yes, it was. A crit alone oh, doesn't have... matter. You no. can overdrive early if Ty does crits once, but Waka has to crit twice because Waka is uh, not as strong. Weaker. Yeah. yeah. So why do, why, why do we why do we why do we blind here, Chris? Uh, so Echolees can't hit you. Uh, there is a chance that Echolees can still just hit you anyway, um, but it will hit you. And also because it's Drain Touch, if Echolees does hit you, it means it will heal. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Oh, Tetris crit. Oh, there you go. So now now we can yeah. overdrive early. Yeah. Uh, also, something to note: those little sin. Scaly small lads on the sides, they all drop uh, mana spheres as well. So, it your turn order can come in such a way that you kill Equilies and then get zero mana spheres. It's um, it's not ideal because you do need like a so, few mana spheres. Mana, the mana spheres were never an issue until um, the the route was slightly oh, rerouted oh, earlier this year, and suddenly they are. Not necessarily a problem, but they can become a problem. Um, that was a, that was a that that was a very good fight for Vermillion, and he also got a ice ball drop. Um, so that means he will be able to skip the scout chest. Um, although he may elect he may he, he may elect to open it just for uh, selling purposes, which um, I recommend because money is a bit tight at this point. Yeah, I think. In a, in a, but it's again that thing where in a PB attempt I wouldn't do it, but for the purposes of a marathon like this, I would assume that Vermillion is going to do it. But I guess we'll find out in a in about a minute. <laughs> yeah, so you want to buy a stunning steel and Luka, which has a, 50, uh, a sword that you put on Titus, which is a 50% chance to apply slow uh, to an enemy, but it's also fairly pricey uh, to buy this early on in the run. It's um, 3,050 gil. Yeah, so it'll basically require us to sell all of our uh, random drop equipment um, and just about squeak by getting enough. Yeah, um, um, the random drops we get in this game are uh, from weapons are almost entirely worthless. There are a few that are good. Uh, Kegar has mentioned Lightning Steel. Uh, yes. Thunderball is something you don't mind getting. Um, Love that. Uh, the ice weapon for Titus as well, ice ball, they're good for the most part. Fairly, <clears throat> fairly worthless. We'll be putting something on uh, weapons later on that is much more worth uh, judging uh, from. Yeah, I think so... it's safe to say that he's not going to pick up the scout if uh, Team Tombray are already doing the menu. Uh, I yeah. would assume not. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, didn't know. Didn't know. Didn't didn't um, yeah, so, for me, did a little menu there to get um, a little bit of extra agility to make Tidus a tiny bit faster and also to get the flea uh, ability. Welcome. So, this is uh, a speedrunner's dream, flea. Mm -hmm. um, Tidus is one of the faster characters in our party, and flea allows us to instantly escape from battle um, with n no cost um, and 100% of the time. So, oh. it's. Oh. Foxy, Foxy has, has had a stand. very good um, Kimari fight. He crit twice. Uh, he opted to go for the early strength, uh, uh -huh. which is something you can do if you have enough AP. So the damage ranges will never be an issue. You'll, you'll always um, have enough damage to kill, but I think that may have been four attacks. I think it was, you know. That's amazing. Well done, Foxy. Uh, I mean, not well very... done. <laughs> yeah, you know, completely random, but it's like very that. speedy. Yeah. Ooh, also, speaking of worthless um, weapons, I just oh, that's not a good one for athletes. Team Tom Brit. So yeah, so you know, outsped. You don't want that because Titus needs AP. So you need yeah. to switch someone else in for Yuna if that happens. Defend with Titus and hope that both of the tentacles don't outspeed Waka. In this case, only one did. Yeah. Then summon Yuna back in and start using Bale Force. Yeah. Um, so yeah, worthless weapons. I am currently trying to do a track to run, but there are two harpoons in that, and harpoons are worth 19 gil. It's horrible, I hate it. Yeah, so for this, um, uh... That's how... So for this, uh... Yeah. For, for this Sinspawn fight that um, Vermillion's on, we open up with 
Um, we open up with Energy Ray, as we did on the Simpin fight, and once again, yes. this causes us to uh, take a lot of damage. Um, we then continue to use fires, um, and we basically wait for Valifor's overdrive to charge back up, um, and then we hit it in the face again with another Energy Ray. For that tasty, tasty over overkill, because AP is important, and that doubles the AP that you get, and the amount of spheres. Yes. Bonus power spheres. Love that. I think it's mana spheres for this one, but yeah. It's very, uh, it's very handy. Juno drops power spheres, I think. Is it? Yeah, it yeah, Juno drops uh, power spheres. And if, if we get a rare drop here, it would be an extra two. Ooh. It was just the standard four. It was. And ability spheres, which are so important. Um, so rare drops in this game are, I don't know if this is already mentioned, but rare drops in this game and rare stills are uh, always a uh, 1 in 8. Um, so occasionally um, you'll get a good like 1 in 8 roll for a rare still rare drop, um, but we didn't get it there. Mm -hmm. um, Hiroshiga is now on the uh, Simpin fight. Um, I didn't see what the damage roll for the MG Ray was, but I'm gonna assume it was all right. Cool. I saw it briefly in the corner of my eye, and it wasn't something that made me scared. <laughs> <laughs> Not like when the uh, the screen doesn't change when the cursor moves on this thunder that's about to come up. Yeah. I, doesn't yeah, matter see, how many. Doesn't move... matter. How... Don't go. <laughs> As I say, it doesn't matter how many times this happens, it still scares me. Yeah. So you can do inputs quite fast um, in this game. However, uh, there are some parts because it's the HD port where there's a tiny bit of input delay, just like menu lag, and it just eats one of your inputs. If you catch it in time, it's fine, but there will be a... I've absolutely had myself like a few times where on a Blitzerator, I've just thundered a Blitzerator because... <laughs> yeah, I've done that. Like, it, 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 yeah, it's consumed my right input. You learn eventually that you can be like, you know, a quarter of a second slower on certain inputs. You get used to it. Yeah. Mark's oh, now showing up to Sinfin. Something I uh, do want to point out as well. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, that the Japanese runners, both Fist and Hiroshige. Just straight up. Uh, he just. Uh, basically, his route. He knew, per my understanding, what we end up on, so he, he he knew the end game. But up until then, he's mostly just running his.